Are we live? Can you guys hear me? I think you can. Finally, I'm so sorry that I'm like half an hour late and I even gave myself half an hour of like of a buffer <laughs> to be here. Um, so I'm glad that I'm live now. I I'm looking very like to the side, I just realized. Maybe I shouldn't have chat over there, but... Uh, okay. So what happened? What happened is that, um... I had all the thumbnails and I had all the, like, the cover art for all the games that we're gonna be ranking and putting on a tier list today. Uh, but with Tier List Maker, because they were all very different sizes, some of them were, like, too big to put on Tier List Maker, so I had to resize them all to make them all fit, and I hope they're all there. Because <laughs> it's like, I can't really, there, there are 164 games or so that we're going to be ranking today, so it's gonna be difficult. <laughs> but we're gonna do our best. We're going to do our best. Um, and I'm going to edit this down for YouTube later on. Uh, so, hello everybody, Char i 5 here. I'm doing a tier list. I've never done this before, but as you may or may not know, throughout the latter half of 2022, I played every single Sonic game leading up to Sonic Frontiers, and I'm going to try and rank and list them all in a tier list, and I'm going to see how that goes, because I've never done this before, and I'm doing this live, as you can see my wonderful chat up here, and it's going to be tough because I'm going to be going off script a lot, I should probably put you guys on my other monitor since nothing is there at the moment. So I'm going to put you guys over there right now so I can just look over and see my wonderful chat over there. I'm going to take my uh, headphones off of there. Um, and I'm going to... Where is my tier list? Hold on. Let me full screen this. That's not how I full screen. That's how I full screen. Beautiful. Uh, there we go. Can we fit that many in the tier list? Hopefully. <laughs> no promises. Archer, thank you so much for the new memberships. I appreciate you guys immensely for everything you have done over the course of the last uh, six months or so. I hope everyone had a good holiday season. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm sorry that I don't... I didn't get here earlier to talk to you all <laughs> and just ch chill for a little bit, but uh, I hope I sound good. I hope I don't sound too echoey. I hope everything is going to run smoothly. Um, in fact, I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so that that can be appreciated more. Do I think you, I will still be streaming when you get home? I don't know. <laughs> Always love a good old tier list. Yo, what's up, design? Kenshin, thank you so much. Insert witty joke here. I don't have one, but... We, we shall see. Okay, so I, uh, let's get into it. Also, one thing I didn't have the time to do, I have them all listed by number, and tier list still did whatever the fuck this is. I don't know why it, like, jumbled them all up this way, meaning that I'm going to have to look for every single game anyway, which kills my soul because I, I purposefully numbered them to avoid this. Shadow Wolf. Thank you so much for 13 months. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, let's start off with the very first Sonic the Hedgehog game, Sonic 1, if I can find it. <laughs> I don't know where Sonic 1 is. This is Sonic 1 for the Mega Dr for the Master System. That's number two. It's got to be here somewhere. Mr. C. Willis, thank you so much for the 449. Hope I'm well. Just beat Sonic Adventure for the, fir for the first time. Whoa. It was fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Glad. Thank you so much. I Doc Hacker. Thank you so much. Sonic 3D Blast Five Fund. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, did I watch Bandy's Universe? Yes, I did. I watched every single episode uh, with Sarah, and then the last episode I watched with Nathan, uh, and I was in it. If you guys have not seen it, you should go watch it. Thank you so much. Uh, son of a bitch. Where's Sonic One? <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. And some of these are like super blurry because of the aspect ratio. I swear to God, if they're not all here, I'm going to scream. I wish I had the time to like put them all. I didn't realize it was going to be like this, though. 
You guys probably have seen it already, and I'm just... Oh, here it is, here it is. I found it, found it, found it, found it. Okay. So, Sonic the Hedgehog 1. Uh, good start for its time. It's still okay to play. I don't... It's weird, because I didn't grow up with Sonic 1. I grew up with Sonic 2 more. It's a fun enough game when you start out. Uh, I think it's kind of mid, though, like, if I'm being honest. like not, not even as a joke. I think that it's very middle of the road for newcomers. Like, if you've never played it before, I think you can f think it's fun. But upon revisiting... Jesus, Hero Squad, thank you for the five. You got Frontiers for Christmas. Finish it today. Nice. You cheese to get all skills by bouncing out a spring attack while doing air tricks. Nice. Uh, have I watched Prime? I have not yet. Thank you. Uh, but I will. Uh, but yeah, it's... Going back to it after playing the rest of them, it's just okay. It's nothing... It's nothing fantastic now. It was probably super revolutionary back then, but it's just very middle of the road. You know what I mean? Uh, Sonic 2 was down here somewhere. Actually, no. Sonic 1 Master System. Oh my god, this is gonna be so goddamn confusing, dude. Sonic 1 Master System. Uh, worse than Sonic 1. It's also very middle of the road. I personally think it's just impressive because of the system it was on. You know, like, I'm, and I'm including Game Gear, Game Gear here as well, but to de-make the mechanics of the first Sonic game on an inferior system and still have it play similar to it is impressive. I think that that's why I kind of like the 8-bit games a lot is because it's just like, it, to me, it's kind of mind-blowing that like you can go from something that's more advanced, tone it down to 8-bit, and still sort of retain a semblance of that same quality. Like, if if a Master System was all you had, I think you're still getting a decent game. I still don't love Sonic 1 on Master System. It's it's also very middle of the road, but it's it's not better than the first game. Jesus, Nathan, thank you so much, buddy. Thank you. So, Marie Obsidian, thank you for the membership. Archer, thank you for the five. Uh, hope you're having a great day. Just love that the trailer for this live stream was set footage to how to play Soulstar. Yep, it sure was. Um... But yeah, that's that's Master System. This is a weird one. I uh, you could argue that I shouldn't have included this, but I just figured why not? It is technically a video game. But Sonic One for the Tiger Electronics. This is straight up E. I the Tiger Electronics games are awful. Uh, they are confused. Like even growing up, right? I knew that Tiger games weren't all, they weren't great. They weren't a lot, but they were entertaining. The Sonic LCD games suck. <laughs> <laughs> they are so bad. Because, like, you're just getting score, right? And I get that. You couldn't do much else. But it's so confusing. Because the whole point of Sonic is to see him run. And you can't really do that. And also, it doesn't make any sense. Because, like, they pick Marble Zone for the background. It, it's it's weird. And I don't like it. <laughs> Should we add an F tier? So, the, the reason I put... I have S, A, B, C, D, E, and then Lost. Because I can't really rank Lost games. Uh, is just as a joke to the uh, Sonic ranking system. That's why I didn't add like an F. E is basically F tier. <laughs> you put the gaming tell dude. Yeah, I I love I I meant to like change where my I'm trying to like go quick because I know I have to edit this later, but I really shouldn't. I should just chill and hang out with you guys. It doesn't matter, but I I guess I know that I want to like cut this down later on, and that's why I'm trying to like rush. I shouldn't rush. Thank you, Brandon, for the five. Since I finished Adventure through all the games, you would consider hiring someone to rewatch them and make stream highlights. Maybe. Yes, I've thought about that for sure. I wanted to put my plaque a little lower because you can't. It's it's like just slightly off screen. It's just slightly off screen. I want to like put that to where you actually can see it in the background. But uh, yes, yeah, I can take my time. Why is the current game labeled as Pokemon Scarlet? Oh, oh shit. <laughs> You're right, because I've been playing Scarlet over on Twitch. Uh, ranking Sonic games. Thank you. <laughs> I've been playing Scarlet over on my Twitch channel. Um, that's why I have it as Pokemon Scarlet there. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, so that's Sonic LCD. Next is Sonic Eraser. Um, Sonic Eraser was a game that came out on Sega Mega Net, which was a subscription online service for the uh, the Genesis back in the day. This was still, like, in the first year of Sonic being a 
character, which is kind of impressive uh, that they wanted to, they, they had so much confidence in Sonic as a brand and as like a character that they were like, yeah, let's make an exclusive like online game and like, let's make it a competitive puzzle game. And it is ass. <laughs> it's one of the worst Sonic games. Um, honestly, I would probably put it above the LCD game, though. It's not fun. But it's more of a video game, and it's like, at least it's like multiplayer. It's like the first multiplayer Sonic game. That's stupid to say, but it has some of the worst music in the series. Uh, the rules hardly make sense. It's not fun. <laughs> it's, uh, am I referring to the first, to the time when Sonic first appeared in Radmobile? No, because he wasn't playable in that game. He was just a cameo in, their ga in that game. Um, so yeah, Eraser sucks ass. I do not like Eraser. And it's bad. <laughs> it's it's worth playing at least once just to experience it, but it is not a good game. I will say though, even though the I think the music is ass, it's kind of memorable because I'm like hearing it in my head right now. It's it's awful. <laughs> it's it's a very not enjoyable game. But yeah. Uh, Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car is the next game, and god, some of these are just super interesting to talk about. Uh, that's what, that's something I love about the Sonic series, uh, is that there's always so much to talk about with these games. And this is an example, this, this is still like year one of, of Sonic, because this was 1991. Um, ah! I'm gonna put this in, I, okay, so here's the thing, I like... Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car, but A, it's barely a game because it's super short. Uh, it was, it was like the, technically the first arcade game, even though I know that there was like a Sonic 16-bit arcade cabinet, but this is like exclusively like a, a children's ride that you could play. Um, and when we played it on stream, I didn't really know the rules. <laughs> I didn't really know the, that there were rules to, to, to play this game because I remember when we played it, at the end you get like a, however many stars you got out of five. Uh, so there are like certain rules that you have to do in order to get those five stars. And it's like way more intricate than you would think. But at the same time, when you're just playing the game, like without the arcade cabinet, you kind of can't tell what the rules are. So I had to like do some research to figure out how to get the five stars. And I can't off the top of my head remember what they are. Like you have to not crash. You have to beat Eggman fat. You have to basically eat grass, fight fast, uh kick ass or <laughs> like you have to do everything perfectly in order to get the five stars and it is the first sonic like this is still again year one and it's the like that's that's why it kind of pains me to put it in d because it's such an interesting game but it's like barely a game you know what i mean um it's the first game in the series to have sonic with voice acting like sonic and eggman have voice acting in this game uh, and it's pretty good. Like, it's it's bit crunched to hell, but it's, like, really good voice acting. And, like, it fits the characters really well. And, it like, they sound almost like what they would sound like later on. Uh, it's exclusively in Japanese, so you can't really tell what they're saying. You can't really tell what the instructions on screen are. But it's still a cute, fun little game. Um, it's tough to give it anything other than a D, though, in my opinion. Like, it's, you can't really do or say much about the game beyond... Uh, that uh next up we have weirdly enough <laughs> sonic 2 on master system not on not on genesis because the master system version came out first and i'm trying to find the master system version that's the thing if they were all in order i could just go i could just go but no tier list maker just doesn't like me uh where is it where is it and also, I th I think it bears mentioning that, like, these are my opinions, and I'm going to make some people pissed today. <laughs> I'm going to piss some people off today, for sure. Um, thank you, Neon. Thank you so much. So, yeah, Sonic 2 on Master System, the 8-bit version. I guess technically both Master System and Game Gear. I'm going to count them. They're, they're technically not the same because, like, there's screen crunch in one. The other one, you can see a little bit more of the screen, but... Uh, in terms of design, in terms of functionality, as far as I understand it, they are the same. So it's like there's really not a point to distinguish the two. Um, but yeah, Sonic 2 on... 8-bit uh, Sonic 2. I think it is better than 
8-Bit Sonic 1, 8-Bit Sonic 1. I don't think it's better than 16-Bit Sonic 1. Um, it improves on what the first 8-Bit Sonic game did. It's still not a great game. I honestly, like, there, I feel like it makes me angrier than Sonic 1 8-Bit does. It's Tails' first appearance in the series, and he's, like, kidnapped. So he's, like, he's shown prominently throughout the game, but he's not in the game because he gets kidnapped. Um, its level design is okay. Uh, it's tough to talk about because it's, like, it's it's only slightly, I think, better than 8-Bit Sonic 1. It's poorly designed. I, I agree that it's poorly designed. Yeah, but... It, it's tough to say that I like it more, but it's also tough to deny that it's better <laughs> than Sonic 1. It's tough to, like, go into specifics of, of why without going to, like, specific levels or specific mechanics. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, that's basically where I want to put it. I don't think it's... Eh. <laughs> I don't think it's much better than that. Uh, but yeah, okay. Genesis Sonic 2. Mega Drive Sonic 2. Where are you? Here's where Sonic 3 is. Let me put Sonic 3 up here. <laughs> uh, Frontiers, you go last. Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop, you go way up here. <laughs> where are you, Scooby-Doo? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I numbered them! Why is it like this? Okay. So this was my very first ever video game that I ever played in my life. So I'm a little biased towards it, for sure. Um, and here's the thing. I want to put it in S. I, I really want, I really want to put Sonic 2 in S, but I know that there are other games that deserve it. <laughs> nah, fuck it. <laughs> S rank. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yes, there are other games that deserve S rank. But it's not like I, I have to limit myself to what I put in S rank. So Sonic 2 it vastly improves on what Sonic the Hedgehog 1 did. Um, visually, I think it's more interesting. I think that Sonic 1 is very interesting visually, but I think that it's kind of messy, whereas Sonic 2, I think, is a lot more... Um, concise, I guess would be the right word. It's a lot more concise with its design. I think it's a lot better mechanically. I think it's more interesting. I think it started to really incorporate a lot of the elements that we would see throughout the series. It created a lot of staples. Um, you have Tails. You have the casino stuff. You have the concept of Metropolis, which you could argue started with the first game with uh, Scrap Brain Zone. But I feel like Metropolis, the Death Egg. Uh, technically, it's not the first game where we see a metallic copy of Sonic because that was... Uh, Silver Sonic, or, like, the first Mecha Sonic, um, was in Sonic 2 8-bit. But I feel like it just blows it out of the water. It's so, it's so dang good. Yo, what's up, Tetra? Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you as well, my friend. Um, you have gambling. <laughs> you do have gambling. Obviously, there are bits and pieces of it that I don't like. I'm not a fan of Oil Ocean Zone, not a fan of Metropolis. Uh, the, the final boss is, like, super difficult if you're not used to it because you don't really have an opportunity to get rings or anything like that. So, it, I mean, it's not without its faults. The special stages are, are really difficult, at least in my opinion. I know that there are people who don't struggle with it at all because they just have them memorized, but... It, dude, they're, they're hard. <laughs> they're really hard. Uh, Aquatic Ruin is great. I love Emerald Hill Zone. Like, Emerald Hill is my green hill. Right? I think Green Hill is iconic, obviously, but I grew up with Emerald Hill. Chemical Plant, I know it's overused, but I love Chemical Plant. Um, Casino Night. I love Hilltop Zone. I know that's, like, a weird take, but I love Hilltop Zone. I don't know. The, I love Sonic 2. There's a lot of reasons to like Sonic 2. The sense of speed is better than, I think, the first game. Uh, you have Tails, who is cool. <laughs> you have to, It's the first time you see Super Sonic. This is the first game with Super Sonic in it. So that alone means that it gets an S rank. And the music is fantastic. The music is awesome. <laughs> what is a Sonic? Uh, he is a blue boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, then next we have... Um, where is it? I think I saw it somewhere down here. Here it is. Sonic 2 on Tiger.
I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's better or worse than the first one. Okay. It has more functionality. I, I believe it has more fun. Okay, it has tails. That's it. That's my only argument for why it's better than the first Tiger game. <laughs> that's, that's my only <laughs> That's right. Sonic wears overalls and kills a dragon named Ridley. That's, that's, that's his whole shtick. That's his gimmick. Uh, Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop. This is another one that a lot like... <sighs> okay, I like this one because I think it's cool, but objectively, I have to put it... Okay, and you know what? I'm honestly gonna only put it behind Eraser because it's not a game. <laughs> like, the, it's really not a game. Like, your only functionality is, like, crank the thing so that Eggman doesn't catch up to you. But, like, other than that, it's really not a game. It's more like a, a, a feature <laughs> to, on, a, like, a popcorn machine. Um, it's really cool. I still love that, like, we have it for historical purposes, but it's tough to call it a game. I mean, true, you, you, Mini Love is right. It does give you popcorn. It does give you popcorn, and it, that's true. However, every time I've played it, it has never given me popcorn. And also, it gives you three options for popcorn. Curry, uh, curry, butter, and, like, sweet or something. I can't remember what it is, but, like... <laughs> But popcorn, I mean, you're all making great, you're all making great arguments. However, <laughs> you can hardly classify it as a game. So it's, I think it was caramel. Oh, it's butter, salt, and curry. Thank you, Paper Luigi. Yes. Um, but yeah, I can't give it anything more than an E. Like, objectively, it's not a game. Like, any enjoyment you get out of it, at least for me personally, is just historical. It's not really because, like, oh, dude... I can't wait to play Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop again. It's it's the best game. <laughs> have I heard about Mario 64 implemented in other games? I think I have. I think so. Thank you. Thank you, Hero Squad. Uh, next up, we have Sega Sonic Cosmo Fighter. Okay. Okay. This is a tough one. I... Th <sighs> this is probably my favorite of the Waku Waku games. Yeah, I'll put it here. I think it's the the reason it's 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 as short as like man, it's tough because I kind of like Patrol Car as well, but I think that it deserves to be in a higher tier just because it's more of a traditional game. It was a, it was another one of those games that you could play inside like an arcade, like one of those children's rides. Um, but it's more of a game because it's more like a space shooter. It's it's probably just as short as Sonic Patrol uh, Patrol Car. But it functions more like a game. And honestly, it's a lot more intricate than I thought. Like, if if I thought that Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car was intricate in terms of its mechanics, this game is more so. Because, like, you can actually... Something I didn't show off during the marathon because I didn't know you could do it is that, like, you can actually change your... They show you at the beginning of the game when it's loading up that you can change weapons. And I didn't know that because, like, nothing tells you about that. Um... Except, like, unless, you know, you're at the arcade or, like, whatever, right? But, like, it has different functionalities. You can, like, shoot rockets. You can shoot lasers. You can shoot, like, tiny pellets or whatever. And there are, like, ways to get five stars. So it's it's absolutely more of a game um, than... And it makes more sense to me how to get those five stars than Patrol Car did. Patrol Car didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, in terms of how you were supposed to perform better... But Cosmo Fighter is way more understandable in terms of what you're supposed to do as a game goes. And, and then I have, it's pretty fun. Like, it's, it's short, but it's pretty fun. If you've never played it, you should go out of your way to play it, like, at least once. It's pretty cool. Um, Sega Sonic the Hedgehog is the next one. This is another arcade game that, uh, rec if you'll remember, requires the... Uh, trackball to play where is it <laughs> where are you sega sonic here you are uh sega sonic the hedgehog is the first appearance of ray and mighty as characters they're not super distinct in terms of sonic when it comes to their functionality unfortunately i kind of wish that they were they really are just there to give you the option to play as someone other than sonic but there's really not a point to playing as any other character um, I will say, like, there's a lot that I like about the game. I think it's interesting in terms of functionality. I think that, 
uh, it's a visually very interesting game. I think that the music's good. I love the animation and sprite work in this game. It's not great in terms of functionality, I will say. It's tough to... Wait, they weren't original characters? What do you mean? <laughs> um, it's tough to put it high on the list, honestly. Uh, this is another one that... I would honestly put this in the D rank, just because it's not as fun as these other games. I think it's way better than a Waku Waku Patrol car. <sighs> it's just, like, it's... It's one of those games that you should play once, at least. The game is way too frank frantic and trial error. Yes, I agree. Like, it's it's tough to control. And the only reason I really got... The, I, I can't imagine playing this game at an actual arcade machine and not wasting, like, $20 on it. Because it's it's tough. It's a tough game. <laughs> um, because of the... And, but but it's the reason it's tough is because of its control scheme. It's not because, like, the game itself is challenging. Um... It's, it's purely because you're at the mercy of the trackball and your ability to, like, speed it up or slow it down. It's so unique, and normally that would win it points, in my opinion, but it's just, like it was, like Luminant said, it's very trial and error. And I, every time I play it, I die a number of times. And it's just, like, the only reason it's not infuriating is because I have an unlimited amount of attempts because of an emulator but at an arcade you don't have that you need to like actually spend money and that's how they were right like I, I get that that's how arcade games were and that's how they were designed but it's just like i can't imagine not getting super frustrated playing this um at an actual arcade i guess um i really do wish that this game would be ported to something right to, to some collection because i think it deserves it i, I genuinely wish that uh, we could get this released in a more official capacity. And it, I think it was planned to be on, like, the Gems Collection or something, but they couldn't figure out how to emulate the trackpad properly, which makes sense. Like, it's it's tough to implement that in a way that is fair and is fun. So it's, like, it's tough. But yeah, that's Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic Chaos. Okay, Sonic Chaos was a... Another 8-bit game that had a Master System port released on the Game Gear, I believe, first. Where are you, Scooby-Doo? Sonic Chaos was, like, somewhere near the middle, I remember. I wish I'd had the time to organize these before I started the stream. I didn't know that it was going to do this, if I'm being perfectly honest. I'm holding on to the other side. I Oh, here it is. I might sneeze. <clears throat> in the middle? Absolutely in the middle. Yes. No, this is another game that's like... Again, I would think it's better than 8-Bit Sonic 2. Sonic Chaos, when I first played it, it, like, really surprised me because of how, like, advanced it seemed. It, like, in terms of function... It, Sonic 2 and Chaos were developed by the same studio aspect. Uh, they didn't develop the same... They weren't the same studio behind Sonic 1 8-Bit... Um, and so, like, you can see an evolution of, like, how they pushed the 8-bit system to make it more and more Sonic-like. Um, again, there are things about... But much like Sonic 2, there are things about it that I like more than its predecessor and things that I like less about it. You know, like, I think it's better, but at the same time, there are bits and pieces of it that I like less. In, Jap in Japan, it was known as Sonic and Tails because it was a game that you could choose either Sonic or Tails to play as. Um, and I believe Tails was, like, the easy mode of the game, whereas, like, Sonic was the normal mode, I guess. Um, I've never played as Tails, so I don't really know off the top of my head what the differences are. I think, like, you don't have to play certain levels or, or certain bosses are easy or something like that. But uh, overall, I, I, it's one of the more interesting and one of the more um i think memorable kind of games because the levels are really short compared to the other two games not that they were particularly long but it, it's kind of fun to speed through these games it, it, a lot of these older games i will say and this is something that i realized as i was doing the 8-bit um video is that they are completely different beasts when it comes to just playing it and going for 100% completion. So it's like, if you... 
try to go for all the emeralds, these games become immediately more difficult. Because <laughs> um, if you're just playing them as they are, they're pretty fun. They're pretty fun by themselves. When you're playing them to completion, they can be almost nightmarish because like the requirements are constantly changing. Some are easier than others. Um, and I think that that's also something that I'm sort of taking into account with this is like their difficulty and like uh, their 100% completion stuff. But I still think that on its own, like if you're just playing it, I'd say that Chaos is more fun than two. Uh, let's see, what is next? Okay, CD is next. Where is CD? I'm going to piss a lot of people off with this. <laughs> <laughs> Where is CD? It begins like the, the 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 hot takes begin with CD. I'm not a huge fan of CD. <laughs> I think that CD is only slightly better than the first game. I I don't <sighs> To me, the thing about CD is that like it's it's almost like the studio, right? It's almost like Sonic Team saw what people liked in Sonic 1 and they were like, oh, let's do all this, but ramp it up to 11. And it there's no subtlety with CD at all. And like, it, <laughs> CD's nuts. The levels kind of give me a headache in terms of how they're designed and in terms of how they look. I know a lot of people think that they're beautiful and I would be inclined to almost agree. But the thing is that they're... And I like vibrant colors. I think CD goes overboard, dude. I think that it it it, it goes way overboard in terms of its level design, in terms of its environment design. Um, music is great. I, it's just... People often quote it as like one of the best Sonic... OSTs, and I'm just like, I don't know, dude. And maybe it's just because I didn't grow up with it or something. I don't know, but it's like, <sighs> wasn't CD made at the same time as 2? Yeah, but they were made by different studios. So, like, Sonic 2 is made by uh, the American division. Like, they, they base after Sonic 1, they basically split the development team. They sent certain people to uh, their headquarters in California had I think they were called the Sega Technical Institute to sort of separate it from uh, Sega of Japan. And they worked on Sonic 2 while Sega of Japan or Sonic Team Japan worked on CD. And you can sort of tell how different they are because CD is way more like 1 than 2 is, I feel like. Um, and so it... I like the music. I don't love it as much as a lot of other people do but like i said it it ekes out uh one for me i think that it does have iconic things it introduces amy it introduces metal sonic um the time stones are kind of like a they're a cool feature they're not the chaos emeralds not that like the, they were super important in the first game but like they just feel like a different kind of um uh, entity i guess um, I like its mechanics. I think it's a lot more interesting mechanically than Sonic 1 is with, like, the past, present, and future mechanics. Uh, the special stages are more fun debatably than the Sonic 1 ones are. I don't love them still. I, like, I've gotten better at them, but I still don't love them. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's that's my opinion on CD. I don't love it, but I also don't like hate it or anything. Also, I lo I'm seeing people on the spreadsheet. I think that that's hilarious. I was adding stuff to the spreadsheet last night, and it's so funny that sometimes I'll just see people show up and looking at it. I'm like, that's kind of funny. <laughs> peel out. I think the peel out is ass. I think I do not like the peel out. I think it's a lesser spin dash. Although the spin dash in uh. Or the supersonic spin attack, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll call it by its government name. In CD is way worse than the super peel out in CD. But uh, I mean, that's not fair. Like, <laughs> the, the spin dash in 2 is fantastic. And it's ass in CD. At least it's in CD, but it's it's terrible. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so after that, we have... Oh, boy. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, otherwise known as Puyo Puyo. <laughs> it is an... Um, it is the American version of Puyo Puyo. It was a game... God, the history of that is just so strange. So there was... A game in Japan called... Monogatari no... I can't remember what it was. But it's basically a puzzle game. It, like, it... Beans fall, or like these little puyos fall, different colors. You need to match up four or more to get combos. Um, for the West, they were like, okay, well, we puyo's not really a thing, or monogatari, no, whatever. Mado monogatari, that's right. Uh, story of magic or something like that. I can't remember what it's what it would translate to. Um, that wasn't really a thing in the West yet. Like, so puyo puyo wasn't really a thing. But it, there were different versions of it that they, like, brought here to the West, such as Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Kirby's Avalanche. I think there was, like, another one that was, like, kind of similar. And um, the, the the design philosophy for Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is, is kind of baffling. Like, I kind of get it. Because it's not the regular Eggman design. It's They take the assets from the Saturday morning cartoon, which I guess was popular at the time, uh, and then they, they put characters from that show into this game as, like, bosses that you fight. Um, I've actually... I, ne I didn't beat this game on stream. I have since beaten this game. I have since beaten Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Something I never thought I would do. <sighs> God, this, this one's hard. Because, like, I like Puyo. I don't love this as a Sonic game, though. I don't want to put it in E. I think that it's a little... E is too harsh. But I don't feel like I can give it anything higher than a D. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a fun game, especially if you're playing it with somebody else, but it's just, like, not Sonic. You know what I mean? Judge it as a game in general. Well, that's the thing, is that, like... I don't like Puyo as much as I like Tetris, and it's, it would be weird to be like, oh, you, dude... Puyo was fantastic. Beering. Like, uh, or like or Dr. Robotnik's Bean Bean Machine. Like, so, I don't know. As far as, uh, taking that into consideration, like, what kind of a game it is and, like, in the context of Sonic, I feel compelled to put it in D. You know what I mean? D is way too harsh. I, but I don't think it's C material, though. That's the thing. I put the fucking arcade thing in C. So what? It's more of a game. <laughs> I'm okay. You know what? That's fair. That is fair. I don't know though. Like if you asked me to complete, if you asked me to play one over the other, I would play Cosmo Fighter before I played Mean Bean Machine. I don't like it that much. Personally, I'm just saying. <laughs> High D, nah. Because I, again, I would rather play these other two than I would rather play Mean Bean Machine. That's the thing. I, I. Uh, if I'm being honest, like, if, if you ask me which of these two I would rather play than Mean Bean Machine, uh, these two, or which one of these three I would rather play, these two eke out uh, Mean Bean Machine easy. <laughs> easy. Um, okay, so we have Sonic Spinball for Genesis first. Yes. Mega Drive Spinball. Where is Mega Drive Spinball? Sonic? <laughs> Here's the Game Gear version. Sonic Spinball? Why the fuck are they not next to each other? That makes no sense. I can't find it. <laughs> I don't seize it. Oh, here it is. Okay. Okay. Admittedly. Admittedly. These might be the highest ranking E tier games. We okay, we'll see. We'll see about that. These games are ass. <laughs> These games are terrible. I I despise both spinball games, but okay. I can't tell if you guys have seen my latest video, the Sonic 8 bit everything wrong with games. You'll know I, I perfectly explain, or not perfectly, whatever, that, that's in the, that's depending on who you ask, but, like, I expressed why it is 
more concisely that I don't like these games. I know that there are people who do like these games. I think it's a fun concept. Even as a kid, I remember thinking like, oh, this is such a, a, a fun concept. As a kid, I couldn't tell what the hell to do, right? <laughs> perfectly expressed my opinion. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, not perfectly. You know what I mean? Like, I expressed my opinion to the best of my ability. I tried to, like, accurately represent why I don't like these games. Um, they are not, like, they're, they're trying to have their cake and eat it too when it comes to spinball in terms of, like, having a platformer and a pinball game. And it sounds like a fun idea, except they are very laggy. Um, the screen doesn't really account for how much you're able to see on it. And, like, it's objective-based. So it's not like you're just getting points. Although you are, the, the grander objective and the way to, like, get to a credit sequence is to play through the game, beat the bosses like you would a traditional platformer. And the thing is... It's not fun because, like, you you have a clear... At least for me, right? And granted, you could just say it's a skill issue. I suck. Whatever. That's fine. That may be true. But I think it's also true that... Whatever influence you have over Sonic mid-air is not enough to make it fun, right? It's If, if you were able to control Sonic more while he was mid-air, A, that would defeat the purpose of it being a pinball game... But B, it would be more fun. Uh, and you kind of can't have those two things. Because, like, once once you shoot Sonic, it's you can aim towards something, and you will eventually get it, I guess. But it's just super annoying to do, <laughs> you know? Um, and I think that that's the thing that most bothers me about these games. And it's tough for me to say whether or not I think... Because, like... Even having played uh, the 8-bit version of Spinball for the very first time for the for the video, you guys saw that I played it for the marathon, and I, I refused to, like, really get through it. But I knew that for the 8-bit video, I was going to need to play through it. I was going to need to beat it. And maybe I was just used to the way that the 16-bit game controlled. Um, I was able to beat it, right? I was able to beat it. Not no problem, you know, but it was way easier than the 16-bit version was, especially that final level and the final boss. I, honestly, you know what? It controls worse, and the frame rate is such ass, but I'll give it the credit of it being an easier game than the 16-bit version is. And that's the thing. Like, I, ultimately, it comes down to that. They're both equally as bad. <laughs> they are both really, really bad games. But... At the very least, if you're playing them for the first time, the 8-bit version is over way sooner than the 16-bit version is. Assuming, and, and that's like depending on your skill level, right? It's which one is less bad and hard. Yeah, like it's, it's tough because it... You could argue that the 8-bit version is worse, but it's easier, you know? And like ultimately... At the very least, I have to play less of it. Because <laughs> the 16-bit version is still hard, but for the wrong reasons. Especially Final Showdown. Like, that last level. It may only be four levels long, but god damn, they are painful, dude. They are they are just painful games. Thank you, Cameron, for, for the two. I appreciate that. But yeah, it's it's tough to, to verbalize without, like, really going in circles about, like, why I don't like these games. Oh, shit. Easy. Easiest S rank so far. <laughs> okay, so when I talk about Sonic 3, I never... As a kid, right, I hated these games. I hated Sonic 3. I hated Sonic and Knuckles because I thought that they were tough. I was just a stupid kid. <laughs> um, I was, I was a kid who had very little dexterity, couldn't beat these games. But, growing... I can't remember at what point. I must have been a teenager, early adulthood. I can't remember. I gave the games another try because I'm like, okay, people really like this game for whatever reason. I don't know why. I had a lot more dexterity now. <laughs> so when I played, I'm like, oh my God, this is this is great. This is so good. <laughs> you know? So it, it, it improves. I'm, I'm trying to think of like where I want to start in terms of talking about why I think this is so much better than... As much as I love Sonic 2, Sonic 3 to me is a much more complete game. And and back to what I was saying earlier is that 
I never talk about, whenever I talk about Sonic 3, I never talk about it by itself. To me, it's Sonic 3 and Knuckles always, because they were always meant to be one game. So it's just like, yeah, if you're, if you're scrutinizing it and just looking at Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles as two separate games, I think that Sonic 2 beats both of them, kind of. But as a complete package, the way to me and the way that for the director at the time it was supposed to be, they are one game. Sonic 3 and Knuckles is one game. Um, and so I always just call it Sonic 3. Sonic 3 is a humongous game <laughs> compared to 1 and 2. Uh, it's very fun. It has a good water level. Its music is iconic. Uh, you know, take this for what you will. I don't particularly care that much. It has hypersonic. A lot of people make a really big deal out of that for some reason. Uh, Sandopolis is like the one level that I think I really don't enjoy. Flying Battery, I'm not super, you know, excited to play through. But, I mean, the, it's like small, right? Like, I would rather play through those games. I would rather play... I don't know. It's one of those games, much like Sonic 2, it's one of those games that I feel like I have to play every year just because it's so fun. I love these games. Um, the bosses are interestingly designed. It has mid-bosses. Uh, it introduces Knuckles. This is the first game that really introduces, like, lore that we've seen to this day. Like, without... You could say, oh, without Sonic 1, we don't have Frontiers. But it's like, no, truly, lore-wise, if you look at the manuals and if you look at, like, the cutscenes and stuff, if not for Sonic 3, we would not have the stories that people love to this day, you know? Um, so it's like, to me, that's another reason why this game is just so interesting. It's so good. It stands the test of time. People are iffy when it comes to the special stages. I love Blue Sphere, personally. Um, it has even more special stages beyond that where you can get more rings, you can get power-ups, you have the shields. It was so good. You have the, the, everyone has their own abilities, you know, like you have Sonic who can obviously run fast, but he also has the Insta shield and he can use the, the shield mechanics. You have Tails who can fly and get to his own things. You have Knuckles who can glide and like go through his own paths. There's so much about Sonic 3 that is just so good. Damn good. M with the five. <laughs> Spinball feels like you're trying to fight the game itself, but that's a few game. True. Yes, I agree. Uh, Archer with the five. Thank you so much. You're in the same boat. You did not like Sonic 3 as a kid. You hated the game, but over time, you've come to appreciate it more and more. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, best threequel. Yes. People say that like, oh, nothing beats or like third games or sequels never beat the original. It's like, no, dude, the, Sonic is the exception. <laughs> Sonic is the one where it's like, it kept getting better and better, you know? And I'll always have my, like, affection for Sonic 2. There are times I like Sonic 2 more than Sonic 3, but as a complete package, to me, it's undeniable that Sonic 3 is just a fantastic game. You know, it's, it's undeniable for me. But yeah, that is, that is my TED Talk on Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Okay, Another hot take. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. This one's tough, dude. <laughs> this one is tough to talk. About. Well, I I have an idea where I'm gonna put this one, but you guys aren't gonna. You guys are gonna think it's weird. <sighs> where are you? <laughs> Where is you? This is what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to waste time just looking for the game. Here you are. Sonic Drift for the Game Gear was a Japanese exclusive title. Uh, and it was a racing game, which was kind of the answer to Nintendo's Mario Kart series. At least it might have been maybe a name, whatever. Um, when I played this game as a kid as part of like the Sonic Adventure DX thing... Um, a lot of the 8-bit games just seemed like ass. They were, like, a lot of them seemed horrible, right? When I played this game again, this is a lot like the Waku Waku games. There's a lot of, like, the spinball games. I played it um, as part of the 8-bit Sonic games video. I played it for the marathon. I played it briefly for the marathon because I was like, there's really not a whole lot to Sonic Drift. Let's just, you know, show it off. 
play it, whatever. Um, Dante with the five, thank you so much. Personally, you like Sonic 2 and 3 equally, but you understand why 3 and Knuckles is the best of the trilogy by many. Yes. Uh, agreed. Thank you, Dante. Appreciate you. Um, so, I played it for the marathon briefly. I played it to completion for the, for the channel, for the video. And the thing is, when you're first playing through the game, I can completely, I can 100% understand why people don't like this game. I can 100% understand because the mechanics are weird, right? But the thing is, it is called Sonic Drift and they really, really expect you to drift. This game goes from being stupidly difficult, unnecessarily stupidly hard because you can't really see what's, what's ahead of you, to disgustingly easy once you understand the mechanics and once you have it down. I have lapped a character in this game. <laughs> How do you drift? I believe you use... I can't remember what the mechanics are, but, like, I think you use, like, the two button or something. And that's basically what you have to do for the entire game. Like, you are expected to drift the entire game. And once you, once you understand how the characters control, because they all control differently, and once you understand how all that works, it is a really easy game. But, yo, what's up, Neon? What's up, Icy? Um, it's a really easy game. But I think it's really fun. <laughs> I think that, like, once you understand the mechanics and start winning, it is immensely satisfying to play. Um... But that is under the caveat that you know how it works to begin with. So it's like, I still want to put it in D, but I think it's, honestly, I'm going to put it here. <laughs> I'm going to put it there. But it's, dude, I, I know that I'm not going to convince anybody. Peak mid game. I don't know if I'd say it's peak mid. I really enjoy it. I, I really enjoy Sonic Drift. Um, but I also acknowledge it's not a great game. It's a very short game. You could probably, if you're good at it, you could beat it in like 10 minutes. But it, it to me, the fun really comes from mastering those controls. That's the thing. Like to, to me, the, the fun of it comes from mastering those controls and really understanding how the drift mechanic works. Because if you play it as a traditional racing game, it's bad, <laughs> and, it's, and it's hard. But, like, once you get it, it's just like, oh, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> um, Tales in the Music Maker. This was a Sega Pico game. The Sega Pico was a an edutainment console. Um, in fact, I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. I, I bought this piece of shit <laughs> for the marathon and played it on the actual console. Actually... Fun fact, uh, I don't think I ever told you guys this, but I did find a way to emulate these. You guys might remember that during the marathon, I specifically bought a Pico so I could play it because like on the emulator I was using, I couldn't do anything. However, I found an emulator that somebody made <laughs> that is specifically like the code is modified so that it can support Pico games. And I've actually played through the entire the entirety of Tales of the Music Maker and Sonic's uh, Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World. So I've actually played them <laughs> and can talk about them now. So Tales of the Music Maker. Where is Tales of the Music Maker, <laughs> first off? So here's Game World. I'm going to put Game World somewhere around here. Uh, Speed Simulator goes near bottom. Uh, there's Tales, <laughs> but that's not the Music Maker. Here he is. Um, <sighs> Tales of the Music Maker... Uh, I'm going to put it in E. The reason why is because it's... This is one of those games that's like hardly a game. You know what I mean? What was the specific Pico emulator, if you don't mind? It, oh my god. It was a modified version of the Pico Drive. I don't... I can't remember exactly where it was I found it, but there was, like, a board that was talking about, like... I could probably put it somewhere on the Internet Archive um, later on, just because, like, it was difficult to find. Uh, because there, there's an emulator called the Pico Drive, and that's specifically for Genesis games and for, like, other Sega games. 
Uh, but it's a, it's a modified version of the Pico drive. So it's just like, it's you kind of have to look at it like that, <laughs> or you have to search for it like that, like Pico drive for Sega Pico or something like that. Um, so it's not easy to find. Isn't every console an entertainment console? I said edutainment, not entertainment. So you are learning. And technically it's supposed to teach you how like music works, but it it doesn't. It doesn't really teach you about how music works. It's more like one of those PC games from our childhoods where you like you're, you could just like mess around and be like, ah, this makes a flute sound. That's pretty cool. You know? Um, but beyond that, it's really it's hardly a game like it has mini games in it, but they're not really fun at all. Mario Paint, it's kind of like Mario Paint, but like also not quite. You know what I mean? Um, and that's why, like, I want to put it in E. Like, I'd rather play it than <laughs> Spinball. But um, it's also less of a game than Spinball is, but it's just, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's tough to, like, talk about it without going into the intricacies of each minigame. Um, and also the Pico is just a really cool console. Uh, I'll get more into it with Game World, but it's a really neat console. Um, like, it, it, it's so nonsensical that I can barely remember any of the mini games. Like, there was one where, like, you're supposed to draw and, like, catch some of the notes. And you're supposed to, like, catch the right notes. And then there's one that's, like, a musical chairs thing. But then the musical chairs one is just kind of unfair because, like... It really comes, and granted, this is kind of how musical chairs is, but it kind of, the, the last round comes down to luck. Because it's just like, okay, I don't know when the music's going to stop. And it's like really a 50-50 chance, like if, if, if I win or lose. And that just makes it, I don't know, not fun. But yeah, um, that's Tales of the Music Maker. Not super fun, but like also kind of worth checking out at least once, I guess. Uh, Sonic Trouble Trouble. This is another interesting one. This is the fourth quill to the 8-bit games. It is a direct follow-up to Sonic Chaos. It was called Sonic and Tails 2 in Japan. Um, but then for some reason, they just said, fuck that in the West to the marketing. And they were just like, well, triple trouble, I guess, because you fight Eggman and Knuckles and Fang, even though Fang is more optional than anything because he's only in the uh, uh, special stages. And the special stages are very interesting. Like, it's it's weird. I would say, like, I think I like Chaos more, but I would say that Triple Trouble is a better game, if that makes sense. So I'm going to put it above... I'm going to put it above Chaos. But I think it's... I struggle sometimes choosing which one I like more, right? Yo, what's up, Greg? Is this the one with the funny boss names? Yes. Tart Turtle, Marva Shapopoulos Go. Um, God damn it, what's the other one? Woodbutter Rundorf and Giga Thomas Penn. Dude, I love Giga Thomas Penn. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's it's an interesting game, interesting concept. Uh, it really feels like the culmination of of what they were able to do with the 8-bit Sonic games. Uh, Sonic feels the most like Sonic, I think, in this game. But man, that it's it's a shame that it was never there was never a Master System version of this game. I still need to play the 16-bit fan game. I would like to play that with you guys. But the fact that, that it's, it's a fan, it's a fan game. It was never you know ported to Master. Like there was a fan port to the Master System as well. But like. As it stands, officially, it's only ever been on the Game Gear. Uh, and I think that that's to its detriment. I feel like if it had more screen space, if I if it had more processing power, it'd be way more fun. Um, but that being said, I still think it's a fun enough game. It it To me, it's like the Sonic 3 and Knuckles of the 8-bit games. You know? Like, it, it culminates most of the things that the other 8-bit games did to make a very unique and very recognizable title. Um... While still having its faults, you know, like I think that it, it is the apex of of that tetralogy for sure. What's my favorite stage? <sighs> Dude, this marathon made you a change, man. You didn't have much to say about eight bit Sonic before. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> what was my favorite stage? <sighs> I don't know. I like Robotnik Winter. 
but I don't know if it's my favorite. That's the thing. I like Sunset Park, but Sun Sunset Park is annoying, though, because of its enemies. It's tough to say which one I like the most. I don't know. I don't know. The train stage? I think... Th I kind of think about Sunset Park, too, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Wacky World Creativity Studio. Where are you, you piece of garbage? Wacky World Creativity Studio. This is false advertising. This is not a Sonic the Hedgehog video game. Sonic appears twice in this game. On the cover of the game... Ixnay, three times. On the cover of the game, on the box. On the cartridge itself. Oh god, did I make this template yourself? I sure did. And once on the title screen. This is not a Sonic the Hedgehog game. This is Mario Paint, but make it Sonic. Uh, and for that... It's going right behind Tales of the Music right here. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> no, because, like, it, dude, I had my fun with it, but, like, it itself is not an interesting game at all. Like, even as a... Mario Paint is more interesting than this game. Like, it's really not that fun. Uh, it, It's, like, put sticker and change color and hear sound effect. You know, like, it... I don't know. I don't know. It's not... It's really not a Sonic game. I, I felt bamboozled when I played it because I was like, oh, this isn't... Where's Sonic? <laughs> like, at the very least, I figured he'd be there somewhere, but, like, nope. He's he's just straight up not. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Okay, here's an interesting one. Knuckles is chaotic. Where are you? You're on my shelf, actually. I don't know if you guys can see that, but... Oh, you can. My Sonic Shrine is, like, slightly off-frame. Um, Knuckles is chaotic for the 32X. Its biggest fault, in my opinion... Okay, it has a couple of faults. But the biggest one is that it's on the Sega 32X. And there is no fucking reason. <laughs> Destroyer, thank you for the six-month membership. I appreciate that. You can't watch this to work right now. I'm so sorry. I I thank you for being here, though. You'll definitely get... Definitely watch this when you get a chance... Hope your day is going well. I hope your day is going well, too. Thank you so much, DS. I appreciate that. Um, What was I saying? Oh, yes. Okay. So its biggest fault is it, it is on the 32X. And there is zero reason. Zero reason this game has never been ported to anything else other than, this, than the 32X. It makes no sense to me. I'm assuming there's something in the code or in the processing. I don't know. No, but that doesn't make sense, though. Because it's a simple game. It's it's really a simple game, and I don't understand why they've never made a port, why they've never... I mean, they, they technically did, like, twice, but they were on, like, Stadia kind of uh, systems, or, like, Game Pass systems, where, where you had to, like, subscribe to Gamefly, and, like, you could play it, and then, like, once it was gone, it was gone. It was, like, the Netflix of, of gaming subscriptions. Um, but it's, like... There's no real, like, it, it's hard to emulate. I don't know, dude. I emulated it just fine. <laughs> People have been emulating this shit on computers just fine f for years. <laughs> so it's just like, I don't, I don't know why, um, or just rebuild it. Like, do, do, they could easily, right? And I feel like they've wanted to. I feel like the Christian Whitehead and, and Headcanon and all that, that awesome team have wanted to do something with Knuckles' Chaotix. For so long, they could build this game from the ground up. <laughs> they could build this game from the ground up. And they have not. <laughs> um, yes, the fact that this is not on Origins is a crime. It should be, because it is a Knuckles game, and it, like it, it's honestly fun. Like, I would rather play this again than play CD. Honestly, I might put this in B, because I it's genuine like. It has its faults, yes. You know, one of its faults is the dual character system. I don't care much for it. I think it's really cool, though, that you have all these characters that you can play as. Do I play as all of them? No, because Charmy kicks ass and he is broken. But it's still cool that you have all these different characters who have all these different abilities. Uh, the tag team system is a cool concept. I don't think it's ex executed very well. I think it's stupid that you don't have a linear progression like you do in other Sonic games, but what we do get is very interesting. It's more explorative than other Sonic games. Um, 
Ah, uh, dude, and, like I'd never played it before the marathon, and when I played it, I was genuinely like, I was wonderfully surprised by how much I enjoyed the game. Like, its music is great. I think the visuals are super nice. The sprite work is amazing. Um, it's got cool mechanics, although not all of them are S tier mechanics, but. It's a cool game. Like and and I love the um the special stages. I think the special stages are pretty damn cool too. Um I don't know. I don't know. I really really like this game. <laughs> if chaotic is B, you might as well put CD and B, honestly. No. <laughs> I'll play Chaotix over CD any day. Dorn to Summer. Dorn to Summer is a banging song. <laughs> it's such a good game. It or sorry, it's such a good song. Uh, but yeah, I enjoy Chaotix. I enjoy it. Oh. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Here you are. Tales of Sky Patrol. You know what? I didn't... I don't like the Tales games. I do not like the Tales games. But <laughs> I will say that I think it's better than most of the games on that tier. <laughs> it is a very short game. I actually had to play this again uh, to capture it. Uh, so I played it for the marathon, then I played it again on my own time to capture it. And guess what? I had to redo the last level again over and over, just like I did in the marathon, because that last level is ass. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> I do, like, I love the concept, right? I love the concept of Tails being in, like, an auto-scrolling game uh, where he's continuously flying because that's kind of his thing. But mechanically, it's not interesting. Uh, it was a rework of what was originally supposed to be a Disney game, at least from what I understand. But then like, they were like, oh, but what if, like, Sonic, though? And they were just like, okay. Um, you're surprised Arla hasn't brought me her pig while I've been streaming. No, she's, she's chilling. She's barking a couple times, but she's chilling. Um, I think execution-wise, it's not great, though. I think that they could have done something to make it a lot more interesting and enjoyable. And this is just not it. This is not what I wanted to... Like, it, it kind of sucks that there's not a really good Tales game. Because I feel like Tales deserves it. And there's really not a good Tales game. Um... And this, it's tough for me because, like, we still have adventure to to get to, right? And I don't know where adventure is going to fall into this. Um, although I will say that this is like the first time that I think this is the first time that Tails has a dummy ring that he uses as an attack. Uh, I don't know. I just don't like Tales of Sky Patrol. It's not a very fun game. It's a sh thankfully it's a short one. Uh, it varies in challenge, especially when you don't know what you're doing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> I don't really like the game that much. Uh, Drift 2. Drift 2. Sonic Drift 2. Uh, Sonic Drift 2 is a mechanically better game than Sonic Drift 1. It is a way more difficult game than Sonic Drift 1. It has more characters in it. Um, it introduces Knuckles, Metal Sonic, and Fang into... I think this is the first time that you're able to play as Metal Sonic. This is the first time I think that the actual Metal Sonic... No, that's not true, because Triple Trouble... Metal Sonic wasn't Triple Trouble, that's right. Um, I was going to say it was the first time that Metal Sonic came back, but that's not true. Um... It's a lot more involved. The mechanics are a lot more difficult. The AI is better. It rubber bands. Uh, the tracks are more interesting. The music is really, really good. Uh, this was another one that had a lot of surprises to me. Um, in order to get to the final... There, there's a final race before the credit sequence, and I didn't know that uh, until I recaptured this for, like, the 8-bit games. Uh, and you have to place first in every, ra in every GP, and you have to... Okay, you have to beat the first two Grand Prix, and then you have to place in first in every race on the last GP in order to get to the final race. Um, and the cool thing about that final race is that it, it's a one-on-one -on -one race. If you're playing as Sonic, Amy, Tails, and Knuckles, 
you race against Eggman. If you race as Eggman, Metal Sonic, or Fang, you race against Sonic uh, on the Death Egg. And the music is... the boss theme from Sonic 3. It's it's a remix of the boss theme from Sonic 3 and it is it is so good. <laughs> it is such a good remix of that theme. I was not expecting it at all. I was like, "Whoa! Holy hell." Also, it was the only drift game to be released in America. That's true. It was the only game to it was uh the only drift game we got in America. Um although I do own the first drift game, uh I had to import it. I do not own the second one cuz I did order it and it never came. So I need to get my money back. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think it's a better game. I don't know that I enjoy it. I think that because it's more difficult, I enjoy it less, but I would still say it is a better game than the first Drift game, just because it's more, it's more robust as far as a video game goes. Uh, okay, here's another, here's another one. And I agreed with everyone. I initially, when I was a kid, I agreed with everyone that I thought that this game was utter ass. <laughs> Sonic Labyrinth was a game on the Game Gear, uh, the portable Sega system to rival the Game Boy. Um, it is the game where Sonic is slow as molasses. He is slow as ass. Uh, and I remember uh, this is another game that I played on the Sonic Adventure DX uh, unlockable thing, and I hated it as a kid. I hated it. I thought this was so bad. Because <laughs> it's like, Sonic's so slow. And then, like, you're this is isometric, and you have to, like, look for... What the fuck? Also, you didn't know ass ran. It does. <laughs> Get your ass over here. You make it go. Um, this is the first... Uh, as far as I remember, it's the first isometric Sonic game. Um, however, having played it, for the marathon and playing it again on my own time, knowing like e where everything was, it is far more enjoyable. Like it's one of those games that to me is fun in the context of knowing what you're doing and trying to speed run it. So while I don't think it's a good game at all, it's a game that I don't honestly mind playing. I don't mind playing this game at all. I think it's kind of enjoyable actually. <laughs> like I would, I would honestly rather play this game than Puyo. <laughs> Not because I think Puyo is bad. It's just like, if you ask me which I would rather play, it, it, it's this, you know? So it's like, it's not a great game, but it's also not like the worst game I've ever played. I enjoy it enough for what it is. Uh, especially like if you understand some of the mechanics, like if you spin dash, yeah, you're going to go really fast, but you can also stop your spin dash. You know, you can like, Spin dash, get to where you need to go, stop your spin dash, and you'll be where you need to be. So it's just like, you're slow, yes, but you also don't need to be slow. You know what I mean? I I hope that that explains why I think that this game is pretty okay. <laughs> Fuji one go, baby. Fuji one go. Okay, this is a tough one. So for the marathon... I, there was a there was a whole ass part where I just played Tales Adventure because Tales Adventure is a game that was on the Game Gear. It was the only Tales game that came to America. Actually, uh, this game is hard to find, by the way. It's it's it is it is an, it is an expensive game, <laughs> and it, the, the problem is, it's not like ludicrously expensive, right? It's less than a hundred dollars, but it's it's one of those games where it's like I really don't want to pay like. 80 to 90 dollars for a game that a i'm not gonna play b i really don't even like that much <laughs> um it is a metroidvania which to me conceptually is like perfect for a tales game because it's it's the it, technically technically it's the first game where you really get to see tales mechanical prowess um, and in fact, it's, it's the first game that has the Sea Fox, which is like a staple of the Sonic series, which I didn't even realize until like playing the Boom games. I'm just like, whoa, the Sea Fox from fucking Tales Adventure? Um, it's a Metroidvania, but it's really not a good one. It's not fun. Like it's, it, there, there's so many things that you collect that are completely useless. Like you never need to use like... I would say 
of the things that you find in this game are things you never need to use. <laughs> like, the radio, and the fang power-up, the knuckles power-up, most of your uh, upgrades to the Sea Fox you never need to use. Um, so yeah, like, I played this, I, I didn't even get, like, halfway through this game when I played it on the marathon, and I was playing that shit for, like, four hours. Um, and granted, I get it. That's the point of a Metroidvania. You're supposed to, like, scout out the game, see, like, ah, I can't do this. I have to go back to another level and find what I need to get in order to proceed. But the thing is, Tales Adventure is so unclear. Because, And again, it's because you get so many items throughout your adventure that you can't really tell, like, ah, is this the thing I need in order to advance? Until you, like, put it in your inventory because you need to constantly exit the levels, go back to your base, re-equip your shit, go back to the level. And it's like, it's not a fast game. So it's just like, you're going to be constantly going back and forth until you get the right thing. And half the time, you you don't have enough context to know what it is you need in order to advance. So to me, that's what makes it so not enjoyable to play, right? And even like, even using a guide, right? When I used a guide to play this game, that's the only way I was going to be able to beat this was if I used a guide to know what the hell I needed, how to do it in the most efficient way possible. Using a guide made the game tolerable. It made it, like... Fun is the wrong word. <laughs> fun is not the right word. It's, it's, it's a tedious game, yes. It's, it's not a fun game. But I kind of enjoyed it more when I was using... A guide. I would say it's a better game than Tales of Sky Patrol. But if you ask me to beat one of these games, I would rather beat Tales of Sky Patrol again. D Shark with the five, thank you so much. Good to see you back. Been missing the streams. Hope I've been well. I hope you've been well too. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I like talk about sometimes. Uh on very specific occasions. <laughs> You just called out a lot of Zelda games except Breath of the Wild. But I feel like with Zelda... I mean, granted, I haven't played most of them yet, so I don't know. But, like, I feel like even those have more context than Tales Adventure does, though. Um, I think that it's a, it's a better, well-rounded game than a lot of the games on this tier. But it's a game that I really would not like to beat again. Like I said, I think it's cool when you're actually playing it and when you're actually going through it. It's cool. It's innovative. It's, like, interesting. It's a Sonic Metroidvania. So conceptually, it's cool. But in practice, I I really don't like this game. <laughs> Zelda Marathon next. Yes. Well, kind of. I mean, yes. But there's another thing that I want to do in addition to that, which I will talk about at the end of the stream uh so yeah that's tales adventure oh okay interesting this is an interesting one sonic championship or sonic the fighters is a 1996 yes 1996 game this is technically the first time sonic's been in 3d um it is an arcade fighting game and god damn it why has there not been another one um i kind of love this game actually um Shit. Okay. Ah, uh, this is tough. <laughs> I'm gonna put it right behind the first Sonic game. Because I think it's really fun. But I also don't think it deserves to be higher than the first Sonic game. You know what I mean? It's it's a very I love the squash and stretch in it. The models are really good despite how polygonal they are. They have that virtual fighter Sega early fighting game style to them. They introduce interesting looking characters such as Bark the Polar Bear, Bean the Dynamite, kind of Honey the Cat. Um It sees the return of Espio the Chameleon from Knuckles as Chaotix. It sees the return of Fang from from Triple Trouble. They were really trying to make Fang like a thing, but he for some reason, he just never caught on. I don't know why. It's fun casually. It's very fun casually. However, you know, it can get really tough. <laughs> yes, it, it it is a sort of spin-off, spiritual. It, it was very heavily 
based off of the Fighting Vipers game, which was also uh, developed by Sega. I believe it was AM3. It was the AM3 branch of Sega that developed uh, Fighting Vipers and also Sonic uh, the Fighters. <clears throat> very intricate, very cool moves, very cool animation, great music. I love the levels that they choose for it. Um, getting Super Sonic in this game is one of the... <laughs> you give it to a fighting game vet, they'll explode. <laughs> it is one of the fucking toughest things to do. <laughs> in Probably in the whole series. Because you are supposed to never lose a round. You are supposed to never lose a round in the campaign mode as Sonic. And if I recall correctly, not get hit against Metal Sonic. Because the only time you unlock Super Sonic is during the Metal Sonic fight. You're supposed to beat Metal Sonic in the first round, and then you turn Super Sonic in round two in the Metal Sonic fight. Metal Sonic is so fucking hard. <laughs> he is... I've done it! I, I can say that I've done it. I have footage of it. I did it. But it blowed. <laughs> it blew. <laughs> it, it sucked so bad to do. I had to play the campaign mode like 10 to 15 times. Maybe not that many. It, it probably wasn't that many times. But it is such a hard fucking thing to do. <laughs> Metal can hit you round one. You just have to win. Okay, okay. I See, because that's how I couldn't... Rem I, I swear to you that I did that once. I swear that on one of my attempts, I didn't die a single time. I didn't lose a single round. Got hit by Metal Sonic in round one and still didn't get Super Sonic in round two. And I was so pissed <laughs> when, it, when that happened. Um, but it is, I mean, it's debatable whether or not getting Super Sonic is worth it because you don't really get him that, you don't get to enjoy him that much. But being able to fight really fast and beat the shit out of Metal Sonic is very satisfying. Um... But yeah, no, I still think that Sonic the Fighters is a very fun game. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, where are you? All these basics, I mean, Sonic Schoolhouse uh, was a game exclusively for the Windows PC. It might have been on Mac, too. I can't remember. But it was, it was a computer game. And good Lord, dude, I thought... I thought this was going to be a lot more than it was. Um. Ah, uh, hmm. Okay, here's the thing. I would rather complete Sonic Schoolhouse again rather than complete Tales Adventure again, but I think Tales Adventure is a better game. <laughs> um. How do you ever find a game that or dude? I tr I, I said this at the, at the beginning of the stream. I tr I have them enumerated. I have them by number, and for some reason, it just generated it all random, and I don't get why. <laughs> um. But anyway, Sonic Schoolhouse, I thought was going to be a lot more than it was. It's a very simple game, even for like higher grades, because we were all on, on like what grade. four? four, five, or six. And obviously, I mean, granted, I'm not like 12 years old, so a lot of it is easy, but it just, it felt like even too easy for that age, you know? Um, I thought there was going to be a lot more Sonic stuff in it. It feels like Sonic is really just there. It, it's kind of like Wacky World in that like Sonic feels like he's only there for like brand recognition because there's not a whole lot about it that is very Sonic in nature. Like there are Sonic statues and there's like Robotniks in it, I guess. But it's really not that engaging as far as an edutainment game goes. Uh, I think that <laughs> the funniest part of it, and I think the best part of it, is like when you're on the field trip learning about the different animals. I think that that's like the best part of it. It's the most like educational one. Or do I want to reorganize the name, the games? I guess I can. I, like if you guys will bear with me, because <laughs> I don't. Uh... I just hate doing this because I feel I feel so bad about like wasting people's time because I should have done this beforehand. But I just, it's fine. It's fine. We'll we'll be we'll do it. It's okay. 
<clears throat> Go ahead, I don't mind. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, let's put these together. Shit, dude. Like, I don't even know where to start and where to go. <laughs> this goes near the bottom. It's before this. Mania also goes near the bottom. I think it's before this one. <laughs> I'm just trying to organize it to the best of my ability first. Uh, this was somewhere near here, I think. Shadow near the middle. This was also near the end. Lego was also near the end. Shattered Crystal was near the end-ish. Jump. If you want to clap, let us take you through this monkey rap. Ooh, okay. I'm holding on to the other side. I won't give up till the end of May. It's time to face your fears. Dirt has come and gone. I need a strength to carry on. Did I've been listening to that in the car? <laughs> You're just an enemy. No, the one I've been listening to a lot, though, is, um... <sighs> Not undefeatable. I mean, I've been listening to a lot of Undefeatable as well, but, like, it's... Face Your Fear, I think it's called. Just you step in the path, then you're gonna regret it. I'm gonna put da 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 when I'm making my exit. Cause I but you to bet the faint of art only if you let it. When the whole world knows your name, will we dance with destiny? I've been there. I've seen it. I'm never gonna stop believing. You find your flame. Find your flame. That's the name of it. Also, I've not been doing that much talking recently, so I'm getting tired already. <laughs> Dude, Find Your Flame is such a good song. Where the fuck is the other Mario one? M Mario? <laughs> Where are you, Mario? <laughs> Shoeful goes before. Okay, we'll work with this. We'll, we shall work with this. I won't give up till the end of me. Okay. <clears throat> no, I'm not like tired, like sleepy. Just my voice is getting like... <gasps> okay. Next is Game World. Okay, so I got to talk a little bit more about the Pico. So the Pico is super weird in that, like, it's a cartridge, and the and the CPU or the processor is a lot like a traditional Genesis, but it has, like, magnets on the back. And when you flip the pages on a Pico game, the console immediately recognizes what page you're on, and you can, like, use your stylus to pick which games you want to play. And Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World is, like, an assortment of mini games that you can play. And a lot of them are pretty fun, I will say. I will, I'll honestly put this, like, on a low D tier. I'd still rather play it than... Uh... <laughs> uh, eeny, meeny, miny, uh, fine. <laughs> honestly, mm, I'd even rather play it than Waku Waku. Because, like, it's an assortment of, of mini games. And a lot of them are pretty fun. They're very basic. They're They're definitely, like... Kids would enjoy these. It's like honestly going to a carnival and like playing whatever carnival games they have there. There's really no objective to it, but like they're they're kind of fun. Cobalt Prime with the two, thank you so much. Frontiers upgraded from butt rock to ass metal. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. 
<laughs> oh my god, that's really funny. <laughs> um, but there is like a final thing that you can do. There, there's like a final mini game that you can play that actually will yield a credit. Actually, no, because it's on the same page as a credits roll, and I didn't know that until I like captured it for uh, archival purposes again. Um, and my favorite thing about it, much like Tales of Music, uh, Tales of the Music Maker, it also has like a drawing feature that you can use. And we did that during the marathon. And actually, I like the drawing feature in Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World more than uh, Tales of the Music Maker. It's a lot more responsive. It's a lot more robust. So it's just like it's it's if Tales of the Music Maker is worth checking out at least once. I think that you would at least have a good time playing Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World. It's not a fantastic game by any means, but it's a fun, like, piece of Sonic history. And it's it's one of those things where, like, this also has, like, voice acting. I think it's the first time that Tails has a voice. It's the first time that Amy has a voice. Um, <clears throat> even though it's a bit crunched up the ass. Oh! Yay! <laughs> like, they're, they're so muffled and, like, crunchy. But... It's so cute, and, like, you get to talk to, like, the animal critters and stuff, and I don't know. I like Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World. I, it's not something that I would go out of my way to play, but it's one of those games that I'm happy I played. I'm, I'm glad I got to experience it, because it's, it's a fun little time. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> I'm glad you guys liked that. Yay! <laughs> Choose the lever! <laughs> Sorry, whatever the fuck. Um... Uh... Yeah! <laughs> oh shit! Oh, I don't know if Nathan is still here. I I, I hope he's here because uh, this is a game that it's kind of our game, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, this is the Genesis version. I think it, I, they're pretty back to back, right? Yeah, they're like back to back. Okay, so uh, next up we have yo. Everybody's everybody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we own it, yes. Uh, Sonic 3D Blast by Traveler's Tales. This was the first Traveler's Tales Sonic game. Um, it was developed by Traveler's Tales uh, originally for the Genesis, and it was the second isometric Sonic game. And I had no interest in this game as a kid. I remember I would see it in, like, Mega Collection, and I'd be like, uh, mm -mm. I, I can't bring myself to play this. This this looks, and, and it controls, like, ass... No, <laughs> I, I don't I don't want to play this. It's so a non Sonic game. It's so like, no, but Nathan, it's it's a guilty pleasure for my friend Nathan. And when we lived together, there were so many times that like he would play it on Mega Collection because he loved it growing up. Like he it was a game that he really enjoyed growing up and he acknowledges that it's like a guilty pleasure. And there were so many times that while I lived with him, I would just he would be like off work and he'd just be chilling, and he'd be like, today's the day. Today's the day. How did I know how it controlled when I, when I, when I didn't want to play it? Because I played it for a little bit, and I was like, mm-mm, no. <laughs> I moved out. Yep. I, I, oh yeah, I guess I never told you guys. Um, Since the marathon ended, after we played Frontiers, uh, I moved. I bought a house. <laughs> so this is, this is my office now. This is my own space. Uh, but we can talk about that another time. But yeah, like he, I would find him and he's just like playing the game. He's like, today's the day. Today's the day I beat this game. <laughs> um, and he like, there were so many times he never would. Because <laughs> um, he would like get bored near like the final world or something. He'd be like, ah, oh, dude, I can't bring myself. This game is kind of boring. Um, or it, it would be like too tough. And like, I would understand that. And with the five, thank you so much. Always remember that the crackhead that shouted. Sega! Yeah, I don't like that era of Sega. I, I, I miss Sega. I don't like Sega! <laughs> um, but that encur like it, it encouraged me to like try it out for myself. And I, I would watch him play and I'd be like, oh god, this is like a nightmare to look at sometimes. Um, love the soundtrack because the, the Genesis version was composed by Jun Sano from Crush 40 or who would later go on to form Crush 40. Um, and the Saturn version was actually composed by Richard, uh, fuck, what's his name? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Someone's probably going to say it before I get to it, but Richard, Richard Jock, thank you, Richard Jock. 
uh, who you guys might recognize as the producer and and er, arranger of the Sonic R soundtrack, which was also a Traveler's Tales game. In fact, Richard Jock has been has a history with Sonic as well because he also composed for Sonic Freeriders, weirdly enough. Um, <clears throat> and he composed the Saturn version. The Saturn version has such good music, dude. It's So here's the thing. 3D Blast... I'm gonna put above fighters, but below. Oh fuck, this sucks. Cause here's the thing, I actually really like the Saturn version. Um, I really, really like the Saturn version, but I don't know if I like it more than the original game. I I might though. I actually might like it more than the original games. I don't. God damn, I don't know. <laughs> It's tough. That's not the Saturn version. I know, I know, I know. That's where I want to put the Genesis version, because the Genesis version, um, it's fine. The director's cut version is great, but like I'm I'm going based off of like the original, and it's fine. It's clunky. Uh the music's good. The special stages are pretty easy. Um, but <clears throat> what about the You're My Hero song? You're my hero. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I do like that song, but um, the Saturn version, if you guys will remember, I wasn't able to really run during the marathon, but I've played it since, and it is so superior, in my opinion, to the Genesis version. I, I think I might like the music more. Visually, it's more impressive. Like, if, if there was a version of this game that had the director's cut controls with, this, with the Saturn visuals and the option to choose between the Genesis and Saturn soundtracks. Just, oh. Not perfection, but goddamn, that would be amazing. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. And the and the Saturn half-pipe special, special stages, which are amazing. They look so good. The music is fantastic in the Saturn version. Oh, God. Dude, I, I can't believe I like Sonic 3D Blast as much as I do. In fact, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> I, I'm 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 doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> I know that there's like technically not much of a difference between the Genesis and Saturn versions, but ah, oh, dude. <laughs> no, and, and I and I mean it. I would rather play 3D Blast than than CD. I know people like CD. I just don't care for it that much. I don't care for CD that much. <laughs> you wonder why they never ported the Saturn version? It's like for the same reason that they they've never ported the Chaotix version or the Knuckles' Chaotix game. It's apparently because it's like hard to emulate, but it's just like, dude, build it from the ground up. It's it's weird. How could I know? I know I I see love CD, and I'm sorry, but <laughs> I just think it's mid. Um, so yeah. Oh, you know what I don't think is mid, though? This next game. <laughs> Fucking Sonic Blast. Oh, God, this is, this is a painful one. It's a bad game, but I would rather play it before these games, honestly. Because it's easy. It's, it's a bad game. It's, I hate its soundtrack. It's ugly. The screen crunch is awful. The... Special stages suck. But it's... I, I'll give it this. It's easy. <laughs> it's like it's an easy enough game. Time to add an F tier. <laughs> like... And that's the thing. Like, if you asked me to play Sonic Blast versus Tales of Adventure, I would probably play Blast again. But I don't think it's a better game. That's the thing. That's what makes it tough. Like, I think Tales Adventure is a better game, even if I don't like it mechanically. It, 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 it looks terrible. It sounds awful. The screen crunch is bad. Like, there's so many bad things about it. Like, the only redeeming quality that this game has, A, is that I think its its history is really interesting because it's, like, it's, it's, it's a one-of-a-kind, like, it was exclusively on the Game Gear until a Brazilian company called Tech Toy was, like, Dude, fucking the Genesis is amazing. 
or sorry, the Master System is kick ass. Like if there is not a Master System 5 in 2023, I'm going to lose my mind, right? So they they made their own port of Sonic Blast for the Master System, which is why the box looks different. Uh, and it had like zero influence from Sega, I believe. Like this is its own thing. But even with the Game Gear version, it's just like, it's not much of a different game. Like, it... <laughs> it's a bad game. I don't like Sonic Blast. But it could be worse. It could control like absolute garbage. And it's like, it doesn't control well, but I honestly expected it to be a lot worse than it was. I will say. <clears throat> okay, so this is a this is a weird one. This is one of those like it's technically not a game, but it is still a video game where you play as Sonic specifically. So Sonic the Hedgehog Into Dreams was like an extra thing for Christmas nights uh, on the Saturn, um, and it's like the first time that you get to control Sonic. It's the first time you get to control 3D Sonic in a 3D environment. Um, and it's really interesting that they made the mechanics different from the main game, because I was wondering about that. I was wondering if it was going to be different enough from the original game to make it, like, um, worth playing. And I would say so. Like, uh, Still looking for that Brazilian copy? Yes, I still want one. Um... I can't give it anything but any a low E though, because it's not that like I thought it would be more fun to play. Mm, no, it's really not. <laughs> um, it's just interesting for the novelty. Like he doesn't control terribly, but it's just the camera's behind you all the time, and the level design really doesn't suit Sonic's mechanics. And really, all you can do is like run and jump, and it's like I like I like Knights well enough, but. Sonic Knights didn't really work that well because it's like you're trying to combine the level design of Knights with the control of a 3D character. And it doesn't really... It's not that fun. That's the thing, unfortunately. Since I love 3D Blast and you, you and everyone should check out Sonic 3D in 2D fan game. And yes, there's a version with Saturn music. Oh, nice. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate that. <clears throat> so Sonic had a rough first transition into 3D. Yes. <laughs> he sure did. I need a drink. I apologize. I need drank. Read my girl Tiara Bubowski. No, Sonic Extreme is not a thing. <sighs> Excuse me. Okay. Next up, we have Sonic Jam. So Sonic Jam is the one that people attribute to being the first uh, Sonic thing in 3D. It's the first proprietary time that Sonic has been controllable in 3D. Um, it has ports of Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles in it, which fix certain things, but all like it, it's like, what if the original Sonic games were on Saturn? I don't really like those ports that much, really. Like, they're not good. <laughs> I think they're kind of ass, if I'm being honest. Um, like, they, they run well, from what I understand, but, like, sometimes the sound effects cut out and, like, the music is... It's, like, CD quality, but it makes it sound worse, I think. So it's just, like, the the one thing that's worth checking out in Sonic Jam is the Sonic World portion of it, with the part where you play in 3D and, like, you have the mechanics and Tails is in it. Um, and you can see, like, a bunch of other... It was the first of, like, the Sonic compilations as we know them. Because uh, there were other compilations beforehand. There was, like, the Sonic 2 and 1, where you could... Or Sonic 3 and 1, I mean, where you could play, um, 1, 2, and Mean Bean Machine on it. But uh, that's kind of different, because it was just, like, the menu, and you just select which game you want to play. This is, like, a proper, like, here's all these Sonic games, and, like, concept art, and, like, commercials, and, like... So, it's... It's a weird one. It's a weird one to talk about as a game because it's not like a full-fledged game, but it as a compilation, it's really cool, right? Um, I would argue it's cooler than Mega Collection. I feel like Mega Collection is more robust. I love Mega Collection, but I don't categorize it as its own game because that one is just a proper compilation with some behind-the-scenes stuff. This jam at least, like, adds new things. Um, 
what system is not my jam for? It was for the Saturn. Um, so like it has new things in it and th these new things aren't enough to make it fantastic or anything, but it's one of those things that's like really cool to, to like experience, I guess. Um, but yeah, Sonic Jam is fine. I like what it includes. I hate its music. And weirdly enough, it's music that would go on to be featured in so many other Sonic compilations. <laughs> I just... Dude. Oh, shit! You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. I'm sorry. You are correct, sir. You are correct, sir and or madam. Uh, yeah. It does have an easy mode for the for the Sonic games, that's true. Uh, that changed things around, like, how many rings you get and how many enemies are on screen. But it's just like, I don't know, dude. Just play the originals, I guess. Um... Uh, Sonic R. This is the story of a girl. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, this is another one that's like... This is the second Traveler's Tale Sonic game. And there are two versions of it. There's the Saturn version and there's the PC version. I only played the PC version, I think, for the marathon. I've since played both. And let me tell you, they are different. <laughs> they are different games. The Saturn version? Pretty ass. <laughs> Saturn version is pretty ass. Um, but I will still put it in high D, whereas I will put the PC version in, like... <laughs> Low C. Why not? Uh, it is... The, the PC version controls better. It has more control options. It looks better. No, actually, does it? No, the Saturn version is the one that looks better. But the PC version is the one that controls better. <laughs> um, and it has, like, more options. It has, like, the environment systems. Like, it, it rains. It snows. Um, in, the, in the Saturn version, here's the, th here's the kicker. Here's one that is going into everything wrong with, and I fucking hate this about the, the Saturn version of this game. You know how speedrunners will, like, collect the tokens, the, the Chaos Emeralds, like, together, like, in one run? You can't do that in the Saturn version. You either collect all the tokens and unlock a character, or get all the Chaos Emeralds. You cannot do both. Because if you get all the tokens and the Chaos Emeralds, you do the race for the character to unlock, but it's because of that, it skips the Chaos Emerald check, so even if you get, even if you go out of your way to get the Chaos Emeralds, it will not check for them. So you need to do the race again. The PC version fixes that though. In the PC version, you can get tokens, you can get Chaos Emeralds all in one run. And so while the Saturn version looks nice compared to the compared to the PC version, that's what makes the PC version superior to me. Is that like you can do everything in one go. Um, and I think that so that uh, Sonic R is fun. I think it's fun. Given the right circumstances. There is a version of it. There is a mod that, that I installed on, on my recording of the PC version that implements the Sonic R <laughs> visuals. And it is beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah, it includes uh, Tails Doll. It includes um, Metal Knuckles. Uh, it has a kick-ass soundtrack, again, composed by Richard Jock. Um, it's, like, the first and only racing game where they've been on foot, which, you know, I kind of wish they would do again. Um, you can play a Supersonic in it. It's the... F Weirdly enough, like, up until this point, technically the first time you could play as Amy was in Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World, but, like, Eggman has only been playable in racing games, if you've noticed. <laughs> If I had to put something like .exe on here, where it would go? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Amy's never been on foot. That's correct. <clears throat> Which version of R is on Gems Collection? The PC version, actually. 
Plus the draw distance sucks in the Saturn version. That's correct. Yes, the, the draw distance in the Saturn version is also... I completely forgot about that. There, There is really bad, um, like, fog, distance fog. So you can't really see what you're doing. Yeah, that, that's another thing, too, about the Saturn version. I completely forgot about that. Next, we have Sonic Jam for the Gamecom. The Tiger Electronics Gamecom. This is, without a doubt, the worst, the worst. I, 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 I when I played this game, because I've, play, I've played and beaten this game, I have played and beaten beaten this game and I was struggling to figure out which Sonic game I thought was the worst game Sonic Jam for the Gamecom the Tiger Electronics Gamecom is the worst video game I think I have ever played it is so bad <laughs> So the Tiger Electronics Gamecom was a handheld system that was kind I mean it wasn't phone size it was like bigger than this. But if you ever if you're if you or your parents or whoever ever had like one of those early cell phones like Blackberries or like those those beepers those pagers whatever that was like in black and white and did the beep boops like a calculator did it was kind of like that. There are ports of Sonic 1... Uh, sorry, excuse me. There are ports of Sonic 2, 3, and Knuckles in the game. And I use the term port very loosely. Because... For some reason, you, there's no Sonic 1 in it. I don't know why. <sighs> David with the 2. Do I like Sonic? I sh sure do. Thank you. <laughs> you have three characters to, to, to choose in each game. There is zero, zero fucking reason <laughs> to play as anybody but Tails. I've seen, I've seen the, uh, the speed run of this game and they use Knuckles, I think, which is a really weird one. Or I think they use, I can't remember who they use. There is zero reason, casually, casually, to use Anybody but Tails. Because he is the only character who does anything other than fucking run. Knuckles can't glide. So there, he's virtually not different from Sonic at all. Tails can at the very least fly and is the best form of traversal. The screen crunch is terrible. The music... <sighs> oh. oh, it's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. Every single game has four levels. They're not even ported, right? Sonic 2 has Emerald Hill Zone. And it's four levels of Emerald Hill Zone with a boss at the end. And you don't know where the fuck you're going. There are bottomless pits in it. And you can lose your lives really easily. It's so bad. It's so bad. Just Emerald Hill. Just Emerald Hill. Sonic 3 has Angel Island Zone. Four levels of Angel Island Zone. And that one's probably the toughest one. Sonic 3 is probably the hardest game on Sonic Jam. The, Sonic 3 actually has a mid... Actually, I think they all have mid-bosses. Because um, I think Sonic 2 has the drill, the egg drill thing from Emerald Hill. Uh, and I think the final boss is the boss from... Chemical plant, but it's all it's still like in Emerald Hill. Shaden with the two. Do I like Sonic? I'm really I'm 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 you know what? Maybe. <laughs> Were the levels in a green color theme? So yes, they are in a they're it's just this puke green with off black or just brown and black, like a light brown and black, depending on which emulator you use. Um so yeah, Angel Island Zone has like the fire breath thing and then like the 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 thing that shoots fire at you at the end of Angel Island Zone Act 2. God. 
fucking music in this game is just ass. You can you can fly above the 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 flying battery zone thing. That's what I did to avoid it. And then so okay, and then Sonic and Knuckles has Mushroom Hill Zone. And god damn. It is ass. It is it is it is such booty. Oh my god, and there's a special stage in it? You can find like giant rings. And I think you can only find them in the Sonic 3 game. And the game plays it like fucking five frames a second. So it's slow as ass. And then the second you go into the, the, the special stage, it's Blue Sphere. And then in Blue Sphere, you are fast as fuck. You are so fast. I don't think there has been a single human being on this planet. And I've looked this up. There's not a single person on Earth. God. God themselves could not beat this shit. I've never seen a person beat a special stage in Sonic Jam. I'm sure it's happened. I'm sure somebody hates themselves enough to do it. I saw someone who did a challenge that was like, can you beat um, Sonic Jam without beating a bad Nick, they did it as Sonic. Bless that guy's soul. I don't know how the fuck. I don't know how he did it. Good for him. I wish him all the, the, the riches in the world. I wish that he finds his true love and that they, 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 they. I wish him a fairy tale ending for this person. Even if you beat it, you wouldn't be surprised if Sonic Jam on GameCom skipped the Chaos Emerald check. God, you're so right. You're so right. Thank you for the five. What the f- what, what is the point? Do, do you even get Chaos Emeralds at the end? Is it just there to- I don't know, dude. It's the worst. It's the worst one. <laughs> uh, Sonic Adventure. <laughs> so- <laughs> Sonic Adventure 1. Okay. This is a tough one. This is a really tough one. I'm going to put it in A. And maybe that'll change. Maybe th th that might change uh, over the... Because it, it's either A or S. Growing up, and I, I think I said this story during the marathon. When I was a kid, I, uh, I had, let me, let me collect my thoughts. My cousin lived in an apartment and she had a Dreamcast and I, I was over one time and she had me play the game. I'd never really played a 3D game before. And this is like, I don't know why this stands out in my mind. I don't remember anything else about that day other than I was at her apartment and I played a little bit of Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast. Um, and I had no opinion of it at the time because I was just like, oh, I was just exploring the... I, in my mind, I still I was so used to like get to point A to point B games that I didn't understand how adventure worked because I was in like the hub... I was in the Mystic Ruins hub world, I remember. And like I was looking for what to do and I couldn't figure out what the fuck I was supposed to do. Yes, the highs are high, but there's a lot of lame fluff. Agreed. And so like I sort of forgot about the game entirely. Fast forward to, I would think I was like in first grade or something. Uh, I had a friend who had a GameCube. He had, a, he had Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. And I thought it was the coolest shit in the world. I was like, whoa! Sonic in 3D and this is so fun. This is so cool. Um, asked my parents for the game. We went to GameStop. We saw Sonic Adventure DX and I was like, I think this is the one. I think this is the game. Got it. Got home. This isn't the game. <laughs> this isn't the game that I played. Uh, I still, I, I, everyone says that DX is, is a shitty port and I understand why I still enjoy it as a port, but I mean, regardless, adventure, adventure one, uh, dreamcast or DX to me, it's still virtually the same game, but, um, I didn't really like this game that much as a kid. Uh, I, I liked it enough. I remember, uh, I was like everyone else. I didn't know how the fuck to do the big, the cat stuff. Um, 
I enjoyed I like I, I enjoyed it enough as a kid, but Adventure 2 always beat it out for me. Nowadays, my opinions have changed a little bit. To me, they're sort of on equal ground though. And there's a there's a number of reasons for it. It's it's the first like full transition to 3D. It's not perfect. It's janky. The cutscenes are not great. I love the music. I love the control. I love that you have these six characters. Like, you could argue that it's too many characters for something that's very new to the series, but I love the variety of it. You know, like, I love the high-speed action, the races, the treasure hunting, the escape, you know, the... As much as it sucks and as much as easy as it is, I appreciate the 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 fishing. I appreciate this, like, time attack mode with Gamma where you're, you're supposed to, like, go through... And this is the first time that, like, they've expanded upon a story... That, that follows up from Sonic 3. You know, you have the story of chaos, the, the god of destruction, and, like, the chaos emeralds are very story relevant now, and it's, like... It, there's so much about it, and, like, there's so much variety in terms of, like, the levels, in terms of the music for the levels. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more with Adventure 2, but, like, it's just a really, really damn good game. Like, it... I, I, I get it. It's not perfect. It has jank for sure. But as far as a fun experience game, as far as a fun experience goes, it's a pretty solid game. Um, you just have to do what the game expects you to do, I guess. <laughs> Talk about stages, music, and campaigns. Oh, dude. Um, I mean, obviously, Sonic is like the best one in terms of campaigns because he's got like the most stages. He goes to the most places. His is the most robust thing. Makes sense because he's the main character, right? Um, some of those levels are iconic. Emerald Coast is pretty iconic. Uh, Casinopolis is pretty iconic as well, I, I like to think. Uh, you have returning stages from Sonic 3. You have Ice Cap Zone. Um, like, the, it's the first time that you feel like Sonic is, is in a bigger world than his own, and, like, it's the first time that you really see him integrate into, like, the human world, and it... <laughs> It was sort of this transition from like classic Sonic to to a more modern style, not just in terms of its design, but in terms of like, or sorry, not just in terms of their visual design, but in terms of like their gameplay styles as well. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I think it did a really good job trying to establish a new identity for Sonic the Hedgehog, but that also is to its downfall. Ooh, ooh, what do I mean by that? <laughs> It, yeah, it, yeah, returning name. It doesn't. You're right. You're right. It's just an ice stage. But you, you are correct, sir. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure. Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure. Easiest A in the world, dude. Easiest A in my life. Pocket Adventure is so. Okay, there, there's a, there's a number of reasons why, like. There, I think it was either Garola... I can't remember this <laughs> creator's name. Um, there was someone. Garolas? Garolas 64? I, I don't remember how to... I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I, I haven't watched this video, but it did say something like that he didn't understand why people liked Pocket Adventure so much, right? For me, it's not just because it's got... Sonic 2 levels, which is one of my favorite games. It's that a, a team separate, a team different than Sonic Team handled it. It's the modernization of classic Sonic games. It's the fact that they made it run on, it's a 16 bit system, but like it looks like an 8 bit game that is like the apex of what 8 bit games look and feel like. The the eight bit remixes are really good. It controls really well. The special stages, despite the fact that they're the special stages from Sonic Two, are a lot more bearable, except for the last one. <laughs> um, it is like the per to me, it's like the perfect bridge between the classic Sonic games and what Sonic Advance would then become. It is it is pre Dimps. Um, and in fact, a lot of people think that like, oh, Dim it's because like this team went on to become Dimps. It's like that's not entirely true. Um, people who worked at SNK would go on, some of them would go on to form DIMPs, but not all of them. Um, and so there's, there's this like, from SNK, there's this deep understanding of what made Sonic fun. And like, it's a square. The resolution is like one by one square. 
but that's like more they they somehow make it so that like that there's no screen crunch it doesn't feel like it's screen crunch so it's like it's it's incredible that like despite all these limitations and despite like its circumstance they were able to make a portable sonic game that was better than anything Sega had put out. You know what I mean? Um, the Neo Geo Pocket is is a weirdly great system that I feel like not enough people talk about. I wish I had one. I wish I, I actually own this. I don't own the box for it, but I do own this game. And it's it's a prized thing because it's I enjoyed it a lot. Like, I remember I played it for the first time, actually on stream, not for the marathon. I did a, like, obscure Sonic games thing played it and I was blown away by it. I was like, whoa, I did not expect this to be fun. I did not expect this to be good. Um, the music it remixes from Sonic 3 is amazing. Like it's not just uh, like action stage music. It's like multiplayer music from Sonic 3. Um, it's, uh, dude, high praise, high praise for me to to Pocket Adventure. It's not perfect by any means. Like it, to say it's a 10 out of 10 IGN game, I feel like it's a little much. I still think that the, the previous 16-bit games are better. But for what it is, developed by another studio entirely, and modernizing Sonic... Dude, it's 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 Sonic 2, but but on the go. And it's it's great. It is a... It is more than a solid game. It, it is more than a solid game. It is a great game, in my opinion. IMO. Yo, what's up, King Raiko? <clears throat> Welcome. Okay, so go, moving on from that to Shuffle. <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> I'm going to... Okay. I'm going to give this game credit. I'm going to give it a low D. Simply because... I have not played it with actual people. So I don't know how much f more fun this game is with actual human beings. This is not a great Mario Party clone. Uh, I, I feel like it would be bearable if you played it with friends. But playing it by itself, I think it's interesting that it has a campaign mode. It was made by the same people who made um, Mario Party. It was made by Hudson Soft. Uh, I don't know why they decided to make the game that they did. It's not a very fun game. Um single player. I think the campaign mode is interesting. I like the story they were going for in campaign mode. Um, there's a lot about campaign mode I don't like. Like, for example, the fact that all the fucking voices sound like this! Ah! <laughs> um, like, they blow out the mic constantly during the cutscenes. Uh, you don't play a minigame after every round like you do in Mario Party. You have to, like, land on specific minigame tiles, which makes the rounds last way longer than they should. It's it's one of those games that I appreciate what it is in terms of concept. You know, I think that... I don't really remember the music either. Mechanically, mechanically, it could have been a lot more interesting than it was, right? I think that if they tried the concept again... I don't mind the card concept, weirdly enough. I, I think the card concept is cool. I just think that... They made the rounds go on for way longer than they should have. And I think that that's just a, an inherent design flaw. Like, if they designed the game better, and obviously, I've said this many times before, right? If you just designed the game better, it would be a better game. Which, no shit. But at the same time, I feel like it's a, it's a system that could be improved upon. I don't think that the entire system needs to be discarded in order to create something new. I think that you could take bits and pieces of Shuffles' as mechanics standardize them or, or streamline them and you would have a way more fun party game. <clears throat> Better than Amiibo Festival? I don't know. I've never played Amiibo Festival. <laughs> so shuffle or secret rings party mode? Oh boy. That is a fantastic question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. How does it stack up to Crash Bash? Uh, Crash Bash is way more fun. But to be fair, I can't remember the last time I played A... The last time I played Crash Bash, I haven't played it since I was a kid. But B, I can't remember the last time I played Crash Bash with computer players. So uh, it, they might be super difficult or might, they might be piss easy. I don't know. I, I haven't played Crash. I love Crash Bash for the record, but. <laughs> uh, 
Secret Rings Party Mode has some nice mini games at least. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I I I honestly I think some of the better shuffle mini games are better than the best Secret Rings Party games if that makes sense. But I mean it, it, it really it's in the eyes of the beholder I suppose. Okay, so we have our first uh, Lost game, actually. So Sonic the Hedgehog is a Lost game. It is a mobile phone game released as part of the so Sonic Cafe service offered by Sega. Sonic Cafe was like this phone subscription service in Japan uh, that you could pay a little bit of money for. You get a free game every month or every, like, you get a few games every month, whatever. Uh, and as far as I understand it, it's like an endless runner. Let me check. Let me fact check that. In this game, the player plays a Sonic running through the available zone in the typical style, collecting rings, defeating badniks, and getting a score based on how quickly the act was cleared. So it's basically just like a standard Sonic game. Your point is to just get score. You know, um, I don't know if you can finish the game or not. Uh, we do not have this game. It is it is lost. So I cannot say yes. The lost tier means games that I can't really rank because they don't exist. I'm still going to try to maybe like, oh, this sounds more interesting. <laughs> Shit like that. But um, yeah, like it's, it looks like your standard fair Sonic game. So it's actually a port of Sonic 1, unless you're thinking of another game. Uh, It might be. It looks like it might be, but it might just be its own thing too in terms of design. So yeah. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where are you? You are over here. I'm putting Adventure 2 and, and Battle in the much like DX and Adv Original. I'm putting them together. Uh, I don't think I've ever played Original Dreamcast Adventure 2. Ooh, this is a tough one. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Okay, so Adventure 2 is the one that I really loved growing up. This was my jam. I love this fucking game. I've never 100%ed it, actually. Weirdly enough, despite how much I've loved Adventure 2, uh, I've never 100%ed it. It's just always been way too difficult. <laughs> um, but in terms of mechanics, I think it's very fun. But the thing is, the reason why it's difficult for me to put it above Adventure... The original Adventure is because you... You still have six characters to play as, but it's cut in half in terms of how many gameplay cells there are. You have treasure hunting, you have the mech stages, you have uh, the speed stages. Many people don't like the latter half of the treasure hunting stages. Most people don't like the mech stages at all. Most people really love the uh, speed stages, and I would agree. I would think that the speed stages are more iconic than the ones in the original adventure. You have better Chow Garden. Um, you have... Okay, actually, now that I'm talking... See, this is this is what I like talking about it. Um, the, Takashi Zuka prefers 2 to 1. I know. he he. Uh, this was the first game I think he was director of, I believe. Um, the, the reason I put it above Adventure, now that I'm thinking about it, is because there's a lot of quality of life things that it does over the, the original Adventure game that I think make it eke out, right? The level select the uh, challenges that you have to do per level are better, in my opinion, and more challenging than the first adventure. Now, challenge doesn't always mean better, but I like the way it's structured more than the original adventure is. Um, it's got less fluff than Adventure 1 does in terms of its story. Um, because, like, you could say, what the hell was... Why do we need to play as Gamma? Why do we need to play as Amy? Why do we need to play as Big? In Adventure 2, at the very least, everyone has a reason for being there. And originally, they weren't supposed to... Uh, and this is pretty common knowledge, but like it, originally they weren't supposed to all be playable. You were only supposed to play as Sonic, Knuckles, and Eggman. It was kind of a triple trouble situation. Um, Tails wasn't supposed to be playable. Rouge wasn't supposed to be playable. Terios wasn't supposed to be playable. Um, but then they figured, oh, we'll just like copy paste. And if, if you notice, those are like three gameplay styles. You have Sonic as speed, Knuckles as treasure hunting, and Eggman as mech. So they figured, okay, well, people are really going to want to play as Tails. Let's just duplicate like... Uh, these gameplay styles for these characters, which, which is why, like, their roles in the story feel kind of rushed. Their uh, levels feel not great. Um, 
I move it to S tier. No, it's okay, Screaming Sonic. I appreciate it though. Um, because it's not perfect. It's still it's in a lot of ways, I I think Adventure One is almost superior. I I I think that what it does uh to further the Sonic lore, I think Adventure One is better. Adventure Two, and I want to make a video about this at some point in my life. I don't know when I'm gonna do it. Adventure Two was the beginning of the end. And I know that that sounds weird as fuck. <laughs> but I think a lot of the complaints that people have nowadays with Sonic and with a lot of what we, we've been seeing recently is because of Adventure 2. I blame Adventure 2 for the state of Sonic for the, a, the longest time because they realized, oh shit, people really like darker stories. And so... They tried to make darker stories. Sometimes it worked. Later on, they were like, well, darker stories don't work, so we don't want to do this anymore. They dropped that. People complained anyway. <laughs> it it did further the Sonic lore in and of itself. It created, like, this whole other branch of Sonic lore, uh, but especially with Shadow, right? Like, Shadow is, is a point of contention that people love Shadow, but they hate his characterization. It's like, yeah, because he was meant to die. <laughs> he, was, he was meant to, like, not be a thing anymore. So it's like, you can only have this character be the same way and have the same motivation so many times to the point where, like, how do you innovate it, right? Which game do I prefer gameplay-wise? It's tough. It's tough to say because I think that there are certain levels in Adventure 1 that I like more than the Adventure 2 levels. For example, I like the the uh, treasure hunting mechanics in Adventure 1 more because you can find whichever ones. You don't need to find them in order. Technically, you don't need to find them in order in Adventure 2 either, but your... Uh, Radar only does it one by one. <clears throat> um, the levels not never got so humongous like they do at the end of the treasure hunting stages in Adventure 2. Um, I think that the shooting mechanics for Gamma are, fun, are more fun than the ones in Adventure 2 for Eggman and Tails. Um, I think that the power-ups in Adventure 2 are better. Uh, I think that Adventure 1 has more varied music. Like, there's there's... You know, give and take, give and take. Um, I th both of them have janky as all get out cutscenes. I think that they're better in Adventure Two slightly. They're not great. The animation work is like better in Adventure One for some reason. Raiko, thank you so much for the five months. When your folks and I went to your sister's place this Christmas before we, you put on the holiday tunes, you turned on the Adventure Two vinyl for City Escape. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. But well, that's true, though. You do have you do have City Escape in Adventure Two. That's true, and you have Live and Learn. Um. <laughs> Five minutes will be plenty. Here I go. Yeah, <laughs> Adventure felt more like freedom than Adventure Two, which is why I prefer Adventure. And that's another thing too, is that like it's it's very subjective. Like I I completely understand why Adventure might be better for some people. I understand why Adventure Two might be better for some people. I remember. The, the reason that really got me thinking, I, it was like a Some Call Me Johnny video. It was one of his reviews from back in the day. He was talking about like why he thought Adventure 1 was a better game. And I was like, I didn't want to believe him because I loved Adventure 2 for the longest time. I didn't want to agree with him. But at the same time, I was just like, shit, he's right. Like there's so much about Adventure 1 that is better than Adventure 2. And it's like, it's tough. I I would still rather play through Adventure 2 again but that's me. And I that that's me under the assumption and, and, and understanding that there are things about Adventure 1 that I think it does better than Adventure 2. You make content with the five. Thank you so much. You got into Adventure 2 in 2016. Jesus Christ. You couldn't understand why everyone loved it. Then again, your favorite is Unleashed. Okay. And here's the thing about that too. I'm glad you said something. Here's the thing about that. If Adventure 2 came out today, if it came out today in its current state, everyone loves Adventure 2, right? If a game like Adventure 2, in the state that it's in, came out today, people would hate it. People would fucking despise this game. Because the why, why is it so edgy? This is so ridiculous. People would laugh at it. People would make fun of it. It's very much a product of its time. I think it's a fun game. I think that its gameplay style has stood the test of time. But in terms of how goofy it is, it is supremely goofy. Hate it more than 06? That is irrelevant. Comparing it to 06 is irrelevant. I'm saying on its own, would people like this game? 
I think no. I think people would hate this game if it came out today. But I enjoy it. <laughs> that it apply to any of these games though. I mean, yeah, that's true. But at the same time, like, I think that there are games that have come out more recently that do it better given their time frame than Adventure 2 would in the same time frame, if that makes sense. Like, if you compare these, let's say, I don't know, this is just hyperbole, but like, if you compare Adventure 2 to Generations, right, in the context of when they came out, like, if you if you had Adventure 2 in 2011, which game do you think is better? I guess it's kind of what I'm trying to say. If they came out today, which would you think is better? It's it's like that kind of thing. It's it's tough. Um, frankly, if 06 came out around the same time as Adventure 1 or 2, would it be more liked? Possibly, but at the same time... We'll, we'll get into the problems with 06. We'll get into 06 in a bit. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll still put it over Adventure 1. <clears throat> Sonic Golf. For Sonic Cafe. Uh... <sighs> Or, or that's the 3D version of golf. Sonic Golf. I mean, honest to God, most of these are probably going to go in E. Um, honestly, I'll put this above... I'll put it here. <laughs> Sonic Golf was a game that came out for the Sonic, the Sega Cafe mobile system. It's all right. It's just, it's Sonic, but you play golf on your phone. Um, the music is okay. The sprite work is pretty impressive for what it is, honestly, but there's not much to it. It's just 2D. It's just 2D golf. That's it. <laughs> um, not much to say about it. Sonic Advance. Okay. So the what a lot of people consider to be the proper Sonic 4. Where is Sonic Advance? Sonic, there you are. Sonic Advance. Um honestly, I'd put it in A tier. I think it's a very a, a very fun game. What I like about it the most, I think. I don't know what the fuck is published by THQ. Why couldn't Sega just publish it? Um, I, what I like about it a lot is that it goes back to the root of classic Sonic in terms of having all these characters playable. It make it's like the first time that Amy is sort of playable in this 2D style, uh, on foot. And they all have their own things that make them unique. You know what I mean? Um... <laughs> Advanced through probably in CO2. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, I like that it's simple. I like that, you know, Sonic runs. He has the Insta Shield from three. And he's fast. Tails can fly. Knuckles can glide. Amy is slow, but she has a hammer. You know, like, I like that they're all similar enough to where you could beat the game with anybody, but they're different enough to have their own identities which is like it's so in the spirit of classic sonic and it, it, it's like the first proper dims game as far as i understand it and they did a great job they really understood what made sonic sonic uh and it didn't have as many dimps moments as like future dimps games have replay value i would say that it has replay value because you can play i mean you can play the same game as all four characters and each time it just feels different because of how the characters control. You know what I mean? Like, they, it's very fun. It's 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 simple, but it's fun. It's good, but the special stages, what are the specials? Oh yeah, the special stages in this one suck. They suck. But the rest of the game is good. <laughs> I still like the rest of the game. Yo, what's up, Scofidios? Thank you so much. This is just like my hair finally adjusting to being flat because it's been shaggy for the longest time now um but yeah i like Adva advanced one <clears throat> speed i am speed <laughs> i don't know what the fuck Sp speed is uh, i believe a card game uh it's lost i don't i have no opinion of it but um it is a 
again, Sonic Cafe thing. I keep calling it Sega Cafe, but it's Sonic Cafe. It plays like the traditional traditional card game Speed, which I don't know how to play, so I don't really know. Um, it's just Speed, but with Sonic in it. That's that's it. <laughs> that's that's basically all you do. You can play a Sonic, and like you play against Amy Knuckles and Tails, so that's pretty cool. That's about it, though. <laughs> That's that's all I got for you. Um Sonic Fishing. This game is ass. This is this game is really bad. <laughs> um yeah, that's a good place for it. It's a trash. <laughs> um it's another Sonic Cafe game. You play as Sonic Fishing. Or no, sorry, you play as Big in this one. Uh so you have different lures. As far as I know, they don't really do anything different. You are given such a short amount of time. Um, but I actually figured out kind of how to play it. I actually, like, I caught things in it. It was not satisfying. It, it is, it is boring. <laughs> it is not a good game. It's bad. <laughs> but you can play it if you would like. It is available to play. Sonic Billiards. I believe this is one of the Lost Games that I didn't play this. Sonic Billiards. Um, I like Billiards. I probably... I don't even know how to play Speed. It's Sonic, but you play Billiards against your friends. Cool. I don't know if we have footage of it. I think we do have footage of it. Yeah, we have footage of it. So, maybe one day it might be recoverable. We don't know. We shall see. Um, good friend Chow. Okay, this is a crime. This is fucking regrettable. This is this is this makes me sad. This is this is just Sag, Sag boy hours. So good luck Chow, also known as hold on. That's that's that is its English name. Uh, Nakayoshi Chow was another Sonic Cafe game. It is, um, I believe, one of the only, if not the only, and the first, if, if not the only, then the first 3D game on Sonic Cafe. And it was a chow game. It was a game that was just... Fuck this. It was a chow simulator. It was a Tamagotchi thing. And I do not understand how how and why Sega has never done this again. There is a market for these things. There's a market for these things. <laughs> and you have not made a, a chow raising simulator. This was the one time they did it and it is lost. We can't play this game. It would be a cash cow, yes. Dude, make a make a make a chow gotcha game for all I give a shit. <laughs> and we can't play Nakayoshi Chow. We cannot play Good Friend Chow. It's sad. But I bet it was great. I bet people loved it when it came out. <laughs> uh Sonic Bowling. Sonic Bowling. I like bowling. I probably like bowling more than I like billiards. Sure. This is another lost game. Um it is bowling but with Sonic in it. Ain't that a hoot. Uh, there was another... See, this one is kind of weird. I don't know why this one's lost, because there was an updated version of this game in 2009, and for some reason, we don't have a backup of that version. Like, the, things were being archived way more when the updated version came out, but uh, you could play as Sonic, Shadow, Knuckles, and Tails. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we have screenshots of it. It looks interesting, but I don't. I have no idea why we don't have... This game backed up. That's strange. Very strange. Uh, Sonic Racing Kart. This was another mobile... Were you, this is the era where, like, they did a lot of shit, like, with mobile games and, like, McDonald's stuff. So I do apologize. This is, like, the low point of this tier list. I I, I do apologize. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Sonic Kart Racer. Um... This honestly was really not that... I mean, I'll give it credit. It was better than Sonic Fishing, but it wasn't really that fun. Um, you know, people bitch about Drift, but nah, <laughs> it could be worse. Um, this was actually, uh, weirdly enough, this was released by Tech Toy in Brazil years later, which is, I think, why we have 
a backup of this because we have the tech toy version of this game. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just it's it's a whole lot of nothing. Um, it was another Sonic Cafe game. Pretty bad because <laughs> it's it's not even like from the from behind, <laughs> like a uh, uh, from behind view. It's like a top down. It's almost like Micro Machines, and it's just yeah. <laughs> It's just, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's Sonic Racing Kart. Uh, next up, we have three more Lost games. Sonic's Minesweeper, also known as Sonic no Jirai Sagashi, ga uh, Sagashi Game. Um, Where is Sonic the he Is it you? Is it me? Is it everything? What is the title screen of this? <laughs> Do I even have it? Yes, I do. Uh, I should. Here it is. Um, Minesweeper's all right, I guess. <laughs> it's Sonic, but it's Minesweeper. It's... It's... You couldn't... If Eggman wasn't in the corner of the screen, you wouldn't be able to tell this was Minesweeper. It's... It's okay. <laughs> it's just Minesweeper. So, Sonic Racing Shift Up, I believe, is a sequel to the racing game, but this is also Lost. Uh, it's viewed from a third-person perspective, which creates an odd environment as the interior of the car is featured as the frame of the gameplay. Interesting. In this game, the player who is always Sonic the Hedgehog has to shift gears in a cart quickly as possible to beat Shadow, all while getting the timing just right. No left or right steering is featured in the game. Ghost data can be uploaded and de-downloaded to a remote server... So it is possible to play against people from all over Japan. What the fuck? This is kind of advanced. <laughs> oh, this looks like it could be fun, actually. Weird. Okay. Interesting. Uh, you know what? I'll give, I'll give you credit. You look like it could be fun. I'll put you above bowling, and I like bowling. So count your blessings, Sonic Shift Up. Sonic Racing Shift Up, I mean. A uh, Sonic action game. So... If you guys remember, back in the year of our Lord, 2003, 2000 and Trace, uh, there was a cross-promotion for Sonic Heroes, which was an upcoming game at the time, and McDonald's. And so there were a lot of these LCD games, which you'll see over here, and the first one was called Sonic Action Game. These are all ass. These are All the LCD games are ass. They are, they are boring. They are not that fun. <laughs> I'm going to put them above... Wacky Worlds, above fishing, yes, that seems like a good place to put it. You press a button. You press one button, and it's... <laughs> and that is it. After that, we have Tails' Sky Patrol, not to be confused with Tails' Sky Patrol. Actually, are they both Tails' Sky Patrol? Oh, you know, sorry, yes. They are both Tales of Sky Patrol, but this one has is Sky Patrol two words. So Tales of Sky Patrol is not Sonic. So you automatically you, you know what? It does have two buttons though. I will say it has two buttons. Probably better than than Sonic Action Game. Ba da ba ba ba. What a piece of shit. <clears throat> uh then we have Knuckles, so sad. Okay, I'm going to put this one as, like, the best one. Uh, just because I have an emotional connection to it. Because my friend Amy from the UK visited one year, and she bought this for me at a convention, and I still have it. I don't have it here with me. It's back home in Mexico. But this is, like, the only McDonald's Sonic game that I own. And it's okay. It's all right. I'll... That makes it superior, I guess. <laughs> um... Now we have Shadow Grinder, and Shadow has been confirmed to be Pan, so it's automatically better than Tails. It's okay. You press one, but actually, no. You know what? Because Tails has two buttons, and this one only has one, because you only jump on a rail. But it's Shadow, and he's cooler than Sonic, so he'll be above Sonic. <laughs> wow. Shadow is Pan? Yeah, dude. He was like... Someone on Twitter asked, like, hey, what does it take for you to... 
I would you marry me? And he's just like, yeah. Anyone who's my suitable partner must meet me at the fucking Ferris wheel. They must do my laundry. Give me the food like they did on the Ark. But I don't give a shit about gender. <laughs> you could be whoever. They, they, they need to be good in bed. Make good foob. And also, make my bed the way I like it. <laughs> Real Shadow Fan Zero One. I will marry you. <laughs> okay. Uh, next we have Sonic Speedway. This is a racing game that was another LCD game. Honestly, not bad. Um, I'd probably put it over the Tails Sky Patrol game. It's fine, I guess. It's a. Ra it reminds me a lot of the uh, racing from Adventure 2. Not mechanically, but just because like the background is like San Francisco zone. Have I seen that Portuguese Heroes commercial? I have not, no. <laughs> That, that takeover was so good. It was. It was pretty funny. I'm a little salty that they didn't answer my question, though. Just a little bit. Just a little salty. Um. Uh, next we have Sonic Putter, which... It's... That's a lost game. Um. Wait. Do I even have a photo of this? Sonic Poot. Oh, I do. Okay. Um... This is lost, but I like golf. Um, I like golf more than I like Minesweeper, so I'll put it there. It's a version of Crazy Golf, where pl player, con the player controls Sonic... Jesus. <clears throat> where the player controls Sonic and views the map, points the direction they want to go to, and then correctly times the power of the shot. It sounds a lot like just normal Sonic... Sp oh, never mind. Never mind. This is like from a top-down perspective. Oh, that's weird. Cool, interesting. All right. It's so interesting how we have some of these assets because of like the Wayback Machine, but we don't have these games. It's it's so sad. What was my question? Did I say I had a question? What? <laughs> Did I say I had a question? My bad. Emmy, thank you so much for the one month membership. Thank you so much. You can't be here for the rest of the stream, so you'll just say happy early new year. Thank you so much. Happy early new year to you too, Emmy. Thank you for being here for everything. Every single stream. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, what was my question? Uh, what happened to Big after the, the they got back from the Starfall Islands? And they never answered. I felt sad. I was like, wow. This is what I play all your games for. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, advance to time to piss even more people off. Advance two is the most dimps game. <laughs> Ex Exon Exonity. Thank you for the new membership. I appreciate that. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Exonity. Is my voice okay? I sound kind of dry. It is kind of dry, and I don't know why. I have a drink. Uh, <clears throat> um, it is the most dimps game because, uh, it's requirements. Obviously, like this, this doesn't matter, right? Because you can choose to not 100% this game, and that's completely fine. But as a Sonic game, Sonic is like the worst character to play as in this game. I really do not like Advance 2. I know a lot of people do. It is a very uh, exploration-based game when going for the Chaos Emeralds. When playing casually, there are so many bottomless pits, you go way too fast to know what's going to be ahead of you. Like, I think that people who like this game are... And and I could be completely wrong about this. I don't I don't mean to say this as an absolute fact. But in, in my theory is that people who really enjoy Advance 2 are people who grew up playing this game played the hell out of it, know the levels really, really well. And I say this because, I, I mean, I grew up with Advance 1, I grew up with Advance 3, but I don't remember those games. So when I played it for the marathon, I didn't remember the, le the level layouts, and I could play the games just fine. You know, I, I could play the games, and I wouldn't die as frequently, I wouldn't run into many traps, you know, even not knowing the level layout. In Advance 2, I felt like I was running into things every, like, 10 seconds. Um, it was either spikes or a bottomless pit or an enemy that I would have no idea was coming up. 
it's not to me it's not an enjoyable game to play and that is compounded with the boss fights the boss fights are like some of the worst that i've played they're very annoying like because they're the constantly running bosses and some of them are fine some of them are designed pretty intelligently but like for the most part i just do not enjoy advanced 2 the only <laughs> made some great clips skill issue easy yeah there are people who were telling me that like i was just bad at the game it's like yeah that might be but the thing is there are other games that i've played that i'm playing for the very first time that i've never played before that i've never completed and i'm still able to play them just fine they're not annoying like advance 2 to me was like i kept running into shit all the time which for a game that you would think like encourages you to to be fast it's it's a high speed platformer is not fun. It's just straight up not fun. Um, and that goes double for trying to find the things that are required for 100%ing this game. And that's the thing, is that like of the advanced trilogy, this game has the best special stages. I like the special stages the best um, out of the three games. But what you need to do to get them is asinine because it requires exploration, which Sonic is not suited for. If you try to make a jump just to try to find one of the keys that you need and you fall into a bottomless pit as Sonic, there's really not a way to get back. Whereas like with any other character, Cream, Tails, Knuckles, there is a way to get back. There is a way that encourages exploration with those characters. But you need to do it as Sonic as well because you need to get all the Chaos Emeralds as Sonic in order to, to um, get to the final boss. And in order to unlock Amy, you need to get them as everybody. <laughs> and so, like, it's just... It's absurd, <laughs> you know? Sonic can be explorative if you designed it right, like CD and Frontiers. I would disagree with CD, though. I don't think... C CD is designed like an exploration game, but you are not... In my opinion, you are not really incentivized to explore. When I play CD... And maybe this is just a me thing, but, like, when I play CD, my main objective is to get to the end, Right? Because it's not objective-based. Like, you can play the game and get to the end, and that's all you need to do. You never need to explore. Same with Advance 2. You never need to explore. But my issues extend beyond the exploration of it. I think it, my, my issues... If you look at a map, if you look at a map of the levels, you will see way more bottomless pits with um, the level design of Advance 2 than in the other games. Um... They lock the Chow Garden. I, th they they have, like, other functionalities, too, which aren't great. You know, like, Advance 1 had the Chow Garden, which was okay. I remember having a fun enough time with it. I don't remember the Chow Garden in Advance 2, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Advance 2. I have no idea where I'm going to put it, though. It's not E-worthy. I'll be generous. I'll be kind. <clears throat> I will be nice to this game. <laughs> Sonic darts. We played this. It's darts. But with Sonic and Shadow in it. I was losing my goddamn mind. Uh, I was more fun than car racing, though. <laughs> and yeah, I'm I'm sure that like there are people who are biased against the game. That's fine too. I don't blame you. I I might have a bias against it because I didn't grow up with it. So it's like it's hard for me to like it. But I also I feel like I have good reasons to not like Advance Two. <sighs> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's my turn. Damn. Pinball party. Good lord, pinball party. So I will say. That I believe that Pinball Party, I, I truly believe that Pinball Party is better than Spinball. Purely because it's just Pinball, right? However, much like Spinball, it's like four or five levels, I can't remember. How, it's, it's not many levels. And if you play it well, you could beat it in like 10 minutes. But what they expect of you to do... <laughs> What they they expect you to do in this game is asinine. 
I've been having a rough year, Blake. You're putting yourself out there. How did I get through all the stress with streaming through YouTube? You just got to do it. You just have to power through, my guy. It's not always easy, but... Some days are better than others. And you got to take every day one step at a time. You'll be okay. You are still here. So that's that's what matters. Um, anyway, um... Pinball Party is, I think, maybe better than Spinball because it's not as ab it's not as objective based as those games are. It's not a platformer; it's purely pinball. But what it requires you to do, story wise, is so asinine because of the time limit. I really do not like Pinball Party, but I think it is a better game than. Uh... I'm holding on to the other side. <laughs> Sonic Reversi. <laughs> Where the fuck is Sonic Reversi? Are you Reversi? I can't remember. Some of these don't have like... Oh no, it does say Sonic Reversi. Hold on. That's Sonic Reversi Hyper. I'm not looking for Reversi Hyper. Here it is. Reversi is fun. I like Reversi. I've not played Reversi in a long ass time. Uh, it's probably more fun than racing, though. Uh, it's tough to explain what Reversi is for those of you that haven't played it. Um, <clears throat> uh, so like you put down like little, like checkers, and like if you you can like block somebody's check, like it's it's black and white, and you can like block somebody's checkers and then if you have another checker on the other side all of the other players checkers turn into your color checkers and so it's like about trying to make sure that you have the most checkers on the board by the end i guess <clears throat> what's the lost category the lost category is games that we have no way of playing because they are not accessible to anybody most of them are mobile games it's lost media uh you don't know how to play checkers, though? It's okay. You can learn. It's never too late to learn. Mike died? Oh, my bad. Is it good now? <laughs> I'm assuming so, because I can see it, like, just... Uh, but yeah, I I played Reversi a long time ago when I first, like, started going on the internet, and I played it online with people, and it was pretty fun. I Like, if you ever have a chance to play, like, online Reversi, uh, do it. It's pretty fun. They are, I mean, they are accessible in as far as, like, if you go online and just look up Reversi online, you'll be able to play it. But the, the version with Sonic in it, we cannot play. Uh, Tails is flying get. This one's weird as fuck. <laughs> this is another lost one. Uh, it uses the Sonic Battle sprites, even though Battle technically wasn't out yet. Uh, so it was, like, kind of a promotional game for Sonic Battle. Um, it's, it's a minigame featured in Sonic Battle, apparently exclusively for the game's multiplayer function. Oh, weird. Oh, I shouldn't have included it then. Because it was part of... Oh, weird. Oh, 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 oh. This minigame later inspired a Sonic Cafe mobile game release called Tales No Flying Get. So that's the, that's why it's on this list. So it's it's basically like a port of that minigame from Sonic Battle, but for phones. So I guess technically it's not lost, technically. But the, the Sonic Cafe, the standalone version is. And I've never played it, so the point is moot. Um... It is unlocked after clearing Tales' episode in story mode. Here, anyone from two to four players, each with their own Game Boy Advance system, can play together. Only one Sonic Battle Pack needed to serve as the host. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's centered around aerial platformer type gameplay. When beginning the game, the player, the playable characters will start out on a platform. Their objective from there is to fly upward and collect rings they encounter along the way. Uh, each time the player collects a ring, they will receive one point. However, the time the passages the players have to fly through are not straightforward due to different floating platforms and walls. And they okay, so you just need to get like a bunch of rings, avoid bombs. Whoever has the most rings at the end wins, as far as I am understanding it. That sounds pretty okay as far as multiplayer things go. Where is Tails No Flying get? <clears throat> no Here you are. That sounds all right. Probably not better than bowling, though. <laughs> uh, wow. 
we're back at it again. What a butt up up a bitch. There was a Sonic the Hedgehog Extreme Boring game for the LCD screens. I believe it's this one. I could be wrong though. I think it's this one. Uh, it's buttons. You have two buttons, which makes it better than Shadow Grind. <laughs> um, after that, we have Tails Soccer. And you know what? Tails isn't as cool as Knuckles, so he gets to be here. But soccer's cooler than racing, I think. I guess. Knuckles is baseball. This one's fine. This one's fine. <laughs> it's not cooler than soccer, though, I guess. But it is, uh, I mean... How many buttons does it have? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Before I make, before I pass judgment, how many buttons do you have? You have one button. Oh, that's not true, because it has, like, up and down buttons, which is cooler than, like, vertical buttons. So I'm going to... I mean, horizontal buttons. I'm going to put you there. Uh, Amy and Rouge Volleyball. We played this. This has three buttons. You can move left, right, and I like volleyball. I like volleyball more than I like baseball. So you know what? No! Actually... Yeah, because it has two pl it, it has two characters that you play against, so that's pretty cool. Cream Flower Catch, another LCD game. Cream Flower Catch. You catch flowers as cream. I think this is the right one. There are like two versions of this shit. Um, it's more engaging than Tails' version of soccer, I guess. Sure. Uh Bigs Fishing. Bing's chillin'. Um, this one didn't make sense. It's better than Sonic Fishing, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> first cream game. First standalone cream game. <laughs> I'm holding on to the other side. Shadow Hockey. I don't think... Did we play this one? Shadow Hockey. We did not play this one because it was not available on, on the McOrigins collection. Uh, yes, where is Shadow Hockey? Was Shadow Hockey and Shadow Baseball, Shadow Basketball the same thing? Hold on. It was not. Do I not have Bing Chillin? I don't think I have a photo of Bing Chillin. Oh, shit. Whatever. It's around somewhere there, too. It's fine. It's just buttons and hockey whatever sonic heroes i won't even hesitate a second left to alter fate try to strike but a bit too late got you hooked by my own bait sonic heroes is great i don't know what the fuck people who are saying eats here are about <laughs> um it's a game that I thought was fine as a kid. I liked it. I liked the cutscenes of it. Um, I didn't like playing it that much, though. Like, it was a game that I went back to occasionally. Uh, I still liked it a lot. Uh, I think that as I got older, I got an appreciation for it. I don't know why. <laughs> like, I, I like the game now more as an adult than I did as a kid. I think that it goes back... It, it sort of does a U-turn almost from... Like, it follows the Adventure 2 story with, you know, familiar characters. Shadow Rouge uh, introduces new characters such as Omega. Uh, brings back old characters such as Vector, Charmy, and Espio. Um, big even though he was technically an Adventure 2, uh, just as a cameo. Um, so it has, like, a, a great cast of characters, <clears throat> does what it can to make them all similar enough to play as with different level designs, um, different difficulties. The music is great. I What I love about it compared to the Adventure games, and the reason I say that it kind of does a U-turn is because it stops using, like, the serious storytelling formula that the adventure games did and opts for a more traditional like surreal like wow we're in a forest where there are big ass frogs and also we're on like a board a table where we're playing bingo in balls and like we're this is a level that is just grinding on rails it's just like it's so surreal and it's so cool compared to like it, for me uh because i love the adventure games but i love the surreality 
of Heroes, right? I love the concept of I really wish that we did get a sequel to Heroes because it's such a cool concept that I think could be further expanded upon. And I feel like they've always respected Heroes for what it was, but never really wanted to tackle it again, which is a shame. I love Heroes. I think Heroes is a Gucci-ass game. However, I don't think that it is better than some of the games. Oh, but do I think it's worse than Pocket Adventure in Advance? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I guess so. It's funny because I would rather play Heroes before these two games, but I guess I wouldn't say that it's a better game. Wow. <laughs> I'm learning so much about myself today. <laughs> No, I love Heroes. I think it, Heroes is probably going to be like my top B. It's like a, P, a B plus game. Like it's probably going to be like high B tier for me. Um, Heroes controls too poorly for me. I see. I used to think so too as a kid, and it's and it does. It has very slippery controls, but I guess I'm just used to it now. That like I don't mind it. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I love Heroes. It's not the best. Definitely not the worst. I enjoy playing it when I do. I love going back to it. Screaming Sonic with a two. Heroes have the best voice acting. I agree. Um, <laughs> it's my favorite voice cast. I don't know that it has the best voice acting. Um, it's my favorite cast, but it still had some weird acting now and then. You know what I mean? It, it, it... Sonic, we only have two, two minutes to save the world. Okay. <laughs> Sonic battle. Um, where, <laughs> where the fuck is Sonic battle, dude? Soniku no battle. Battle no Soniku. Where are you? Well, oh, here you are. Battle is high B. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Ah, uh, that's the thing is that like B, I feel is like it, it's it's full of games that I don't think are the best, but they're games that I enjoy. Um, Battle is very unique. It's a very different fighting game than Sonic the Fighters. It's very fun casually. It is a very repetitive campaign. I think that they had something going with the story they were trying to tell. I love its style. I love the sprite work in it. The music is great. I love the locations. There's a lot about the game that I love. It can be very repetitive and very difficult at times. Um, it's... I don't know. I really, I really, really enjoy Battle. But it's, it's one of those games I don't go back to that often. I loved it growing up. I thought it was the coolest shit in the world growing up. Um... Not like my favorite game or anything, but I loved it. And now, like, I play it, I'm just like, yeah, Sonic Battle! And then I, and, and then I play it for, like, a couple hours, and I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> just end, please, just end. <laughs> you know what I mean? Avatar Trika with the five, thank you so much. We're going to be here for 50 years, just looking at the amount of images I have on the street list, making you question how human am I? I don't know, dude. I'm just built different, I guess. <laughs> which do I value more gameplay or story it depends um, it depends on the gameplay it depends on the story uh, obviously both are important um, to me anyway uh, if your game is very story focused I value the story a lot if your game is just supposed to be a game for the sake of a game like for example to me there's a nominal difference between Sonic Mania and Sonic Adventure 2 uh, or, okay, no. L let me put it this way. There's a nominal difference between Sonic Chronicles and Sonic Mania. Mania is a game that, it has a story, sure, but it's it's one that is vastly unimportant to the game that you're playing. Gameplay is so much more of, of a point in, in Mania. Whereas Chronicles, yes, it is still an RPG, it is still a game, but a lot more thought has been put into the story, and so I'm going to be more critical of the story it's trying to tell because of what is what it's presenting. While its gameplay sucks, and that's what it turns me off with, 
its story is interesting enough for me to like it. And but they're different. You know, like you can't fairly compare the two. You know what I mean? The final emerald fight can rot in a ditch. Uh yeah, but if you spam him, it's not that bad. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so Advance Three. Um, I have a history with Advance Three. Advance Three was my first Advance game, so I'm a little biased. But at the same time, I love what it does mechanically. I think that its level design is slightly better than Advance Two's level design, not by much, but enough to the point where I didn't die as many times or run into as many things as I did with Advance Two. Um, there are clear advantages to using certain character combinations, but at the fact that you have, I feel like whatever, like, if we get another 2D Sonic game, I want a sequel to a game like Sonic Advance 3. One where, like, you have all these different characters, and you can mix and match them to have different abilities, because th the concept of it was so cool. It's messy, though. Like, the problem is you really need to balance out, like, who does what, because all these characters have such different abilities, and when you combine them, you're able to do so different things, but at the same time, because of that, there are clear advantages to one um, pair over another. Uh, like, I think we ended up using, what was it, the Knuckles-Tails pair by the end of it? Uh, Advanced Year was your first Sonic game. You still love it. It's I like it. I, it's a pretty good game. Yeah, it's it's very polarizing. It's either you love this game or you hate this game. And I thought that that was interesting because I, I kind of loved it growing up. Um, and I couldn't tell you which one I like more if Advanced 1 or 3. I think 1 might eke it out just for the sake of its simplicity. Whereas Advance 3, again, like, I to me there's an incentive for playing as all the characters in Advance 1. However, in Advance 3, you don't need to replay the game as every single character combination. It's tough. Um, and I also don't know if I... Mm, I'm going to put it under Heroes, just be, I thought that they I thought that it was on the same caliber as advanced for me but there's a there's a simplicity to advance that I like more right um and I would I would almost rather play advance 3 than pocket adventure but I don't know if I would prefer to play pocket adventure before or heroes before pocket adventure because I think pocket is just a better and again it, it kind of comes down to simplicity I think it's just a better packaged game it's weird it's 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 tough. <laughs> it's so tough because it's just like, man, where do I put you? <laughs> uh, Sonic hopping. Um, this, as far as mobile games go, Sonic hopping is okay. Uh, it's pfft. honestly, I'd probably put it here because it's like it's it's a. Like, if you're at the dentist and you're, like, trying to play a puzzle game that's, like, Sonic, pop this on and you'll be like, yay, I beat the level. Oh, time for my molars to get extracted or whatever. <laughs> uh, speed DX. This is a lost one, but it's another speed game. But you know what? It's the deluxe version. So it's better than the original speed. <laughs> Uh, Sonic Tennis. God, this one's hard. Sonic Tennis is really difficult. I don't think I've won a single game of Sonic Tennis. Uh, but I think I conceptually like it more than I like the kart game. <laughs> it's just tennis from... It's, it's a mobile version of tennis. Um, it's fine, I guess, but it's still not like... My, you wouldn't seek it out. You wouldn't be like, oh, I want to play Sonic Tennis. Unless you're me. <laughs> In which case, you're sad and pathetic. Sonic Hopping 2. You know what? They say that sequels are never better than the original. However, Sonic Hopping 2 is lost. So, uh, I mean, it's fine. I Honestly, I'd probably rather play it than Minesweeper. Why not? <laughs> um... Sonic Hearts. This is the card game Hearts. Uh, however, it is not Kingdom Hearts. They did not put Sonic with Disney characters, which makes this severely disappointing. However, I feel like I would have an easier time playing Hearts than I would Speed, because I don't even know what Speed is. So, 
I'll put it above speed. <laughs> Goodness, 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 goodness. Will I rank a Sonic X Pokemon collab to S tier if it exists? What the heck? Yeah, Eggman is a heartless, as we all know. Uh, Sonic panel puzzle. This is... Uh, we have footage of this. This is a... What is it? I think it's just a panel game, right? Like, obviously, from the name, but, like, I don't think... It, let me see. Uh, Sonic and Tails have been trapped within puzzles. Luckily, Eggman is here to help free them by completing said puzzles. What? You play as Eggman in this game? Oh, immediate S rank. I mean, S tier. In this game, the player plays as Dr. Eggman, who flies around on a pu tiled puzzle as a crosshair. The player must then use him to unscramble a total of nine puzzles. Okay. So it's a puzzle unscrambler. Interesting. This is lost, yeah? Yeah, okay. This sounds cool. Honestly, probably... Here. <laughs> is Eggman a heartless or nobody? Eggman, Eggman is a heartless and... Eggman Nega is nobody. <laughs> Sonic Gammon. Uh, Sonic, it's like backgammon, but Sonic, and I've never played backgammon. I don't even know what I'm looking for if I'm being perfectly 100% with you. Oh, it's this one. Oh, shit, I just had it and I missed it. I lost it. Oh, here you are. Uh, I don't know backgammon, but I know it more than speed. What car am I? I'm a Bugatan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sega Superstars. This is technically not a Sonic game, but it is the first in the line of games that became Sonic and All-Stars. Um, so it wasn't exclusively an iToy game, so that automatically deduces points because you needed the iToy peripheral. This was a bitch to set up for emulation. Uh, it was really fun as a kid. It's... I'm gonna focus on the Sonic portion specifically. It's cool. I like the Sonic portion of the Sega Superstars game. Um... But to be fair, the iToy kind of was very hit or miss with its detection. So it's not great. Um, I would, for for its innovation and for its, like, uh, uniqueness, I, I'm blanking on what word I'm trying to use right now. I'm going to put it in low D just because I think it's really cool. I honestly would rather play it than Puyo, though. <laughs> mm, I'd rather play it than Shuffle, though. <laughs> And you can unlock Shadow, and Shadow's cool. And he's not in Shuffle, so... Immediately makes it better. Avatar Triku, thank you for the five. Thank you so much. Have I ever played those really old Sonic phone games? You're talking about the ones on the Nokia. Um, I don't think I have, because they're lost. I don't think that there's a way for me to play them. Um, I know that there was a Nokia version of... I'm pretty sure there was. It might be this one. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but like it's this one right here. I believe... This was one of the Nokia Sonic games that you could play. Is the iToy better or worse than the Kinect? So, uh, technologically, it's worse because it relies on light rather than, like, heat. Um, so the detection and the iToy is worse, but they're comparable. Like, in terms of functionality, they're comparable. It's just that it's inferior technology. Um... If anything, like, the iToy was, like, a little ahead of its time. And, like, the Kinect is just a better iToy. <laughs> oh, my God. More fucking LCD games. Um, Sonic. Oops. I already put Skateboard on there. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, you are Skateboard. You're not Skateboard. Skateboard's cooler. Um, Tail Sky Adventure. You fly as... T Actually, I think this one's kind of cool. I'm going to put it above... Fishing. Uh, to Knuckles is Treasure Hunt. This one sucked ass. This one is like the one LCD game that I can say is like the worst of them all. <laughs> I think it's just stupid the way it controls. It's dumb. Uh, Amy and Rouge Tennis is technically the same thing as Amy and Rouge Volleyball. So I'll put it like, but I like tennis more. Tennis. Uh, my fiance plays tennis, so that makes it better. <laughs> Scream Flower Catch. It is literally the same game as the other one. It's just in a different presentation. So where's the other one? 
Uh, I think I like the flower pattern more, though. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> <clears throat> Shadow Basketball. Uh, he do be ballin', and that Pakistan commercial is pretty sick. So this one... Um, basketball is one of my favorite sports, but I still, I'm still not putting it above soccer because I own that one. So yeah, there you go, Shadow. E tier is so big. Are you sure you don't? No, there's no F tiers. In, there's no F ranks in Sonic. There's only E for everyone. Not my day. <laughs> uh, and I think that that's the last LCD game. Sonic's Millionaire was a lost Sonic mobile game for cards. Um, why do I have two Sonic Spe Speed Deluxes? What the fuck? Sonic Millionaire? Okay. Uh, I don't know how to play Millionaire. Um, but I like the presentation more than Speed. <laughs> so... <laughs> Sonic Jump. So this was not the Sonic Jump for like Android, for like uh, iOS and shit. This was the primitive version of that. And it's okay. It's not great. Uh, where is Sonicu Jump? Because this is like, this is the Sonic Jump you guys probably know, but we're talking about Sonic Jump for Sega Cafe. This one is probably one of the better ones, actually. Hold on. It's more of a game than these are. I'd probably play it over... I'd play it over these, too. Uh, I probably wouldn't... I'd play it over golf. Shit. Uh, honestly, probably high E tier. Wow. Look at that. High E tier. <laughs> but X tier exists... Not, it, only in Sonic Riders, though. Only in Sonic Riders. That's, that doesn't count. <laughs> <clears throat> Amy's American Page One. This is this is one of the more interesting ones because I've never heard of this shit before. And honestly, that kind of earns it points in my opinion. So Ameri Amy's American Page One uh, is a mobile phone game that was available through Sonic Cafe, much like a lot of these other ones. Uh, it features Amy in doing a card game against Rouge Cream and a Hero Chow. It, it's, a, it's a card game that I don't quite understand. It's actually quite intricate, um, but it's lost. And it like it looks like it'd be a pretty fun card game and it, i don't know why this one really gets me i don't know why i'm amy's american page one is the one that i'm like ah oh, man that sucks that this one's lost i would love to play this one uh my man my throat is just gone it's just gone <laughs> ah okay sonic x for the leapster you guys you guys saw me play this one i did what i could to play this game um, I went out of my way to buy a Leapster just to play this game and hook it up to my capture card. Um, it was a lot more interesting than I thought it would be. It had full motion cutscenes. It was developed in Flash. Um, I mean, it's still... E. It's, <laughs> I just don't know where. I just don't know where. I mean, it's more of a game than Sonic Eraser and, and these other games are. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, would I rather play it than Spinball, though? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess, okay, honestly, I'll, I'll put it here, I'll put it above, uh, Tales of the Music Maker, because it's, like, mostly a game, it's like a side-scroller where you get, like, letters and stuff, it's got levels and is interesting, um, <laughs> Yeah. If you want to play Sonic X and just play the adventure games, it's not the same. Because di didn't Sonic X have, like, adventure arcs later on? You'd have expected it on D? I don't know. It's not It's not good enough to be on D. That's the thing. <clears throat> like, it's interesting, but it's just, it's just not that fun. Uh, Sonic Reversey Hyper. Um, it's the hyper version of Sonic Reversey. Do we even have it? No, because I didn't play it. So it's probably better than original Reversey. I don't know what the difference is. Uh, Sonic Kart in 3DX. I really wish I would have been able to play this one, but we do not have it. 
It is a sequel to Sonic 3D Kart Racer. We have the original one. We don't have this one. But this one is... It looks like it'd be really fun to play. Like, it's a shame that we don't have it. <laughs> Can you see all of me walk into my mystery? Step inside and hold on for dear life. Do you remember me? Capture you or set you free? I am all, I am all of me. Yes, I'm so sorry. I'm... Thank you for the five. I'm still working on it. I, I want to make sure that it is perfect before I send it to you. You will have it before the year is out. I promise you that. Um, however, I still want to make sure... I want to run it by you and make sure that you still like it. Getting close to finalizing it, but I want it to just be... because Especially because of your support. I want to make it like, as good as I can make it. I want to make it as good as I can make it. It's not that off-key. It's not that bad. My singing isn't the worst thing in the world. I've heard worse people sing. <laughs> I see and feel the evil. My hands will crush them all. I used to like this game a lot when I was a kid. Um, this was another one that was I was like really influenced by Johnny's review. Because when he talked about it, I was like, oh shit, you're right. This game doesn't make sense, and it is like it does control control poorly. I remember at the time he said that like it was worse than 06. And I'm inclined to agree with a lot of that. I don't mind going back to it, actually. <clears throat> I don't mind going back. Because like in terms of function, like there's there's just a lot of things that make it bad. That's the problem. Um it's, I mean, because I don't care about the edginess. I, I think that they, they genuinely tried to make a game that was very separate from Sonic. I don't think the music's bad. It's just forgettable. I think that it's very drab and dreary, even for like a, even for a shadow game, right? I understand what they were going for, but like I, I would have appreciated to see a little bit more variety in terms of what we got. There are a lot of levels, which is cool, but some of them like overlap in terms of their aesthetic. And so it's kind of difficult to remember like what one level is versus another. Um, the, the idea of choice is a cool one. It's just one that isn't executed well, especially because of the story aspect of it. And story was a huge guiding factor in the creation of this game. It wasn't just what if we gave Sonic a gun, but it's just like, okay, well, we need to explain certain things about Shadow. Why didn't he die in Adventure 2? Why was he in Heroes? Is this the real Shadow or not? So it's like a lot of these things were things that were kind of addressed in Shadow, but they were not addressed in the best way. And so story-wise, it's a mess. It's And it's unfortunate because it could have been... If, if they had dropped the whole hero or villain thing, it would be a way stronger game, in my opinion. Because they could have had these branching ideologies within a linear story. You know, if you have the sort of angel and demon on Shadow's shoulders, right? Where it's just like, maybe have him help Black Doom in this level because he thinks it's the best thing for him to do. Have him defy Black Doom in this level because Shadow, you know, like his, his emo... I would love to do a rewritten on Shadow, actually, because like it's such an interesting one. And that's one of the ones that I've had my eye on in terms of a rewritten. But it's just like... <sighs> Didn't even explain how he survived. He just did. Like they, he he crash landed on Earth. He was found by one of Eggman's robots. They took what was left of him to the lab. He put him in stasis, and he just survived. And he figured. I mean, granted, this is all technically a fan theory because it's not confirmed. But it's like you can fill in the blanks. But the problem is, you don't know that until like eight minutes into a fight that should take you no more than three. You know, like it, 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 it shouldn't take you any long. It shouldn't take you that long to find out how Shadow survived. Right. <clears throat> I ultimately like what they do with his story in the final story, which is like, oh, you know, I I'm I'm more than the Maria thing. I'm I'm going to try to be my own person now. I don't care about my past. I've put my past behind me. That's great. But I feel like. That should not have defined Shadow's character. And so, like. Uh, granted, these are all things I don't like about the the story. In terms of gameplay, uh, it's not as slippery as as Heroes is, but it, level design wise, it's not as interesting as Heroes is. Um, 
if you play it traditionally without the guns, it can be a slog to play through compared to heroes. Um, they really encourage you to use vehicles and weapons, which I get. Um, I don't know. There's there's a lot I like about it, but there's a lot that I don't like about it. <clears throat> As with every game, right? That being said... Uh huh. That's tough. This is a tough decision. I I guess. <laughs> I, I is that is that fair? <laughs> like, you skip most levels in Shadow by just the checkpoint. What do you mean? <laughs> To be honest, the option to assist Black... Thank you for the membership. To the assist, Black Doom doesn't fit with Shadow's character. Shadow knows a bigger threat and what, who it is when he sees it. Yeah, that's true. But at the same time, it's just like when it comes to trying to figure out more about who he is, it also kind of makes sense because this is someone who clearly has a connection to him and clearly knows more about what... Uh, who and what Shadow is and he's letting on. So it's like, I understand why he jumps to the ability or jumps to the chance to find out more about himself. Oh, because of the checkpoint skip. I mean, yeah, but like, dude, I didn't want to play those levels over and over and over again. That's the thing, though. Like, I would, I would still rather. I know that C seems high, and despite everything I just said, but I would rather play it than a lot of the things that follow it. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the things that come after it are things that I'm just like, I don't know. I don't love Shadow the Hedgehog, but I also don't hate it. I think, I think that that's why it's very middle of the road for me. But at the same time, I wouldn't dare say it's better than Sonic 1 or CD. Like, I don't know. Uh, Sonic Rush. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even realize I wasn't at where the games are. Sonic Rush. So this was the evolution of the Dimps formula from Advance. This was, uh, I believe, the first Sonic game on DS. This was 2005, correct? Yes. Um, great game. I, I really enjoy Sonic Rush. Uh, I probably don't enjoy it as much as a lot of other people do, though. Like, it's, it's fun, but I don't enjoy it as much as a lot of other people enjoy it. Um, God, it's tough. It is, it is tough. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put it above advance because not only does this offer a story, which irrelevant, right? It's irrelevant whether or not it, it, it has a story to it. It has that same simplicity I was talking about earlier. I kind of like that's the thing, though, and that's why I kind of want advance maybe to eke out Rush just a little bit. But there are things about Rush that I think are more original. There are things about Rush that I think expand upon what Advance did, despite only being able to control two characters. Um, you don't have to play as all the characters to get to the final section. You just have to play as two. <clears throat> yeah, I'd say I like it more than Advance. I'd like it more than Advance. Power Man 5000 became your favorite band thanks to it. Which one did they sing in Shadow? Probably one that I don't like. <laughs> Is it waking up, breaking down? <laughs> this is what it likes to be free. Rush has way too much dims. It does. You, you're right about that. It does have way too much dims, but it, it has mechanics that I think are more interesting than advance, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog Mobile. It was a mobile version of Sonic 1 that you could play on your phone. Uh, it is crunched to heck. Uh, but it's still Sonic 1, so I'm going to put it low C. <laughs> you could play worse things, honestly. Like, it's... My philosophy is like... Okay, well, actually... 
we're about to we're on the dawn of sonic genesis so maybe my my argument is going to fall apart but like my my philosophy is if it is the same thing as something else there's very little reason to bash on it as bad as poorly but at the same time like i understand that circumstance is different it's like i don't know 20 frames a second screen is tiny you play on your phone but it's still sonic one like it's not Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. Almost dead, almost dead, almost dead to the world. I hate that song. <laughs> Shadow Shoot. Okay, so Shadow Shoot was pretty impressive, actually. This one, I might put not an E tier. Shadow Shoot was, like, actually kind of fun. As far as a Sonic Cafe game goes. Like, that's a game that I could see myself actually finishing. I, I, I could actually see myself completing Shadow Shoot. Which is weird. Uh, it's basically, like, it's the sprites from Sonic Battle. Um, but you can shoot with a gun. And it's like an endless run. Well, it's not an endless runner. Because you actually can finish a level. You're just constantly... It's an auto runner, I guess. And, like, you can speed up, slow down, fight bosses. It's pretty cool. Honestly, it's not, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Okay, here we go. Sonic Riders. I'm curious to see what you guys think of this. <clears throat> Sonic Riders. Zero Gravitas. Free Rydell. Sonic Riders. You want more people to do Shadows Expert Mode because there's hilarious dialogue. You can get some sages from the others watching you. Great for memes. I've seen some of it. I, I had no idea because I, I saw one that's from like... <sighs> Egg Core or whatever the fuck that level's called. Where like... Rouge is talking to you and then Omega interrupts and Rouge is like... Omega, don't interrupt! And Omega's just like... Oh. <laughs> it's very funny. Um... Wow, I'm seeing a lot of like different things for for Riders. So Riders is is a game that I actually really enjoyed as a kid, but I knew that like I didn't love it, and I still don't love it. But like having played it again for like the marathon and playing it again on my own time, um, I think I've grown to appreciate it as like a racing game. I think that it actually has like depth to the gameplay. I wish it controlled better. That's my one thing. Because I think that in terms of style, in terms of music, in terms of setting, in terms of even story... Like, despite how short the story is, I love it conceptually. There's so much about the Rider series, especially the first one. Not even the second game. I, I like Zero Gravity a lot. But in terms of the gameplay of Riders, or in terms of the concept of Riders, I really wish that there was a better version. I wish that there was a version of Riders that I loved, Right? Because I like writers. I like I, I like writers enough, but I think it's a game that doesn't do it's it's a, it's a series, not just a game, but like it's it's a series that doesn't do enough for me to fall in love with it. And I wish it did. I, I think it's one of those things that's like, I wish I loved you more. <laughs> Cause I don't. I just I, I like it's it's like when you have to turn somebody down. Not that I know anything about this, but like it's like when you have to turn somebody down and you're just like, man, I just I don't like you like you. I just like you. <laughs> And that, that's kind of like what Riders is to me. I, I like Riders, but I don't love it enough. Um, that being said, though, because of all that, I would put it even after... Like, I'd put it above Advance 3. Well, I don't know, though, because, like... Shit. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I like Riders, but... It... Do I like it more than Advance 3? Maybe. I might like it more than Advance 3. <laughs> it's a tough choice, because I like it, but it's... It, like, I don't... I also don't love it. Um, I, I wish that there was a version of that game that I loved. Because I... Even Zero Gra... Oh, we'll, we'll get into Zero Gravity in a bit, but... Sonic Speed DX. I don't know anything about this game. Speed... 
Sonic Speed DX. It's like the deluxe version of Sonic Speed DX, which is whatever. <laughs> it just gets worse. Nintendo Fan 85, thank you for the membership. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Sonic 7s. This is another... Sonic No 7 Narabe is uh, a card game that I have no idea what it's about, but it looks interesting, and it has the cast, so I'm going to put it there, and it's got a number in it, so that's pretty cool. It's got almost two numbers in it, because that looks like a five. Uh, <laughs> Sonic Golf 3D. This is also lost, but it looks like it could be cool. Uh, where's this golf? Uh, you know what? Here. <laughs> Sonic Golf. Actually, I'm curious. Let me talk more about Sonic 3D Golf. Or Sonic Golf 3D, I apologize. It's a mobile game. Uh, it's a Sonic Cafe game. It's a sequel to Sonic Golf and was followed up by Sonic Golf DX in 2010. So there's another Sonic Golf game. Honestly, wow. It looks pretty okay for a mobile game in terms of its 3D. And it looks pretty complex. Could be pretty damn cool. Yeah, it it honestly like it reminds me of like a Saturn game. <laughs> like if they if they made like a Sonic golf game for the Saturn, this is what I imagine it would look like. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I'd play that game at least once. <laughs> uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Mobile. So Sonic 2 Mobile was uh, it was like cut into. There were three versions of it. One that was complete, and then it there was Crash and Dash. Dash was, like, the first half of Sonic 2, and Crash was the second half of Sonic 2. We played, like, um, Emerald Hill, and we played Mystic Cave on the marathon, because I played both Dash and Crash. Um, love Sonic 2. Not the worst port in the world, but it's, it's tough for me to be like, oh, I love this game, you know? So it's like, where did I put... Where did I put... Here we go. Yeah, I'll put it, like, somewhere here, you know? Actually, I might like it more than Shadow Shoot. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a D-ranked game, but it's, like... It's hard to say it's anything better than that, right? Because it's, like, I could say it's a C game. It's a C-tier game. Honestly, no, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> Why not? I like Sonic 2. Yeah. And you can't say anything to me. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis. Okay. Nathan warned me. He told me about this game. I didn't believe him. I didn't believe that this game was that bad. This game is... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis. It's... I, I, gra I will grant it this. It is not an E-rank game. Because it's still Sonic 1. I... Uh... No, I'm keeping it where it is. Because it's like, it's it's damn near E, right? It's still Sonic 1. The music's not as good. It's screen crunched up the ass. The frame rate is terrible. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's so surprising because, like, Dimps made this. So, like, why? Why couldn't they just... Uh, it was like they took the ROM for the Genesis version of Sonic 1 and it was just like, ah, put in Game Boy. <laughs> and then that was it. That's all they did. They didn't adjust for anything. They didn't fix anything. They just put it on Game Boy. <laughs> it's sad. Remember the Spring Yard music? I do! They used, like, one of the twinkles as, like, part of the percussion, and it was ass. <laughs> yeah, put square peg into round hole. It fit, but you're not supposed to do it. <laughs> yeah, all they did was add the spin dash, and that was it. And that's... meh. Next we have... Coming to light the fuse, he's a rocket and he's ready to go. <laughs> uh. Cause now the countdown has started and he is ready to go. He's got the tote sounds bumping and a stereo, dude. He's kicking ass fast, putting on the show. You gotta psych yourself up cause it's time to play, dude. Out to the beats and the bronze cause it's here to stay. The one and only miracle man ripping today. Going fast, pulling fast, set to pull you away. The pressures of this world, they can take their toll, and it's tough to get away. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> this joke has run its course, I'm sorry. Um, There's a lot to say about Sonic 06. I did not grow up with Sonic 06. I did not have a next-gen console when this game came out. I, I grew up 
hearing the horror stories of Sonic 06, it was a game that I had no interest in playing growing up. Um, I actually, I, I deprived myself of playing the game because I wanted to play it with my partner at the time. And we were a long distance relationship. And so we couldn't really play the game together. We didn't have, you know, Discord. We didn't have like all these things that we have nowadays that, you know, facilitate us playing uh, games with each other with each other over the internet. And so like for the longest time, I, I held on playing to this game because I didn't want to play it without her. Then that didn't work out. And so like eventually I did play it on my own to experience it for myself. This is like, I don't know, dude. 10 years after <laughs> 06 came out and after I already knew like everything there was to know about the game, saw Johnny's review, saw Clement's review. So I knew, I knew how bad it was. When I finally played it, I was like, okay, I found it more humorous than I found it infuriating. I still found it infuriating. Don't get me wrong. I still found it infuriating because of the little things about it. But I, I went into the game knowing it was bad. And I think that that altered my perception of it, right? Um, I thought I heard something. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so I, I knew going into it that it was going to be bad. I was still surprised at how bad it was in parts. And the thing is, even if I, I've, I've said, I've said multiple times, right? Throughout the marathon, because we've had this conversation before multiple times. I don't care if you enjoy this game. <laughs> I heard you in my walls. Yes, probably. Come on, Greg, <laughs> get out of there. It doesn't... Let me not be as harsh. Let me not say I don't care. Rather, it doesn't matter if you like this game or not, because I have an affinity toward this game. I, I, I will admit that I do have my own affinity towards Sonic 06. But at the end of the day, that doesn't and shouldn't hold more weight than what we can objectively discern from the game, which is that it is an unfinished game. It is, as far as I'm concerned, more of a prototype than it is a finished game. There's so much to it that is unoptimized. There is so much to it that is fundamentally flawed about it, from the story to the level design to the aesthetics of the game. It's not a good game. If you enjoy this game, that's fine. <laughs> You can, you can enjoy this game. That's okay. But it's not a finished game. It is not a good game. <laughs> um, and yes, it did tarnish the reputation of Sonic because, and again, like I said, no matter which way you slice it, you cannot say, if there's one thing about this game is that you cannot say it's good. If you say that you enjoy it, that's one thing. If you think this game is good, I'm sorry, I don't like being this mean, but you need to play other games. You need to experience other games if you think that this game is good. Because it's not a good game. Um, <clears throat> in terms of mechanics, you know, it, it borrows heavily from the adventure games. And so, like, they had those building blocks there. They had to build the engine the the engine from the ground up so they had like a basis for like okay we want it to play like the adventure games right so that's why like it doesn't suck to control for the most part but it is a glitchy mess like that 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 doesn't change it um so it's tough it's tough for me to say that like this this might have to be Uh, it's a tough decision. I think it is. I will be kind. I will be kind and give it the lowest D tier I can because it's still a bad game, but it's a game that I can play through and finish, right? A lot of these I can as well, but they're so short that it's just like, you know, it, I'm I'm so tempted to put it like high E tier. But it's I don't know. 
there's it still has its redeeming qualities. It has its it has redeeming qualities compared to a lot of these other games. Where it's just like, would you rather play 06 again or would you rather play, I don't know, Sonic Blast? It's like, okay, well, fucking give me the controller and let me wait 20 seconds for <laughs> the load screen. Um It's it's a horrible game. I, I and and I think that ignoring that is just kidding yourself because yes, we shouldn't use it as a basis to say like, or to represent Sonic as a whole, but you, a lot of people who are against bashing this game need to think about it in the context of when it came out, need to think about it as a standalone game. Don't compare it to anything else as, as its own game. It's still bad <laughs> just because you like it. <laughs> that doesn't make it good. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It had very good portions, but it's just not good. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, Aixen, thank you so much for the five. I was it's a very tough subject for me. It was pretty. It was overall pretty trash, but it had some of your favorite quotes in the series, especially Shadow's character. And that's the best part of the game. Like, if if you want a more in depth look at what I think about the game, I do have my uh, everything I love about Sonic 06 video because there is stuff to like about it. There's the soundtrack. There's shot. There's the whole sh episode Shadow. Um, there are mechanics in it that I think are, are decent. They're not great because like the adventure games did it better, but it's, it is a tough game to talk about, but at the same time, I don't want to kid myself. I don't want to kid anybody and, and say like, Oh, you know, it's, it's tough. Cause like, it's on the one hand, it's like, no, 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 it sucks. But <laughs> there are worse games, I guess it, it had certain things going for it. Sonic Rivals. Rivals 1, where are you? Where are you, Rivals? There's Rivals 2. Uh, where's Rivals 1? Oh, don't even tell me you're not here. Oh, no. Oh, here you are. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, Rivals 1. Um, fun little game. Ah... I will put it here. It is a low C tier game for me. It's fun, but it gets very repetitive. It is... It is a racing game on foot, uh, 2D, uh, developed by Backbone Entertainment, featuring Sonic, Silver, Shadow, Knuckles, uh, and Metal Sonic is like another a separate character that I don't know if you can play as in the multiplayer of this game. I think you can, but you can't in story mode. Um, it had the opportunity to do something more interesting than it did. Uh, it controls fine enough, but the thing is, like I said, it's very repetitive. Once you've played one story, you've basically played them all, which kind of sucks because like you don't get the full story if you just play the one story. Uh, but then like you're so you're just slowly filling in the blanks with each character you play as. That by the time you get to Silver, who is like the last character you play as, or that you're supposed to play as. Uh, you basically kind of already know the story, and it's just, there's nothing new. There's nothing super interesting. It's still fun. I It's still worth a playthrough. But it's it's one that is like, when I go back to play it, I'm like, yeah, I remember why I like Sonic Rivals. And then, like, by the time I get to Shadow Story, I'm just like, oh, God. God, just end. Just end. <laughs> Yeah, the card collection aspect of it was nice, but the thing is there are so many cards versus how many races there are that it, it just, you know, <laughs> it doesn't make up for it. Overall, I like it. It's just not enough. Sonic's Napoleon. Sonic has a hat. He looks pretty damn cool. It's another card game. I'm going to put it back to back. They're giving each other the thumbs up. That's pretty cool. I don't know how to play Napoleon, um, but it's a card game on phones and i've never played it because it's lost but that's pretty cool <clears throat> secret rings i have a vendetta against secret rings personally it is a an exclusive wii game it was the first in the duology of the storybook series uh it uses motion controls it was like the hot shit when the wii came out uh and then it just ended up being hot shit i didn't like this game even as a kid i really wanted to like it because i i think that the music is good i think that the visuals in terms of the cutscenes, like the, the animated storybook cutscenes are very nice. Um, I like 
the 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 small little story it has. Playing it again for the marathon kind of disappointed me because I I realized that I don't like the story as much as I thought I did. It's still an okay story, but it's just not. It, it's more disappointing than I thought it was. Honestly, like it 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 makes it sad. <laughs> It's debate. It's debatably why 06 turned out bad. I disagree. I mean, just because like they they separated the two studios, they wouldn't have finished 06 in time anyway. They still wouldn't have been able to finish it in time, in my opinion. Um, I would argue that visually, I like Secret Rings more than 06 because it's like simpler. Whereas like 06 kind of went for this realistic aesthetic. Secret Rings doesn't even try to do that. It, like, sticks to the cartoony nature of it, which I appreciate. Um, I do like what it tries to do with its variety and level design. A lot of it is very samey, unfortunately, because it's like, ah, oh, it's supposed to be this, you know, Middle Eastern, Arabian uh, aesthetic and setting. And so, like, you get a lot of sand, but, like, you also get, like, the pirate stuff, and you get the dinosaur stuff, and you get, like, the castle in the sky stuff. So it's just, like... It's me I'll give it this. It's memorable. Um, control wise, it's terrible. I wish there was a version of it. If if this and Black Knight had a version of them that was traditional, just controls, they could be really good games. I think. Um, I all dude, Greg. I almost gave up on this too. I almost gave up on on Secret Rings even as a kid. Like I, I this was a game that made me rage quit as a child. <laughs> when I had, like, all the time in the world. Um, so, yeah, like, as... This feels wrong, but I'm gonna put it in high E, because it's just, like, I still think it's a better game than a lot of these other ones, but it's still not a good game. It's still, like, of my of the modern... Modern? <laughs> this is, like, 12, 15 years old at this point, but, like, of the more of the of the dark era it's like one of my least favorite games i would i would rather play 06 than secret rings and but but that's the fault of the controls in my opinion like ultimately it comes down to controls whereas like 06 is debatably a worse game than secret rings secret rings is just absolutely squandered by its controls it's unfortunate um although it did have like alternate modes like the the party mode and stuff those also weren't great unfortunately it it sucks because like it could have that could have saved it that could have like made it better but it's just like even that's not great uh sonic no jigen resha otherwise known as sonic's timed train it is uh let me read you a snippet from it this is another sonic cafe game one of the last ones um it's a mobile phone game released as part of the Sonic Cafe. Uh, Eggman has begun kidnapping animals in order to rebuild Eggman Land. Luckily, Tails found out and told Sonic, who has now infiltrated the end of the train and that, that the doctor is using to transport the animals on, which has been titled the Egg Liner. He must then travel up to the various cars while the train is stopped. Um, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. It, what is it, like a Metal Gear kind of game? What What is this like? Oh, this looks interesting. It's like tile based, but like you're supposed to beat the clock. This looks like it'd be fun. This looks like it'd be a pretty fun game. Um, you know what? Yeah, let's put it there. Sonic's Time Train looks like it could be pretty dang fun. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, Sonic Casino Poker. I've never played poker. I. It's a name I know. I will put it under speed or above speed. So nothing will ever top speed. I mean, so nothing will ever be worse than speed. Just because I don't know. <laughs> Alright, love. Drive home safe. Please. <clears throat> okay. Rush Adventure. A new venture. La la. La 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 la. So, when I was a kid, I thought that there was only one Rush game. I thought that it was Sonic Rush Adventure. So I was very confused when it seemed like Blaze and Sonic already knew each other. Um... I didn't play the original Rush until, like, a year later or something. And I remember, like, thinking it was a step down. It's tough. It's tough for me to decide whether or not I like Rush Adventure or Rush more. Because I like Rush for its simplicity. 
compared to a Rush Adventure. Uh, Rush Adventure can get a little grindy, which kind of sucks. Like that, that's something against it. But I also like that it's one concise journey compared to original Rush. Whereas like with Rush, Blaze's story fills in the gaps in Sonic's story. It's just a parallel to Sonic's story. Whereas in Rush Adventure, it's the same story. Sonic and Blaze sort of share an adventure together. There's a lot that happens. There. Like it feels like an adventure. Not that Rush doesn't, but like Rush feels more like a traditional Sonic game than Adventure does. Rush Adventure feels grander, you know? I think that it's tough, right? I still don't like Marine. I'm sorry. <laughs> Marine is something, is is a point against Rush Adventure, but it's it's tough for me to decide whether or not I like it more or less than the original Rush. I preferred Rush Adventure way over Rush in the Stream. I think you're right. I th I think you might be right about that. Uh, Marine could have been cool. Yeah, Marine could have been cool, but... Man, I don't know. I do not know. <sighs> y yeah? <sighs> it's tough, dude. I Because, like, for everything I think about Rush, right? For everything about Rush that I think about, like, oh, but I like this more. There's something else about Rush Adventure that I'm just like, well, I like this too, though. Oh, but I don't like this about Rush Adventure. Ah, uh, but I don't really like this about Rush either. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's always, like, one thing or the other. I missed the super chat. Oh, sorry about that. Hold your horses, my dudes. Excuse me. What did I miss? How long ago was it? Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm sorry. A new venture, la la, la la, la la. A new venture, la la. It's hard to like a game without... Thank you for the five, I make content. It's hard to like a game without saying, I like this game even though I know it's bad. I like games that I actually believe are good. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Yep. But but at the same time, like that's that's part of the objectivity, right? That's part of like the okay. Does does this aspect of this game that I know is bad but that I still like matter more than this other aspect that I know is good but I don't particularly care for? Like I'm trying to be objective while at the same time acknowledging that these are my opinions. It's tough. It's tough to 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 marry those two concepts because you know that one is an opinion and one is is like trying to be concise about it. It's not easy. <laughs> it's definitely not easy. Dude, I don't care. Marine sucks. She's boring. She's she's annoying. She's boring. Oh, she's a kid. Okay, so is Tails. I like Tails. <laughs> so is Cream. I like Cream. So is Charmy. I'm indifferent to Charmy. Marine is just straight annoying to me. <clears throat> she does nothing but not listen to you. <laughs> she's not helpful. Like, every time she's helpful, she's helpful by accident. It's through nothing that she does on purpose, except near the end of the game. And that, we shouldn't give her credit for fucking up in the right way. <laughs> Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Um, so this is an interesting case. Um, and I'm going to let my, I'm going to let my bias show a little here. I think that we should give the uh, Beijing 2008 credit for being the first official crossover between Mario and Sonic, two characters who have been, you know, rivals since the inception of Sonic. Um, it is really cool to see them come together for the first time in this party game. It's not a fantastic party game, but for a console like the Wii that was already very family oriented, um, and this just like groundbreaking crossover, I think it deserves brownie points just based on that fact alone. It's still. I think it holds up. It's not a fantastic game or anything. I think it holds up, though, as far as a game goes. Um, I 
<laughs> I played the shit out of the first Olympic Games game on the Wii. Uh, I played a little bit of the DS version too. I didn't really play the DS version on stream because I figured like there's really no point. The differences are nominal. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Is the DS version better, comparable, or worse than the Wii version? <laughs> You don't see Origins on the list? Is that on purpose? Origins is on the list. What do you mean? It's right here. <laughs> you didn't... Did the DS version have a story yet? No, it was just the mini games in the DS version. Worse if you discount the fact that it's a DS game. Ah, I mean, maybe. If Secret Ring should be C plus B. Hell no. <laughs> Did we play the same game? It's awful. Uh, I'm going to put it, like, slightly underneath the Wii version. Just slightly, though. <clears throat> uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Rivals 2. Uh, second verse, same as the first. Um, it's got a decently better story. It's got voice acting. It's more advanced than the first Rivals game was. Um... Uh, hello. Hi. <laughs> How was your day? Fine. Good. Show Just show me something. Okay. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying when I saw it. <laughs> Oh, that's some nice air. Oh, very nice air. I'm kind of dying over here. <laughs> yeah, I will. Okay. Okay. More. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Okay. Rivals 2, same as the first verse, uh, more advanced, got voice acting, more playable characters. It's, again, very repetitive, though. Um, I will say that I think I enjoy it more than the first game. I, I didn't grow up with this game the same way I did with the first Rivals. But I enjoy it more. I accept that, like, it is by all means a better game. It's just a longer game and a more repetitive one as a result because of how many more characters you have. And granted, you don't need to play as all eight characters, but... There are certain cutscenes that are just, like, not... Where is the first Rivals? I don't even see it. <laughs> Where is the first Rivals? Oh, there it is. Um, but yeah. Yo, what's up, Bora? <clears throat> oh, yes, it's also got Race to Win, so that immediately makes it better. I actually love... The card system in Rivals 2 was a cool addition, but again, it just felt like more quantity over quality. Yeah. Correct. Uh, a little bit more approachable, but not as not quite as fun as to some people. Um, yeah, I agree. I think that level design wise, the simplicity of Rivals One was more fun, but the extra modes in Rivals Two, like the boss battles, the fights, the like, the, there were extra things to do other than just race. And I think that that's another point for Rivals Two. Uh, I missed the donation again. What the heck? Spidey Cat with the five. Thank you so much. My I put your precious Sonic R with the best soundtrack in C tier. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, I like I like R. Let it be known that I still like Sonic R. I still do. Like it, it's another one that's like kind of a guilty pleasure. I still like playing it, even when it pisses me off, but I don't know if I could say it's a good game, though. That's the thing. Just because I enjoy it doesn't mean it's a good game. I still like it though. I still really enjoy playing. Uh, Rider Zero Gravity. Uh, I could not find... I, I've told the story before, but I could not find plain footage of this without a watermark when I did the Everything Wrong With years ago. So I had to use my shitty capture card with, like, the interlaced quality. Uh, and I hadn't played the game up until that point for, like, years. So I, I played it again 
when I did the everything wrong with, which I could do way better now. But <clears throat> at the time, I remember thinking like, whoa, I do not remember liking this game this much. This was really fun. Yo, what's up, Phoenix? Uh, and now that I've played it again for like archival purposes and for the marathon, playing it almost back to back with the original writers, I realize that I don't like it as much as the original writer. I still like this game a lot. It's just that I think that they took away a lot of the depth in order uh, for the sake of like simplicity, which is fine. I think that taking away the simpli the or making the game more streamlined for like playing it on the Wii and on uh, PlayStation Two was nice in favor of the of the zero gravity mechanic. But there's a complexity from the original game that I think is lost. I think that the original game was more complex. It was deeper in terms of mechanics, and you lose a lot of that in Zero Gravity. I love the music in Zero Gravity. I love the style of Zero Gravity. I like what it tried to do story-wise. Uh, th there's so much about Zero Gravity that I love, but I think that as a game, the original writers is just a little bit better from it. Yeah, the second game is really, really short. It's like a 30-minute game, if you know what you're doing. Um, but I, I I still like it. I still think it's a it, it's a fine game. It's just really short. It's just, I, I wish it was better. I, and that, that's what I was saying earlier. Like, I, I, I like Zero Gravity. I wish I loved it, though. I really, really wish I loved it. Um... And I really wish that there was... Because I love the concept of Sonic being different. And and this is something that we'll get into more with the All-Stars Racing games, but it kind of sucks that that didn't remain the norm. Because, like, Mario has carts. Cool. Sonic started out with a car. Okay, weird. Um, but for some reason, his 90s attitude makes you think of skateboards. But also, he's, like, timeless. So, like, a hoverboard kind of makes sense with the character. So I've always thought that the Extreme Gear was such a perfect fit for Sonic as a character. And I wish that they had kept that going as a racing spinoff. You know? Like, I, I wish that there were more... Like, I wish that that was the staple instead of, like, the kart racing. It was basically a comfort stream to you. I, I'm glad. I'm very glad. Catch me if you can. Bunk down. Booster never catch. Bath gowned. Booster never catch. What the hell is this? Oh, did I fuck up? I might have fucked up. Hold on. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out in a bit. Uh, Sega Superstars Tennis. So this is the second ever Sega Superstars game. I thought it was fine. I don't think it's great. I think it's just okay. I think it's probably a better game overall than the original Superstars. Uh, hmm. You know what? I'm gonna give it credit. I'm gonna give both. I don't. I played the DS version years ago. That, that was the one that I played because I didn't have like, I didn't have the game on the Wii or PlayStation Two. I only had the DS version. Um, but when I played it for the marathon, the mechanic. It's no Mario Tennis, right? Unfortunately, but it's okay. It's all right. It's it's fine, I guess. <laughs> I, it's fine. <laughs> as a racing game and love the first riders with the air mechanics. I mean, yeah, like as a racing game, zero gravity is kind of not great. Um, as a game, it's fine though. I like it. What year are we at? We are in 2008 currently. So I'm going to put both these games. Shit. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> it was tough for me to figure. Like, I kept looking at them. I'm just like, ah, but I'd rather play it than this. But I'd rather play it than this. Ah, but it's better than this. <laughs> it's so like... <laughs> um, no, you know what? I kind of agree. Maybe it is a C-tier game. What do you guys think? D feels low. I like, I, I like tennis. I like the tennis game. It's just, I don't... Love it, I guess. <sighs> hmm. 
Hmm. Thoughts? Th what are we thinking? <laughs> I... <laughs> I think that's fair, right? <laughs> like, I know it's my opinion, but it's just like, I keep I keep looking at it. It's just like, I, I know it's just tennis, but it's like, I'd rather probably play than this. At least it's like, it's challenge mode is less repetitive than rivals. <laughs> yeah, I had a decent time with it. So it's just like, I can't, can't knock it, I guess. Uh, Sonic at the Olympic game. So this was an iOS game. Okay, I kind of love this game a little. I mean, I don't love it, but I think it's funnier and better than most of the mobile games. Okay, this is going to be weird. <laughs> Sonic at the Olympic Games is a mid-D tier game. Because it's not great. It's obviously not a good game. But it's just like, I, you gotta admire the sprite work that went into it. Like, I could tell that they gave a shit when trying to make that game. And they they tried, dude. <laughs> they tried. Like, they, you have a few mini games that you have to play in 2D. Not all of them make sense. But it's like, man, it's kind of like whatever, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like whatever. Is it one of those games where you have a spark of joy when playing every once in a while? Yeah, I'd say so. It's like, ah, oh, yay, tennis with Sonic. And then I'm just like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah, it's A for effort. It's a cute adaptation. It's not, it's nothing great, but it's like, it's not the worst. Could be worse. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh, shit. This is hard. It, it, it is not above a D rank. There is no way this is anything above a D rank. It's still bad. I will be kind to you because you are, you are more a game than any of the games on this list. And you're better than 06. It's got decent enough writing. Its story is very interesting. I like its characterizations of the characters. I like what it tries to do to expand the world, even if it is not paced the best. Gameplay-wise, it could have and should have been better. It makes me rage a lot, but at the same time, it's not the worst thing in the world. Chronicles OST makes Frontiers sound like audible sewage by comparison. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you don't like the Frontiers soundtrack? Compared to Chronicles? Have you heard the Chronicles soundtrack? <laughs> like, there's a lot I like about it. Obviously, it's not a... <sighs> I wouldn't call it a good game, but I feel like that's very subjective as well. I feel like if we need another Sonic RPG, like just dead ass, we need another Sonic RPG with consistent art styles, with better, uh, more suitable moves. I like the characters that they that they you know a that they introduce, b the characters that they have on your party. There's a lot to like about the game. I don't like the game. <laughs> it's it's tough. It is, it is tough. <laughs> That's 100% bait, no way. Absolutely. <laughs> but I still have to call it out. Because maybe there's someone who does, who it, agrees with that statement. <laughs> or that, or that asserts that statement. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sonic Unleashed. Sonic Unleashed. God, this is a tough one. These are tough ones, dude. Sonic Unleashed is what I grew up with. I remember liking the daytime stages, not preferring the the Werehog stages. Everyone seems to be of that opinion. However, 
I believe that to be true of the Wii version. I believe that to be true of the standard definition version, the PS2 Wii version. Hence why I call it unweashed. Um, I don't mind the daytime stages. Uh, Werehog stages kind of suck. They they could be worse, I suppose. They're not great. To me, the Wii version is more meh than the HD version. The final boss, though, it's okay. <laughs> it's it's okay. Unleashed A, Unleashed B. I'm sorry, guys. I don't like... The... Okay. It's not that I don't like Unleashed. I dislike... I don't like Unleashed as much as most people do. The, not B-worthy, though. I would put Unleashed HD in B. I would put Unleashed High C. So on for okay, so on let's let's talk about Unleashed first. It's a very simplified, very watered down version of of the HD version. Uh, they're very different, in my opinion. I like the streamlined nature of the daytime stages in Unleashed more than the complex. It, the complex, you need to really learn the layout of these stages before they're fun in HD. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I would say that it's maybe the highest C tier game for me. I don't think that story's that good. I don't know why people think that the story's dark at all. It's just like... Eldritch monster destroyed the world. You team up with Rat Friend to bring world back together, and then Rat Friend turns out to be other god, and then you fight God. And then he goes back to sleep. I'm sorry, that's what the story is. <laughs> it that's it's really not as dark as people think it is. Um it's it's a very it's not a bad story either. It's just people tout it as like this deep, this like very important like story, and it's just like it's really not though. It's like it feels on par with Heroes. It really is. It's it's just like Heroes is like ah, we have to beat Eggman in three days, or he's going to conquer the world. Let's go, everybody! And then Heroes is just like oh no, the world is destroyed. We gotta bring it back, everybody. Let's go. Like, yeah, they they do sort of emphasize that, you know, it's a big deal compared to Heroes. But overall, it's not complex. It's not... It's not even really that interesting. Like, especially for a game that is a world adventure. Like, you go to all these different places around the world. I love that aesthetically. I love that conceptually. I think it makes for good levels. But that's... That, I mean... That's kind of it. <laughs> Akame, thank you so much for the 10. Unleashed is by far the most overrated game in the series. I know that's what you think. <laughs> no other Sonic game has toxic defenders at the ready to lynch anyone who dares criticizing it by the tiniest degree. C tier is generous. I don't I agree that I think it's that I think it's overrated. I do think that Unleashed is overrated. There are people who will fight tooth and nail to say that Unleashed is the best Sonic game, and it's it's one of those things that I kind of I understand, but I just disagree, right? And I feel like when trying to explain why I don't like it as much as other Sonic games, it really comes down to opinion. But I feel like I do have valid reasons to not like it as much as these other games, right? Um, and especially, let's let's leave Unleashed, Unleashed there. Let's talk about Unleashed HD. Um, I like Unleashed HD more than the standard version. But the reason for it is mostly, and this is going to sound weird as fuck, but the reason for it is because of the Werehog. I like beat-em-ups. I like um, hack-and-slash games. I did not think I was going to like, and I'd never played it until the marathon. I did not think I was going to like this game when I played it for the marathon. And I ended up liking the Werehog stuff more than I liked the daytime stage stuff. I think the music is good. I think the visuals 
dude, they hold up to this day. They hold, like, this game is very, very, it, it's that perfect blend of, like, I still think that, in my opinion, Jens does it better, but Unleashed marries the, the, the surreal level design with the more realistic environment design really, really nicely. I think that the models, the animations, the voice acting, all of that is really, really good. But gameplay wise, like again, yeah, I like the I like the Werehog. Um, fine enough. I, I kind of wish it wasn't as slow. I think that you can have that fast paced combat even with the Werehog. I think it would have benefited from it. This game also has Eggman Land. And that is points against this game. <laughs> However, the daytime stages, the reason I don't like them as much compared to Unleashed is because you're going so incredibly fast that if you don't know the level design, you get punished for it. It's a constant go, stop, go, stop, go, stop because you don't know the level design. I'll speak for me, right? I don't know the level design of the of the... Uh, daytime stages and un an Unleashed HD. And so because I don't know them, I don't know what routes to take. I don't know what's going to stop me. I don't know what's coming up. But it's clear that the game doesn't want you to just run normally. It's clear that sometimes you're meant to boost. Otherwise, you'll go too slow. And so it's just like, it's a game that incentivizes replay replaying the game multiple times. And that's okay. I think that replayability-wise, that's a great quality to have. But for someone who's playing it for the first time, that constant go stop, go stop, go stop, get hit, fall down pit, do it again, it gets grating. Like <laughs> it, it, it gets annoying to do, right? So it's just like I can un I can completely understand people who love it because they played it as a kid and replayed the stages over and over and over and over again until they got good at them. You can make the same argument for the classic games though. You don't go as fast, though. I, I, I would disagree with that because, like, especially because of the 2D nature of it, I don't think it's as punishing. And I don't think that you go f so fast that the times that you do stop, you feel like... Um, what am I trying to say? Because I, I, I see what you're saying, right? And to an extent, I agree but it feels more frustrating in Unleash. And I think that's by virtue of the design. Whereas like the, the classic games are designed to be like, okay, this is clearly a wall. You're supposed to climb vertically now before you can keep going again. Here it's just like, ah, here's this ledge that you were supposed to jump over, but you didn't, so you're gonna trip. Okay, hit the boost button again. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. And maybe it's just me. I also don't like the final boss in the un the HD version. I don't love the one in Unleashed, but I, it's more tolerable. Um, Unleashed does uh, the HD version does has more content with Empire City and with Dragon Road. Um, so I do think that it's a better game overall. It has like other mini games that you can play with as well. It has a hub world. I think Unleashed HD is by far a better game, but I still don't love it as much as a lot of people do. I don't know. I do. Oh, yeah, and Missouri. You're right. Dragon Road was so laggy. but Okay, to be fair, I actually never played the original Xbox version. I played the the um, upscaled or like the, the revamped uh, Xbox Series X version of the game. So I had no frame rate issues, but I've seen them and they look awful. <laughs> they look bad. Uh, this is a neat one. This game is ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a pain in the ass to record. It's not that fun. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog for the Didge. Pretty trash. But, I honestly would probably rather play this than, like, a lot of these. I'm gonna put it... <sighs> it's more interesting than Sonic X on Leapster. Like, the history behind it, like, what it is is more interesting. I hesitate to say it's more fun. It's still bad. It's not that educational. 
I don't know what the difficulty scaling is in this game. Um, it's whereas you sort of learn numbers, learn numbers in Sonic X, you learn grammar, well, not grammar, but spelling in Sonic Dig. Um, uh, it's, I believe it's a reskin of another Dig game, actually. I think that's what I was told. It's interesting for what it is. It's that doesn't make it good. <laughs> you have an assortment of levels that are very strange. You have Emerald Hill, you have Hydro Hydro City Zone, you have oh god, I don't even remember. I don't even remember what's in this ga this game. But it was it was interesting to say the least. It was I I okay, I guess. No, there's no way it's worse than Sonic Jam for the GameCom. That is the worst Sonic game I've played. Is this the math game or is it the other? No, no, this is the math game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had Chris pop up everyone. That's that's in the Sonic X. Yeah. No, Sonic X on the Leapster is the... Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. That is the math game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The math... You're right, yes. Sonic X is the math game. Sonic Dig is the spelling game. I think I said that before. Um... Did I know that there is a mobile unleashed? I sure did. Yo, what's up, Dom? Seven months. Yo, what's up? Hope you're doing well, Dom. Uh, Sonic and the Black Knight is next. Okay, Sonic and the Black Knight. I loved this shit as a kid. In retrospect, I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> uh, I do think it's better than Secret Rings. It is the second of the storybook series duology. Um, set in medieval... Uh, or m Medieval times? <laughs> um... It puts Sonic into the Knights of the Round Table story, the King Arthur story. Um, visually, it's weird, right? I think that visually it's more interesting than, than Secret Rings was. But even as a kid, I thought it was very drab, very blah. Like, there's, there's very few levels that stand out to me. Um, and that I had to, like, get... I had to get, like, reacquainted with it when I played it for the marathon. I was like, wow, I don't remember this. There's a lot I remember about it. I love the music. I love the story. I love the overall narrative that it has. I love, like, the, the lesson that it teaches or, like, the, the, the sort of fable that it has compared to Secret Rings is so much better. Because with Secret Rings, there wasn't really, like, a moral, I guess. And you don't have to have a moral, right? But... And it kind of does. I, it, it, the, the moral was kind of just like, let things go, I guess. Or like, it's okay to cry. It's okay to, it's okay to show your emotions. Kind of. That's a very like, pick apart kind of narrative. Um, Secret Rings was sure a whole ass game. It sure was. It's okay to grieve. Yeah, I guess. But Black Knight was way more concise. It was so much more... And it, it, what I love about it is that, to me, it's one of the best Sonic narratives. It's definitely a game that shows Sonic's characterization the best. It shows that he is a hero who is willing to do the wrong thing if it... Or who, he's a hero who's willing to, to be a villain if it means doing what is right. Uh, and that's something that I think you guys sort of helped me notice as well. Because I, I didn't think it was that deep even growing up, and even when I played it for the marathon, I didn't think it was that deep, but the more I thought about it, it's just like, that's kind of true, you know, because the whole, if I have to be a villain in someone's story for the sake of doing the right thing, so be it, you know, and that's that, that's something that you don't get a lot in Sonic, and that's not betraying his character at all. It's He's a character who doesn't back down. He's a character who, like, will go against what is asked of him if it means prioritizing doing the right thing. And you see that in this game. Um, it's a game that shows why he's worthy. It's a game that shows why, what makes him such a good protagonist. And it's something... I, I, I said during the marathon, too, that we don't really get to explore Sonic's personality that often. Like, he's a very blank slate. He's a very, you know, average anime protag. But Black Knight really shows what that means for him as a character. And ultimately the story, and and this came at the perfect time for me personally, because I had just like entered middle school. And as weird as this might sound, I was already having existential crises. <laughs> I kept thinking about like my death, the death of my loved ones, 
uh, heat death of the universe. Like, what's going to happen after I'm go the world's just going to keep going on without me? What if there isn't an afterlife? What if there is an afterlife and I just live on forever? Holy shit, what is the meaning? Like, what is my purpose? There were so many things that at that age I was thinking. And then this game came out. And it didn't, it didn't solve my problems by any means, but it helped. It helped alleviate that, that like sense of dread that I had at the time a little bit because I still had it. I still have it sometimes, but the overall message is like, Hey, you know that that happens. Life begins, it ends and that's okay. The world as you know it today is going to be vastly different than the world from a hundred years from now. You know, your life will have an impact maybe, but it, it, ultimately it will be very different and there's that's okay there's that's why life is so precious that's why we have to live life and it's just like it's so good i love night of the wind this was like crush 40's return to sonic uh because it had been taken over by um tomoya otani starting from 06 he was the composer of the sonic series jun suno still did music here and there but it was mostly Otani doing music now. And this was like the game that like reintroduced Crush 40 and they had Night of the Wind. They had Fight the Night. They had Through the Fire. They had Live Life, which is my favorite Crush 40 song. It's not a great game. It is not a great game, but I love it. I still love the game despite that. Yes. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> oh, you're... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I'll feel a little weird, but it's okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I still love this game, though. I, yeah. I think I might keep it as the lowest C tier game. No, that's not fair. That seems fair. That seems fair. <clears throat> it's not that high. It's it's not... I, you can't compare Black Knight to Unleashed, I feel like. I feel like that's not fair. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I give it a lot of praise to put it in Z. That's the thing, is that, like, as a game, it's still not that great, though. Like, it, it has a lot of good things about it. It has a lot of good things in it. It's still not a great game. It's still not a great game. Shadow shouldn't be that high. Debatable. I would I would argue. Like, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm like, do I really want Shadow there? But at the same time, it's just like, yeah. I don't mind it as much as other people do. I don't think it's good, but I don't think it's, like, terrible. Oh, Sonic Job Unleashed. Sure was a game. Sure, sure was a game that I found and played. Oh. You start in Chenan, like it's, dude, and it's like for exclusive Sony Ericsson game. I don't even want to put it above the L the LCD games. Here, <laughs> that's where you belong, you grainy bastard. It's 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 not a great game. It's 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 a, it barely resembles Unleashed. There's a few worlds you can beat it, as far as I know. Um it controls terribly. Like, if it were on a handheld game like the DS or the Game Boy, maybe it would have been better, honestly, but it feels like Sonic Rush if Sonic Water Rush was bad. Yes. that I don't even need to say anything else. That's literally what this game is. It's like if Sonic Rush was bad. <laughs> oh, that's so true. Oh boy. Okay. Well, kind of home stretch. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games. Um, I think that the. F no, that's Sochi. Hold on. Where is this? Is it okay? So Olympic Winter Games. Uh, console version was just okay. I would maybe put it. You really don't need to explain it more than that, though. I would maybe put it. Uh, it's maybe better than the original Olympic Games. Sure. 
Um, it just has extra mini games that expand upon the original and has more characters. So that's pretty cool. The DS version, though, has a story, um, has a hub world that you can play through that to me makes it better. I just don't love your speed in the hub world. I think that there's a lot of repetitiveness to the game. You spend way too much time in the hub world with the speed that you're at. It makes no sense that Sonic can't talk. Like, why is he as mute as Mario is? Um, I feel like there could have been a lot more personality to it. I like what it tries to do. So I'm going to put it as like one of the better Olympic Games games, but it's dragged down by how repetitive it is to me. It's not bad. It's just... I, I wish it was faster. John John Leashed? No, Java Unleashed. Like Java. <laughs> Wii version is A or B. DS version is S. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. The Beijing Olympic Games is probably the best one. Ah. <laughs> it sure does. It really does. Uh, the newer Olympic Games spent too much on power-ups. Beijing felt more real. I mean, yeah, but I think that that was the novelty of, like, being on the Wii. Whereas, like, if you do the same thing over and over, you got to spice it up somehow. So it's like, eh. Uh, b -b -b -b. The Olympic Game games are not good. They're not bad. They're just very... They're party games. They're just... Oh, here's hockey. I couldn't find hockey earlier. Uh, you go... Hockey's cooler than fishing, I guess. <laughs> um, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. So this is like their first return to actual racing. Uh, it's okay. I like it. I would put it at a solid C tier. It's... Uh, wow, all the Sega All-Stars games are in C tier. But okay, but I like it more than tennis, though. I do like the Sonic Racing more than I like the tennis. Um... Where's Drift? Okay, they're in D. Good, 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 good. Um, <laughs> they're they're fun. It's definitely fun. Um, I would put that and Team Ra Team Sonic Racing almost one to one. Maybe Team Sonic Racing is a little better than base Sega All Stars. But the thing about Sega All Stars is that it's the return of a lot of uh, Sega characters, and that's what I like about the All Stars series. Is that like Sega actually gives a shit beyond their own franchise. But the thing is, like, this was... The All-Stars Racing series was, like, the beginning of them really focusing on just Sonic. And, and that's what makes me sad about it. I think it's fun. It's no Mario Kart, but it's still fun. I feel like I say that about all these uh, Superstars games. Is that, like, it's it's no insert Mario <laughs> comparison. Uh, but they're still okay. They're still fine games. Um, It has charm, but it's it's just okay. Uh, Sonic Classic Collection. So that's okay. I did. I accidentally did not put Sonic Classic Collection in the tier list, and I didn't play for the marathon because I was like, "It's just a collection of Sonic games. Like, why do I? Why do I need to talk about this?" But apparently, like, there are things about it that are distinct enough. Apparently, it doesn't run as well. They are built from the ground up for the DS, um, and I think that that earns it maybe an E, just because like. Okay. We need cheese, though. Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it it to, to me it seems ridiculous that we're at the DS, right? This is 2010, and we still cannot port Genesis games from like 15 years ago onto a console like this. I feel like if you took the ROM and put it just on the DS, it would run better than the Classic Collection does, which is kind of crazy. You know what I mean? Um, and I've heard that it's not great. I always wanted to play it just because I wanted to see how it was, but apparently it's like, it's mid, but it should have run better than it does. So I think it deserves maybe better than uh, Sonic Genesis. Maybe. Because that was pretty bad. And this one apparently is just kind of okay. Apparently that's just kind of okay. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, ha I don't have like an image to, to showcase it and add it. But yeah. Um, 
cool. Sonic 4 Episode 1. I don't get it. I don't get, and I said this during the marathon, I don't get why people hate this game. I, well, okay, no, I do. It's because it's called Sonic 4. But as a, as it stands, like, as a game by itself, it's really not that bad. <laughs> it's very standard. I... Yayaichi Mama. I would rather play it than the racing game. <laughs> um, it is no classic Sonic game, but what it is is okay. It's kind of fine. It's decent. Yeah, it doesn't live up to expectations. Like, if it was just... I think we said this during the marathon. Like, if, if they stuck to what it was originally, like Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket or whatever it was... It, no one would give a shit. No, everyone would be like, oh, okay, it's a game, you know? It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. <laughs> Sonic the Portable, that's what it was. That's what it was. Sonic the Portable. It's, it's, again, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have the physics that the original games have, but it's not bad, dude. Like, <laughs> people make it out to be way worse than it is. Oh, shit. I'm falling free in the wind, in the wind. Unfortunately, we do not have an F tier for Sonic Free Riders, but... Damn. Damn. Damn, son. I thought that was going to be the worst game. I thought Free Riders was going to be the worst game. Only eked out slightly. Only eked out very slightly. <laughs> it requires the Connect to play. It is the last Riders game, uh, meaning that you need to use motion, not even motion controls, but like your body to play it. And it is only responsive half the time. Um, it is not fun. It is not just because it's exhausting, but because like the controls just don't make sense half the time. Um, like, you guys saw me. I was struggling with the tutorial because of how, like, <laughs> it eked out. <laughs> um, you guys could see that I, I couldn't even do the tutorial properly because of how bad the, the, the motion detection is. It's... It, it was... Yeah, the menus are awful. The controls work when... Yeah, exactly. Um, the only thing it's got going for it is it's a decent workout. It'll beat your ass and you will you will maybe cry. You will definitely sweat. <laughs> Um, yeah, the cutscenes had no reason to, to be a PowerPoint presentation either. Like, what the heck was that about? Um, and don't get me started on the voice recognition. I know. Uh, it was the first game that had the, the current voice cast. So they were still trying to find, going back to it though, like, I realized how not bad it was. We just weren't used to it. We just weren't used to the new voice cast. Cause like everyone complained about it. I complained about it at the time. But it's just like going back. It's very standard. It's just standard voice acting. We're just used to it now. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I accidentally restarted. I sure do. <laughs> I sure do. But yeah, Free Riders is not good. I do not like that game at all. A game I do like, though, is Sonic Colors. And I'm including Ultimate in this because to me, they're virtually the same. I know that Ultimate has its issues, but to me, they're virtually the same game. Um... I really enjoy this game. I, I remember as a kid, I wanted a game that was just the daytime stages from Unleashed. Uh, and I got that with Colors. It's not as good as I remember it being. Um, but I still enjoy it a fair bit. Uh, you know, nah, that's not fair. I'm not going to put it there. I'm going to put... I don't think I like Battle as much. Um, but I don't know if I like these games more, though. I'll put Colors here. I'll put Unleashed here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess. Um, I like the... A lot of people don't like the Wisps. I like the Wisps. I think that they add something to the gameplay. They're very situational, unfortunately. I do agree with that. But overall... They're a cool little addition to Sonic's world. I like the sense of speed. I love the music. I like uh, what they do with the concept of these planets that you go to. Uh, 
The environments are, are well designed. Don't love the bosses. They kind of suck. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Story is not great. It's very basic. But at the same time, I don't hate the story. I just hate the comedy in it. Like, I, I don't like that they tried to make it funnier because it really just falls flat on its face. It A lot of the dialogue in the game just feels like filler. But at the end of the day, the story is very, you know, um, basic. Sonic and Tails go and save animal critters just like in the good old days. It's basic. That's, that's basically it. <laughs> uh, however, we also have Colors DS. And oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, am I going to do it? Oh, am I going to do it? Oh, I did. I did do it. I did it. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm tempted. I am tempted to put this in S. I am tempted to put this in S. Because. <sighs> it's tough. It's tough. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Good enough for what it needs to be. It, 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 I think... I, I never played it growing up. But in, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I care a little bit. No, but uh, I didn't play Colors DS growing up. I only played it until somewhat recently. Uh, I think I played it for the first time for the video, for the Everything Wrong With I did. And I was shocked at how different the games are because it's a lot like Sonic Rush which is great, but it's just Sonic this time, but everyone appears. Okay. <laughs> I'm having a salad, don't worry. Oh, yeah? <laughs> okay. Give me a second, everybody. It's been a while since I've had one of these. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that looks good. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like the apple juice. Uh, I saw that, but nah, I don't need all that sugar. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> that is fair. Oh, actually, I don't, uh, I don't know. You have officially given me one singular thing. God damn it, Phoenix. You fiend. Is Sarah heard? Can, can you guys hear Sarah or no? Probably not at that volume. But, uh, <laughs> it would be kind of cool. Here you go. Thank you. Yeah, she is. Weird. Kind of. They say it kind of. A little bit. Angus. Yeah. Colors DS doesn't look as good. Okay. I mean, yeah, because it's on the DS, but that doesn't... <laughs> if if graphics meant, like, better game, <laughs> then why the hell would I put Adventure 2 Battle <laughs> at A rank? Uh, or A tier, I mean. Um, and it's, it's funny that like most of these, most of the ones in A tier are like mobile games or like handheld games. I mean, Unleashed Esther. Yeah. If, if we were going purely by like visuals, Unleashed HD would be the best game in the world. <laughs> or I'm sorry, Generations would, I, I, I personally like how Gens looks a little bit more than Unleashed. I know that technically Unleashed does have a better graphics engine and better lighting engine, but I, we'll get to it in, in a second, but yeah, no. So you have like. Exclusive wisp power-ups in this game. You have missions. You have, like, the same levels that you go to, but, like, the remixes are so good. Um, it's all 2D, which, I mean, doesn't doesn't inherently make it better than the other games. Um, it's got a proper supersonic boss fight at the end. It's got, like, the return of uh, friendly characters who are written pretty damn well. Like, I would have loved it if the, if the console version of Colors had moments like that. You know what I mean? Um... But if the only colors we got was DS, it would have been 
it would have been that bad. I disagree. I still like it. Like, because I don't, I don't think of colors in the context of the console version of colors. I think of colors as just its own thing. Right. I mean, yeah, there are times where I do compare the two and I'm just like, oh, this, do it does this better than the console version. But like, even as a standalone, it's like, it's my favorite rush game. It's, it's my absolute favorite rush game compared to the other two. Um, I think it's, it does have very difficult moments in it for sure. But overall, I, I just like the writing in it and I like the challenge and I like, it's just fun. I just really, really like Colors Dia. It, yeah, it felt more alive to me too. Yeah, exactly. To me, the Wisps were very like secondary. They definitely felt more like power-ups, which could be a point for or against it, depending on how you want to see it. But overall, I don't know. I just, I really like Colors DS. I guess I didn't, I never really thought about how much I like Colors DS. Uh, next up we have, ah, my favorite mobile game. Sonic Cricket. <laughs> this was made by an Indian company because they love cricket. But I don't get it. Oh, <laughs> uh, here. <laughs> Dude, like, the, the controls make no... Like, even if I understood cricket, right? The controls make no sense to me. Like, it, the, the characters barely look like the characters. It's got the gazoids in it, so that's pretty cool. Um, but other than that, it's just like, I don't understand this game, dude, at all. Like, I, it just didn't, it didn't. As basically one, as the basically one Sonic game I really played, I agree with your placement. Good. <laughs> you still don't get how critical, I mean, that's the thing. Like, it doesn't really teach you anything. The scoring made no sense to me. Like, even when I was, like, winning, I was like, I don't understand. I don't understand what I'm doing or why or what. Like, it just, it makes no sense to me. <laughs> but I believe that's the one of the last mobile games. Oh, dude. Gens. Generations. I love telling the story. When I was a kid, I did, like I said, I didn't have... A next gen console, which was uh, that was it. Like generate aside from the 3DS version, because I didn't have the 3DS version of Generations. Um, it was on PC and it was on next gen consoles at the time. Uh, Ervin the Fennec Fox, thank you so much. Two months, two whole months. Sega Sonic and a D rank, but that game is so much fun when you're playing with three people at a time. So it's not hard to configure the controls. You know what, Ervin? I had not considered that. I don't know what playing this game in multiplayer is like. That, that, that would be interesting to play, actually. <laughs> that would be very interesting. I have no idea what Sega Sonic would be with three players. Huh. Huh. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying? <laughs> Ultra Levi, member for four months. Thank you so much. Since you finished Sonic Marathon, we enjoy since part one. I joined since part ten. Sonic Adventure, my first Sonic game you owned was Sonic Unleashed 360. Wow. Incredible. Thank you for being here for so long. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, I didn't have an Xbox or a PlayStation 3. Uh, I didn't have a powerful PC. I had a shitty laptop. Um, and so I didn't really have a way to play Generations, but I, kn I wanted to play it so badly because I remember seeing Classic Sonic there. It was super exciting. And I was like, dude, I need to play this game. I need to play this game. I had a friend, um, who was more tech savvy than I was. And he helped me put a pirated version of Sonic Generations on my shitty laptop. I've since bought the game. Don't worry. I have si I, I own the, the Steam and the Xbox version of it. But my computer could not handle this game. My computer could not handle this game. It played at, I shit you not, like five frames a second. But for some reason, the audio played just fine. And it is so far like the only game that has ever given me motion sickness because the, the, the audio was correct, but the, but the visuals were so slow. The visuals were very, very slow. And I promise you, I swear to God, I still loved the game. It was, I still, like I was playing it in its shitty ass version. And I was like, I love this. 
but you can change graphics. Oh, dude, it didn't matter. My computer was at, it was the bottom, bottom of the barrel, <laughs> bottom of the barrel, like specs. That's how bad it was. But I still had a blast playing it. I was still having such a good time. I was like, I love this game. It looks so nice. And these remixes and like seeing him in 3D in these familiar stages that I grew up playing. It like a lot of it, yes, was the nostalgia factor, but he controls so well. Like Classic Sonic wasn't a one-to-one -one recreation of the Genesis physics, but it was so appreciated that they tried. You know, like in the engine, they tried to make it as close to the original as possible and like seeing newer stages in the classic sonic style like seeing city escape for classic sonic was oh dude it was insane to me i my man dude on it you're not you're joking but i think i did have windows vista i think i i was playing it on windows vista you're joking but i think it was windows vista and Dude, I love Gens. For the longest time, it was my favorite. And it feels like a cop-out, right? Because it's just like, it's recycling old games, but like the remixes and what they do with the challenge mode and like the bosses, dude. It was my favorite Sonic game, my, my favorite 3D Sonic game for the longest time. It was, it was so good. And it is still so good. Like I, I love going back to play it and to 100% it and just like blast through the game. I love this game, dude. It is so good. It is it is a great game, dude. <laughs> he was talking to me even back then. True. Uh Generations 3DS. Um I did not grow up with this game. I only purchased it like, I don't know, maybe 10-ish. No, not even, because that's when it came out. I purchased this maybe in like 2018 something, but that was by the time I was already doing YouTube. So I couldn't really play it to its completion. I didn't have a capture card back then. So I didn't really have a reason to play it. Uh, I think I played it for the first time to its com fully for the marathon and I enjoyed it. Um, You know what? I think I will put this at an A rank. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's a shame that they only had like six months. Of, it's a shame they only had six months to develop it. But I'm still impressed what with what they did in those six months. It is impressive the game that we got in that time frame, because it still feel like it's short, right? It's short, but it still feels like a complete product, right? Gen's 3DS over Unleashed. Shit. You're right. <laughs> that is a fair criticism. You're right. Hold on. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Hero Squad with the two, thank you so much. No idea. Minus World reacting to Food Fight. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh boy. I don't know if the guys would be up for that or not. <laughs> um It's It's unfortunate that we didn't get as many stages as we did in the console version. It's a shame that we didn't get more um handheld. Uh, that's what I would have loved to see. A, a 3DS gens that had more mobile or handheld uh, that that brought more levels from Sonic's handheld history because there's so much of it, dude. There's one, two, chaos, triple trouble. There is, um, I mean, obviously you can't do much with the drift games, but like a labyrinth reference or something, you know, like there, there, you have history there that you opted not to use. And it's a shame because like you could have, right? You, you, there was a rush level and a Colors DS level, but not a Rush Adventure level. That would have been cool. Um, I don't know, dude. Like, something... The advanced games. You have the advanced games, but you didn't do anything with it. And it and it's unfortunate, because it's like... You could have. <laughs> you could have, and you didn't. And, like, why, though? <laughs> yeah, you race Silver and Tropical Resort. Like, what? Um, 
It, yeah, it's it's still a solid game. And like some of the choices don't make sense. Radical Highway, uh, the Bio Lizard, like those are weird. Uh, you fight the Egg Emperor, which is kind of cool. Kind of strange though, like as a choice goes as like, ah, yes, the iconic Egg Emperor, I guess. <laughs> um, the final boss is better than the one in console gens. Uh, but it's it's very lacking in content, which kind of sucks. Because, like, the the console version or the HD version was, like, rife with content. It could have had more, sure, but, like, Gens is very... La the 3DS version is very lacking in terms of content, which is a shame. But I, it's still fun. Like, don't get me wrong, it's still fun. I think I still think it's B-tier worthy. I still think it, it's worthy of being in a higher spot. Um... Let me see what else. Okay, what's next after Jens? Okay, uh, London 2012 Olympics. Um, console version is okay. I don't think I'd put it nearly as high as the other ones, though. Uh, honestly, maybe even a... Is that is that fair? <laughs> You're just bored when you play Jens 3DS? That's fair. That's fair. It's not a super engaging game. There's not a whole lot to it, but... I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> um, do you guys think this is fair? There's not a whole lot to it. <laughs> Wii version B or C? Really? I don't know, dude. The 3DS one C or D? I was planning on putting the 3DS version higher because it has a story mode. It had amazing dream events. Yeah, but it's not... I don't know. It, do you guys think it's better than the Olympic... Uh, it's it's hard for me to have an opinion on the Olympic games games because it's like a lot of them end up blending into me because like it's four hundred meter hurdles again, cool I guess. But now we're in London, you know. But London party, yeah, yeah, that's true. I guess it's also kind of fatigue at this point though, because it's just like ah, it's the third Mario and Sonic game. And it, it's still a party game. We still don't have a platformer, so that's pretty cool, I guess. 3DS Story was slow and boring. I like how straightforward it was, though. Like, compared to the, um... Compared to Vancouver, because, like, Vancouver was... It had a hub world, which was cool, but I kind of like the straightforwardness of the London plot, you know? The Wii 2012 is definitely the best one. It all goes downhill from there. I kind of liked Sochi. Sochi was all right. Okay, I'll put it over the original. I guess you're right. It had equestrian racing. Uh, I'll put it over Winter Olympics, though. And the 3DS version, I will put above the console version because I actually kind of liked it more if I'm being TBH. If I'm being to be honest. <laughs> um, just slightly, I guess. Mario, Lost Roll was the Mario and Sonic platformer all along. True, true. Okay. Uh, Sonic 4 Episode 2. I like it more than the first one. Um... It has more of an identity than the first one had. The first one felt very recycled from, like, old levels. Um, and not that 4 doesn't, but, like, it at least feels a little bit more unique here and there. Like, it's still supposed to be a, a Sonic 2 clone, but it feels fresher than the first episode did. Um, it has its fair amount of bullshit, I still think it's better, though, ultimately. I think that having the combined moves with Tails does add something to it. It's more than Sonic 2 had, if I'm being honest. It's just that it's like the gameplay itself and the design is not as fun. But it's, I don't know, it's okay. It is okay. Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed! Yay! This one is probably the best racing game in the Sonic series. Uh, car-wise, anyway. Uh, you know what? You know what? Maybe. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Like, despite the fact that I could 
that was when my computer was dying because <laughs> of the memory leaks it has on Steam. It's like the best car racing game. Uh, Sonic 06 at low D tier should be C for ambition. Dude. I have the ambition to be the best swimmer in the world. And if I don't... It doesn't matter that Michael Phelps can beat me in a race. I should still get credit for wanting to be the best swimmer. I should still get credit for, like, trying to be the best swimmer. It doesn't matter that, you know, Michael Phelps has years of experience under his belt and is better, objectively better at swimming than me. It doesn't matter because I have ambition. That means that I get extra points. No. <laughs> It doesn't matter that it's an, it's an ambitious game. It if if you try to do three backflips in a row and eat shit on the third flip, you don't get credit for doing three flips. You still eat shit. <laughs> People are gonna remember that you fell flat on your ass. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Lower than Heroes and Riders? Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> it's, not, it's Sonic in a car. Who cares? <laughs> it's fun, but I don't know. I, I enjoy Riders more. I do enjoy Riders more. Also, Heroes is fun. Leave me alone. <laughs> Sonic Dash. Oh, shit. Which one is Dash again? Oh, this one. What the fuck is this? Why do I have this photo? What is this one? Why do I have this photo? I don't even remember what this is. Um, Sonic Dash. It's okay. It's like one of the better mobile games, I guess. But it's just like if you're like really, really bored. Uh, I don't know, dude. Because it's not a bad game. It's just not great, I guess. All you do is run and then like jump every so often and then like spin dash sometimes. It's just okay. It is just okay. You're always gonna be called a shit eater from now. Exactly. Okay. Uh, here's another hot take. I like Lost World. I think Lost World is fine. I used to be on the fence about it. I was like, man, Lost World is like when you're trying to win an argument that you know you can't like that you have no ammunition for, right? When it's like someone tells you a hard truth that you don't want to accept, and you're just like, no, but, but like... <sighs> to me, that's what Lost World was, because it was like... I think it's... A... I didn't like it as a game because it felt weird. Like, you didn't need a run button for a Sonic game and we had the boost. Why would you need a run button? Why doesn't Sonic just run normally? Why is this, like, th the music is good, but, like, the the environment design is very simple compared to, like, the gorgeous game that was Generations. Why are we dumbing it down? You know, like, there gameplay-wise, it was perfectly fine. And I think that that's what bothered me about it, is that, like, Put it in the lost tier. Here you go. You're the top of lost tier. <laughs> no, um... There was so much about it that... I wanted to not like because it felt weird. But at the same time, I knew that mechanically there was nothing wrong with it. I was like... But... I can't shit on it because it works perfectly fine. It's just, like, not as fun as the other games. And so, like, it was the one that was most conflicting for me. Now that I've had it sit and I look at it by itself, I don't compare it to gens, I don't compare it to, like, anything that came before it, I look at it just as its own game, I'm like, you know what? This is pretty okay. This is a pretty good Sonic... Like, this is not, not even a Sonic game. This, and I think that, that Some Call Me Johnny said it best. It's not a bad game. It's just not a very good Sonic game. And I, I'm inclined to agree with that. Um, I would... I should do it. Fucking... 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 <laughs> I I like it. I th I think it's an okay game. I'm tempted to honestly put this underneath. You know what? I will. <laughs> I will. Did being a Sonic game hurt it? 
Kind of, because I think that you you have an expectation of what a Sonic game could be. And so the fact that it's it doesn't conform to what you think a Sonic game should be makes it feel weird. But at the at its core, it is a perfectly functional and honestly fun game. Like if it was anything but a Sonic game, I think it would have performed it would either it either would have fallen to the wayside or would have performed a lot better. But the thing is that like you have to think about it in the sense of its own bubble right like what is it by itself don't compare sometimes it it merits comparing to other things but by itself what is it right is it good on its own yeah okay then it's good on its own right just because it's not as good as other things that doesn't make it bad i guess um m maybe <laughs> i still have a, a few to go and i am getting hungry <laughs> lost world 3ds though Ugh. It's impressive for what it is. It's impressive for, for a 3DS game, but it also feels like it should have been... It has a lot of flaws, dude. It has a lot of flaws. Ah! Uh... Damn it. Ah! That hurt to do. <laughs> Lamb Scrawny for the 20. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. There's a Sonic DS game called Sonic Classic Collection. It's Sonic 1, 2, 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Knuckles and Sonic 2, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles. No one really talks about it, but you liked it. I talked about it earlier. I thought I'd put it like somewhere down the middle. Um, I forgot to like add a cover art for it because I didn't really play it for the marathon that I did. And I haven't really played it for myself because I always figured they were just ports. So it's like to me, it really didn't make sense to play it. But I do understand that like they're kind of built from the ground up and that they're like kind of inferior ports. So it's like you can either, you can take it or leave it, I guess. It it might be very mid. The special seasons are pretty cool. No, they're not. They're awful. <laughs> they're so bad. On stream I I said I almost like them equally. Lost World 3DS and, and Wii U? No, dude. I mean, like, in terms of level design and stuff. It's okay, but it's just that the levels are a little too long. Uh, the special stages are awful. Um, I like the level design and stuff, but it's just... Uh, it controls well. Like, there's a lot I, I like about... That's why it pains me to, like, not put it in D, because I'm just like, ah, I kind of want to dislike this game more than I do. But at the same time, I also don't like the game that much. <laughs> I said both are a seven to me. Really? I guess maybe I, now that I've had time to like play it again and like have it sit. I don't know. It's not one that I that I um, am excited to go back to. Let's say that. Whereas like with console uh, Lost World, I'm like, yeah, you know what? Why not? Why not? Um, but with 3DS Lost World, I'm just like, oh God, 3DS Lost World. I have to deal with, like, the parts of it that I don't like. You know, the length. The stages are okay. The controls could be a little better, maybe. Some level gimmicks kind of suck compared to the console version. Um, I don't know. It's not... I mean, I guess there are all these games in between, but it's like it's not super, super, super far, far off. Worst Imps game? <sighs> Dude, I'm looking at Advance 2, and... I, No. <laughs> uh, and I feel like I'm going to keep moving if it's too, like, lower and lower. I can't put it beyond Sonic 4, though. I feel like that's just... That's mean. Shaden with the five, thank you so much. For you, it's like 3D versus 2D Sonic. You're up with 3D, so the 2D games feel eh. You know what? That's fair. That's fair. Move CD up? Fuck no, I'm not moving CD up. It's perfect where it is. I I, I think it's too high, as a matter of fact. Thank you, dear. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, now eat. <laughs> thank you. Hello, Dar. Hi, baby. Go with mommy. Go. 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 Go with mommy. Advanced droopy dropping. 
Um, the only one you think is too high is 06. I don't know, dude. I just think I just don't think that I could put 06 any. It's not in the same caliber as these. I feel like these are just bottom of the barrel. Like, oh yeah, this is a Sonic game too. I guess <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, man, Lost World 3DS is tough. It's definitely tough. Ah, shit. I, I mean, because I think it's a better game than the Rivals games, though. And I think it's better than the tennis games. Yeah, okay. That's subject to change, but I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, Sochi, dude, they're blending in so much. I think that I thought this was cool, I think. <laughs> I think I thought it was, like, all right, I guess. Um, I, dude, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it had, it had, okay, it had okay stuff in it, like, question mark. Are the Christian Whitehead ports of Sonic 1, 2, and CD on there? Uh, yes, but they're part of Origins. Sochi was the most fun you had on console. I think you're right. <sighs> That's the thing, though, is that, like, dude, I don't... It ha... And it's funny, because, like, Nathan hates this game. But it's just, I thought it was kind of okay. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I had fun with the dream events, I will say. I, I had... Because I think that's the only thing I played, right? Was the dream events? I thought they were okay, from what I remember. I think. So which game had sticks randomly in it? Uh, Rio. That was Rio. Fuck Rio. <laughs> not the not the city. The game. Uh, Sonic Jump Fever. Um, this one. Honestly, I like it better than Sonic Dash. I'll just put it above Sonic Dash. Uh, Shadow Shoot is pretty funny though. I don't want to put it over Shadow Shoot. <laughs> um. Much like Sonic Jump, you just go, it's a mobile game, you jump, you use your, gy you actually use your gyroscope for it, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but it's very repetitive. That's that that's its biggest fault, is how repetitive it is. Lamb Scrawny with the five, the first video you saw from me was my old video about the Angelica theory from Rugrats. That is an obscure fucking video, my guy. That was during Creepy Month. That was like the first Creepy Month I ever did. Wow, that is a weird one. <laughs> Fuck Rio. Also, can I have a Brazilian copy of Sonic Blast? <laughs> uh, Rise of Lyric. Oh, God damn it. This is a tough one, too. I mean, this game is ass. There's no denying that this game is bad. Uh... Wow, am I actually going to do this? No. Oh, I <laughs> it's interesting. I I th I wish it were a better game. I wish I liked it more. I wish the mechanics were better. I wish the story was more interesting. I wish it made more sense. I like the interactions between the characters. They seem more like friends. Uh, I like the world building they tried to set up, but it, it just masterfully fails to do. Uh, I don't remember the music at all. It's a glitchy fucking mess. It, 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 But at the same time, I feel bad for Big Red Button because it's not their fault. They, they, they deserved to have and to have produced a better game than what we got. The boom game should be there on two. That's not fair. I like Fire and Ice. I think Fire and Ice is pretty okay. Your first video was the Korea Boss about the haunted room? What? Really? Dude, I love that one. I, that was like one of my favorite videos that I'd ever made at the time. Because it was like one of the first times that me and my friends were like able to have sort of matching audio. And like it felt almost like we were there. I don't know. It felt cool. It's so boring. I mean, yeah, but Chris Sen, who worked on Sonic Extreme, did the level design for this game. Chris Sen is not... From what I've seen, he... And I could be wrong about this. I don't want to like claim anything, but... My understanding is that Chris Sen is a little full of himself when it comes to being a designer. Like, I know he wanted to work really hard, especially during Extreme. I feel like a lot of the problems with Extreme came from his hubris. Um, that's a story for another time, though. That's completely separate from this. <clears throat> um, 
But yeah, it's not big. It's not big red button's fault. It's I blame Sega for this one, which really sucks, dude. I really wish Rise of Lyric was a better game than it is. It deserved to be a better game because it, it had such a cool concept. I don't love the designs, but I think it deserved better. It, it deserved to be something better than what it ended up being, um, which is a shame. It, it could have and should have been something better because I love uh, the work that Big Red Button employees have done. And I was excited for it when I heard that it was going to be like a kind of ratchet and clanky Jack and Daxter kind of Sonic. And I was like, dude, I'm for that. That sounds awesome. Uh, next we have Shattered Crystal. I, this game infuriates me. This game infuriates the shit out of me. It is so backtracky and such bullshit and so grindy. Well, not, not even grindy, but it's just like, does, I hate its design, dude. It, it. I can't believe I'm about to do this. I genuinely can't believe I'm about to do this. It's it's functionally better than Rise of Lyric is. God, I think... I, I even feel like that's too high. Gigi Smalls with a five. Thank you so much. Now it makes sense that Styx is mentioned in Frontiers if she is in Rio Olympics. Does it? <laughs> well, he never mentions Mario. <laughs> you just wanted to say the Lost World's underrated? I agree, Dan, gaming fan. Thank you for the three. I appreciate that. Over Rise of Lyric still? Dude, but Rise of Lyric is so unfinished. Like, even when they patched it, it's still so unfinished and so boring. It's, it, like, I don't know, man. I feel like... I like what they were going for in terms of its design. What infuriates me the most is how repetitive it is and, and like, how unhelpful the map is and how, like... My biggest issue with it is it's design flaws, right? Because functionally, it's a fun game. I, I enjoy it. I think it's a, it's an okay game. But its designs, or, or it, its overall design, when it comes to how it utilizes their movesets to navigate through the game, tears it apart completely. It's it's fully functional. Its writing is pretty decent. It's, it's pretty decent, too. Um, I like some of the you know, behind the shoulder, not behind the shoulder, but like behind Sonic speed levels underground with the worm. Those are pretty cool. Uh, they all have pretty interesting abilities that you can like switch to at any time, but it's it's held back by requiring the crystals and not having a good map system and not having a good progression system because you could like get to a room and then you're just fucked. You can't go back. Um, if you miss a crystal, boo-hoo, do this level again, bitch. Like it, it's, it sucks. Anyway, <laughs> I wish I I wish it was a better game. I wish it was a better game. Sonic Runners was unable to play the original game, but I did play Sonic Runners Revival, um, and I like it. I think it's one of the better, if not the best, mobile game. Um, where are the other mobile games? <laughs> uh, yeah. Honestly, I'd rather play it than these. Yeah, overshadow shoot, really? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I really liked Sonic Runners. And it not and not, it's not just because of the bias because of how cool the developers were, but like, like over as an endless runner, I like it more than than Sonic Dash. I genuinely do. I think it 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 serves a better function as like a 2D runner than a 3D runner. It's it it feels more fun to play. But C, I don't know, man. I don't think I should put it at, above anything more than a C. <laughs> um, I would even... I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to leave where it is for now. <laughs> Sonic Dash 2, Sonic Boom. It's It's got, like, cooler bells and whistles than the first Sonic Dash has. Uh, But at its core, it's still the same. I don't love these games. I think that they're okay. I think that they're fun if you're bored at, like, the dentist's office, or if you're on the toilet and have nothing, and you don't have your Switch with you, but you have this on your phone, you're just like, alright, I'll play a little bit of Sonic Dash. Why not? 
<clears throat> You're curious what that mystery game is? What the mystery game is? What mystery game? Oh, this one? I feel like this is the train one. What the fuck is this other one then? Did I miss one? Time train. Oh, wait, that is the train one. Then what the fuck is this? I'm so confused. Why did I forget one? That's not casino poker. What is this other one that I have? Why do I have this other one? <laughs> it's gotta be a lost game because I don't remember this. Time train, casino poker. It's none of those. Reversi hyper cart. No. Is it? It's not gammon. Is, is it panel puzzle? No. Hearts? No. Hopping two? No. It's not any of those. Eggman's number guess panic. That's the one I missed. My bad. My bad. What's no, what's Eggman's? Uh, Eggman no kazuate paniku. Uh, Eggman's number guess panic. In this game, the player works together with tails, and they must defuse bombs that have been laid by Doctor Eggman based on the hints that the fox gives out. The game is over if the if the time runs out and the bomb explodes. What does this look like? This looks like ass. Okay, this looks boring as shit. This looks like it's just random the game. Um, You know what? There is a game worse than speed. <laughs> wow. How dare you, Miss One? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we've sorted that out. Thank God, finally. Uh, where were we? Sonic Jump Fever? I already did that one. Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Uh, I don't know about the console version. I didn't really play it, but seems average. I've seen some gameplay of this. It seems okay. Sure. <laughs> And then with Rio, dude, this game is hard. This game is like in fear. Honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm. <sighs> Here, um, is it is it better though? Is the DS 3DS version better than the console one though? Rio and Tokyo can't be bothered to extend their character roster. I don't feel like they need to though. Yo, what's up, Hydrogen fan? What's up? I hope you're having a nice day too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you heard console is better? I don't know, dude. Maybe. They have six. Their character roster is per... You know what? You're right. I think that the the 3DS version had, like, better something. Actually, wasn't Rio the one with Nega... With, like, the one where we fought Javon a whole bunch? Or which one was that? I can't remember. I think it was, wasn't it? Doesn't that is isn't that the one that has like the tower that you have to like climb? Oh, that's Sochi. Never mind. <clears throat> what is an S tier? Only the best of the best, as per me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'll leave them where they are. I don't care. <laughs> Sonic Boom, Fire, and Ice. Okay, I actually like this game. I think that it, it, I have issues with it. But it is the apex of what the Sonic... It is the best Sonic Boom game, and that's sad. That That is sad to say. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> it, it was everything I wanted from Shattered Crystal, where it's just like, okay, you use all your friends... Um, but really, all you're doing is, like, getting to the end. Yeah, you're still collecting things here and there, right? But ultimately, it is more straightforward. And I just, I like the humor in it. I think that's pretty good. The models are a little cursed, but, you know, they, they were doing what they could. And, and I think that they did something that was pretty okay. I like the flow of it with the fire and ice mechanics. Um... I like being able to switch characters on the fly. Like, a lot of it was really nice. A lot of it was really, really nice. But yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised. What was that, C? Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Okay. Dude, home stretch. Lego Dimension Sonic the... Oh, the Lego pack. 
Um, wow. Okay, I actually really liked it. Gameplay wise, I'm not a huge Lego dude, so I wasn't. I I don't play Lego games that much, so it's it's hard for me to like cross those wires, right? They're like the very puzzle platformy kind of slow Lego game mixed with the the fast pace of a Sonic game. I liked it though. Like I I love the humor in it. I love the references. I love There's a lot to like about this game. Um I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I will say that it has my favorite shadow line in the entire series though. It all starts with this. An arrangement containing the ultimate flowers. Revenge is not what Maria would have wanted. <laughs> you put that in low B tier? I'm debating it. Because it's like, it, it's made by its comedy and its references. But in terms of a game itself, it's, it's not even bad as a game itself, though. This, this is the last Traveler's Tale game. Is this the best Traveler's Tales game? Shut up. Do I think this is the best Traveler's Tales game? No, because there's Saturn. There's there's Sonic 3D Blast. <laughs> Do I think it's better than 3D Blast, though? I don't know. Ah! Ah! Do I think it's better than Lost World, though? Maybe. I might think it's better than Lost World. Remember the Knuckles rap? Ah, oh, you're right. Fuck, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going insane. Okay. Uh okay. Let's go before I change my mind. Uh Runner's Adventure. I didn't like <sighs> I don't think I liked it as much as the original Runners, but it's got stuff going for it. I will put it like slightly after the original uh, the original Runners. It's fun, but it's not as fun as the original. It's more straightforward, though. It's got a story. But I think that the original is nicer looking. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I thought you loved it as much as Transformed. Mm, I thought I did, too. But I think I like Transformed a lot more, though. I think I... You want to know? What do you want to know? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Which games are we talking about again? Uh, compared to what? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Runner's Adventure made me so sad. I'm sorry, dude. Uh, Sonic Mania. Bro? Okay. Could it be? Dude, I am now realizing how big of a of a 2D shill I am. There is one game that that is 3D in this tier, and it's got a 2D character in it. <laughs> Mania is better than... Okay, but here's the thing, though. Mania, to me, is the best classic-style game. But I often have to look at myself in the mirror and think, okay, but like how much of that is because it's a good game versus how much of that is nostalgia versus how much of that is because a lot of them are just returning levels from your childhood, which is nostalgia, but also how much is because like of what they remix from the stuff that is nostalgia based, you know, like I think that it takes everything from those original games and expands upon it. It, it, it is a mania, you know, it, it is like, a, a beautiful celebration, much like Generations, it's a beautiful celebration of, like, everything that is great about Sonic the Hedgehog, classic-wise. It has so many references, it, it transforms the classic stuff, not so much in Act 1, but in Act 2. Um, and you, to me, you gotta give it props for that. Are we America's if so? Well, thank you. <laughs> um... I love its original stuff. I don't like uh, Mirage Saloon as much as maybe other people do, but Press Garden I love. I love Studiopolis. 
Uh, I don't love Titanic Monarch as much, but I still, like, I don't hate them, you know? Like, I just don't love them as much. There are certain decisions that I don't agree with, like Flying Battery Zone being a level. It kind of makes sense as a, like, in-the-sky level. Um, a lot of the returning choices I agree with. I love what they do with Blue Sphere. I love what they do with Challenge Mode. I lo like, they're so... Ah, it's good. It's good. It's so good. I like this game. I love this game. It's so good. Forces! We can show the world what we can do. You are next to me and I'm next to you. Push me on through until the battle's won. No one's gonna give a thing to us. And to each other we... Hello. <laughs> no. I'm losing it. <laughs> done? Almost. I'm so close. I'm so close. Hi. Sure a few more games. Handful. Handful games. Look at all those bees. <laughs> Sonic Forces is Hi Greg It's Sarah Hey Hi <laughs> Hey It's Sarah Um Sonic Forces It is one of the most boring Sonic games I've ever played and it's so sad because they they hyped this game up and they made it seem like it was going to be Sonic's biggest adventure yet at the time. Um, and this was a game that I played for the very first time on stream. And I remember I've, I've told the story before, but I just I love because I think it really details my immeasurable disappointment with the game. I thought it was going to be a Frontiers kind of game where it's like it took you maybe a couple days to beat. I beat it in like four hours and I'm just like. Dude. What? Like, wh why? Why is it over already? Like, why isn't this game good? Like, you have a boost formula. You have classic Sonic. You have... The Avatar is my favorite part of it, but, like, they changed the physics of the characters. The level design is not good. There, there's so much about this game that is just not... good. <laughs> And it's boring. And the music is hit or miss. I like the music a lot. I know a lot of people don't. And that's fine. I get why you don't like the music. The bosses are boring. The story tries to be a fan fiction. Like, it's, it's a fan fiction that doesn't commit to being a fan fiction. Which sucks. Because it could have been so fun and so dark and very, very good. <laughs> and it's not. And it's not. And I... It makes me sad. <laughs> but you know what? At the same time, it's a competently made game. I can't say it's worse than 06. You know, 06 is ambitious, but it is objectively a worse game. It's just one of those games that's like, man, I feel nothing when I play you. I I, I wish I was having fun, and I'm not. <laughs> so many returning stages from Mania because it ties into Mania. And Mania is so good, but then Forces just isn't. And it should have been. <laughs> <sighs> I wish, yeah, I wish it was better than Generations 2 because Generations is just, like, recycling so much. But at, 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 the, at the same point, at the same point, at the same time, that's the point. It's supposed to be a celebration of all these games. Forces is, shouldn't be that. Forces shouldn't be that thing, you know? <laughs> that theory that went around that Infinite being a past friend of Buddy had before. I would have been great. I would have loved that. I would have loved it. But no, we got this. And it's mediocre at best, boring at worst. I feel nothing when I play this game, and it makes me sad. <laughs> but yeah, enough about Forces, because I've talked about that game a whole bunch. Uh, Speed Battle. I was also very disappointed in this. I thought it was going to be way cooler than it was. It's, it's just not... I mean, I'm sure if I put more time into it, then maybe it's good. Maybe it's good with friends? I don't I don't know. I, it's cool that, like, there are a lot of renders of characters and stuff. I think that's pretty neat. It's, it's a Sonic gotcha, and it's, like, just... Meh. <laughs> It's 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 another Sonic Dash game, and it's like, nah. It's very nah. I don't know where to put it. 
Ah, it's fine where it is, I guess. Mania Plus. I was surprised. I thought that the only thing it added was Mighty and Ray, and oh, how wrong I was. I mean, it kind of does, but... It adds a new... a whole new mode. <laughs> like, it, it adds a whole new way to play. It has a... Our encore mode is great. <laughs> it, it, like... Maybe it's not S, but that's the thing is that like, if it includes Mania, should it not be S? You know what I mean? Like, if if it includes Mania Plus, or sorry, if it includes Mania, yeah, it's Mania but more. <laughs> it's Mania but plus. <laughs> I liked it less than Dash. Yeah, yeah. Where was Classic Amy? That is the one thing. You are correct. Why are you ranking Mania and Mania Plus separately? Because they're technically considered separate games. Which, I mean, if you don't want to consider them separate games, the fact stands that it's still... They're both on S, so... <laughs> you don't you count Mania Plus as just Encore? That's fair, and... <sighs> hmm. Good point. Good point. Hold on. Good point. Okay. You know what? I agree. That is a good point. I will... Nah. <laughs> it still is different enough to make me like it more. Okay. Oh. oh. Even after you ate. You need to sleep. Or lay down. Okay. Uh, Team Sonic Racing. I like this game. I think it's fun. I don't think it's the best game in the world. I think it's just fine. It is... It is on par, in my opinion, with the first Sonic Sega All-Stars Racing. Uh, where is it, by the way? <laughs> oh, there it is. Um... However... A l there's a lot I like about it, but I, I think that All-Stars Racing ekes it out just a little bit because it at the very least includes Sega characters, right? And not because I want Team Sonic Racing to, but because it it eventually just became Team Sonic Racing, and it makes me sad because it's like, it shouldn't be. It This should be something where it should, it should either be a Sonic Riders game or it should be another All-Stars Racing game that gives respect to the All-Stars name. Like, I want to see Sega characters. I don't want to play... A, if I want to play a Sonic Racing game, give them Extreme Gear. Don't give them cars. It, to me, it makes no sense why you're giving them cars. They already have... You already have a racing franchise. Give them... There's no reason you couldn't have had this game, but make it Extreme Gear. You know what I mean? Is there Colors Ultimate on the list? To me, Colors and Colors Ultimate are the same game. Colors Ultimate is maybe a little buggier and, like... It has different features, but all in all, like, it's... When I played it, I saw it as the same game. Like, it, uh, there was hardly anything different to it. Um, But yeah, like, I like the game. I played it. I remember... I played this game before I played any of the All-Stars Racing games. And I had, a, I had a fun time with it. But now that I've played the other ones, I'm just like, oh, well, these did it first. And they did it just as well. And, like, re Team Sonic Racing recycles a lot of, like, All-Stars Racing content. Which kind of sucks. Like, it, it... I don't know. Why have I put Origins down as a game? Would it not be considered a collection? Uh, you would think so. The reason that I'm putting Origins down as a separate game is because of the functionality that the... Because they're not direct ports. They're they're built from the ground up from, from the headcanon team and Christian Whitehead. Um, different functionalities, uh, different things that they offer, the animated cutscenes. Like, th this is, like, the best... Is that next... I'll get to it. I'll get to why Origins is here. Uh, Tokyo 2020. I like Tokyo 2020. I think it's got a decent story mode, probably the best story mode any of the Olympic games have had. That being said, its events are kind of meh, but I think it's just also fatigue from... Like, it's 12 years, dude. It's 12 years of Sonic and Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Uh... I don't know. 
I, I, th I think it might be my favorite Olympic Games. I know that that's like controversial, but like, I think it might be my favorite Olympic Games game purely based on its story mode. I think what its story mode does is, is kind of cool. <laughs> it doesn't have sticks though. Damn. You're, you're right though. <laughs> um, I, th it's not, it's nothing revolutionary. It's nothing great. I like what it does with the story. I think the story should have been more, but I don't know. It's pretty okay for what it is. Yeah, the 16-bit portions were cool, or like the 8-bit stuff. The classic stuff was cool. Uh, Sonic at the Olympic Games. God, I could not care less. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I probably like it more than Sonic Dash. Probably more than this. Okay, honestly, it is a better version of the original. Um, it's more functional, but it's not. It's not great. It's just. Meh. It's just meh. The Minecraft DLC for Sonic. God, this looks very pixelated. Oops. I think it's very interesting. I do not think that Sonic the Hedgehog fits in Minecraft, though. It's very annoying how progression works in this game. I think novelty-wise, it's cool. I think functionality-wise, it left a lot to be desired. I think that they needed to playtest it a little more to realize that... Hey, Shadow's kind of broken. <laughs> um, Minecraft and Sonic are just two things that don't really go together. You know what I mean? I think that Lego did it a lot better because, like, Lego can be anything, whereas Minecraft is, like, it can kind of be anything, but it, its gameplay style is catered to mining and crafting. And in the Sonic DLC, you do neither. You do not mine, you do not craft. You go. And you go until you find special stages. And if those special stages don't show up... Tough. Tough luck. Sorry. <laughs> um, you think it should be D? There's a part of me that thinks it should be D as well. But it's like the novelty of it, too. Like, it, it is cool, and it has, like, cool references. I'm, put, I'm gonna leave it in C purely because of the main room that you're in. It is chock full of references to past Sonic games, even obscure shit. So, like, I think that that's cool. I think the levels themselves are pretty neat. It just is not super fun. It's not as bad or as boring as other games can be, but it's also not great. So it's like, eh. Fall Guys. Did I even put Fall Guys here? I'll talk about the Fall Guys thing briefly. Um... I think it's cool that they did cross-promotion. I wish I'd played the Ninjala thing, too. But to me, the reason I didn't want to include it in this tier list is because I played it for the marathon because it was, like, a limited-time event. So I wanted to play just just because. But, like, I'm not including it on this list because it's more a cameo thing. It's, like, a mini-game set in Green Hill Zone. So it's, like, I, I can't really count it as a Sonic game. And you could argue the same things about, like, the Olympic Games games and the, and the Superstars games, but... Those feel more Sonic-like to me, I guess. It's just like, ah, Sonic, but Olympics. Sonic, but tennis. Sonic, but racing. And to me, it's, this isn't like, oh, Sonic, but uh, Fall Guys. <laughs> to me, it's just like, oh, it's Fall Guys, but Sonic is in it. You know what I mean? Oh, Ninjala only had costumes? Oh, there you go. I mean, this is basically the same thing. It, it only has costumes, and like you have to get rings in Green Hill Zone. And that's kind of neat as an event. Um, but, eh. Okay, so... Speed Simulator. Pleasantly surprised, dude. I, w I am shocked. Because I wasn't about it when I first played it. When I started playing it, I was not about this. I was not about it when I first started playing it. I have not played it since the marathon, but by the end of it, I was like, I'm having fun. <laughs> what? What? It's cool. <laughs> like, all the references, all the events, like, the sense of community, which isn't great. Don't get me wrong. The sense of community wasn't fantastic or anything because it's not... There wasn't a whole lot of things that you could do with the multiplayer of it. But what it was, to, for, for it to be something that was built in Minecraft, for it to be something um, that was... Not, did I say Minecraft? Minecraft, sorry. For something that was built in Roblox. 
that was like part of a community that they hired people to specifically do for Roblox, to build this community, to to uh, have all these customization options and all these events and all these whatever, right? It's cool. And it, the, the sense of progression you get is very satisfying. It's, it is it is a lot of grinding. I, I get that and I agree. It is a lot of grinding. And it's something that I don't know if I'll ever really go back to, but for what it is, like once you get the ball rolling, even when you're playing by yourself, it's fun. You have extreme gear riding, you have races, you have spin dashing, you have rail grinding, you have um, open world exploration. It's really, it's really neat. It is pay to win. I agree with that. Uh, over CD, dude, I don't like CD that much. I, I really think CD is just meh. <laughs> I don't know why people like CD, CD that much. Um, and granted, I get it. I, Speed Simulator is kind of like, why would it be that high? Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> okay, I'm okay. Final offer. Final offer here because um CD's negative comments got him. Um it's just a Roblox game. Yeah, I mean it's just a Roblox game, but it's also Sonic. Like it feels pretty cool. Like as far as a Sonic game goes, it's surprisingly well put together. You know, it's it's not perfect, obviously, but it, CD is one of the best soundtracks in the series. In cool zones, I disagree entirely. I think the soundtrack is good, but it's just okay. I think the zones are over designed and a headache to look at, and they are all like they're all over the place in terms of design. <laughs> it's a lot of praise for C tier. Yeah, but it doesn't deserve to be anything higher than that. I don't know. I I still think that where it is is high, but it's also not a bad game. Like. And I also know that at some point it will die. Like, that's the thing, too, is that, like... Uh, uh, <laughs> which soundtrack, Japanese or English? Both. I think that they're both just okay. The repetitive nature of its formula? <laughs> true. That is true. But I think I like the sense of progression. I like the fact that you start to feel faster. I like that you have this sense of momentum. I like that there is, again, the sense of... Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because when am I going to want to play this again? These are all very good arguments, and I'm glad that you guys are making them. Because I'm looking at it, I'm just like, hmm, that's true. That's true, and I would I would be a hypocrite if I did not listen and if I did not agree with these statements. Yeah. <laughs> uh Would I rather play speed than four again or Sonic or Advance 2. Oh, God, you're right. I'd probably rather play Speed again than Advance 2, though. I don't like Advance 2 that much. But I think that Advance 2 is a functionally... It controls better than the than 4 does. It's Dude, it's tough. It's tough. Is Gems Collection on the list? No, because those are just ports. There's really no point in putting that on... Like, they're not even built from the ground up for the GameCube or for that... Uh, era. It's just like, hey, here's the ROM. Advanced 2 is too high, you feel? Me too, but I also don't want to put it below any of these. <sighs> God damn it. You have Origins here? Yes! Origins was built from the ground up. What part of that is not understood? <laughs> There's no way you could think that Origins and Mega Collection and Gems Collection are the same thing. <laughs> Advanced 2 is way too low. No, it's not low enough, in my opinion. You put it just below Black Knight. Even though Speed Sim has better gameplay, you find Black Knight to be a more compelling overall experience. 
Yeah, but... I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. What is next? Origins. Okay, so the reason Origins is on the list, as opposed to other ones, is because, like, I don't have the mobile games, the mobile versions of these games that were built from the ground up, and these are, like, versions of those versions, like HD, it's got, um... It, it, it's the best way to play the original games without owning, like, a Genesis or, like, having it on Steam or whatever, right? It's, to me, it's worth having... Because if you love all these games, right? If you love all the classic games, I understand that their digital deluxe bullshit sucked. I agree with that. I know it has its issues with glitches. I agree with that. I, 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 I hear you. You know, I, I understand. It is not perfect. But God damn it, that cannot be... That cannot be the standard to which we hold ourselves. I cannot... Something being not perfect cannot be the standard to which we hold ourselves. This is an A-tier game. Like, it, it, it puts everything together in a nice package. You have all this concept art the same way we did in Mega Collection. You have all these different modes, which is more than Mega Collection or Gems Collection had. You have the option to play in its traditional 4x3 or 16x9 format. It has reinstated a uh, big arm boss fight for Sonic 3. Um, the one issue I have with it is that Amy isn't playable and that Knuckles isn't playable in CD, which makes no sense. Um, again, it has its issues. It has its glitches. I, I grant you. I grant you that. But when I played it, was I not playing the same games that I love from my childhood? basically yeah yeah i was a few glitches that don't break the game and i get it there were people who like lost their save files and shit early on i didn't have those issues i didn't have those issues <laughs> except for the one part i skipped the boss yes but that was funny <laughs> um what the hell's colors and s tier have you played colors ds it's pretty s -tier. it's pretty great <laughs> De nouveau, who gives a shit, bro? Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, it, people, people say that. People use that as an argument, and to me, it's like, I genuinely do not feel the difference. I do not feel the difference on it. <laughs> Price tag and origins. I get it. I, I get it. I understand it was overpriced. I, I know. I know. But with the game itself. You are getting the full classic Sonic story from Sonic 1, Sonic 2, CD, 3, and Knuckles. With all of its added bone, with like a mirror mode, you have an anniversary mode, you have time attack as from what I remember. You have all these different modes and people don't give a shit about that because of it has the manuals in it and and people are like but i had a glitch one time that wasn't in the original genesis version meaning that the original genesis version is superior by far to this one genesis game is superior to the entirety of the origins collection like how how yeah okay the music i don't like the music either I think that the original music was great. It sucks that they couldn't get the rights or whatever licensing bullshit from Brad Buxer, right? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. But, dude, that the, the music being not as good has nothing to do with the gameplay or the design or whatever, dude. Uh, if the Genesis version was at least playable, you'd be fine with it? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Mute, yeah, mute the music if you must. Mute that shit and play it on your phone if that's the biggest issue with it. I I understand, but I like it. I think it's a good collection. I like it as as its origins, right? As a standalone game, dude, you'll be playing. Uh, I I'm a seasoned Sonic veteran, and it still took me like what nine hours to play the whole game. Imagine someone who's never played this game before. Like, dude. <laughs> it's like people who say Adventure 2 is worse than the original because my graphics. 
I am very much of that opinion. Like, I don't give a shit that the lighting isn't as nice because it plays the same. Like, I get it. It doesn't look as good. Okay, fucking whatever, man. How is that going to be your 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 standard for like whether or not a game is good? A game can look like utter shit, and and still be one of the best experiences. My 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 argument has always been Undertale for stuff like that, right? Not to say that Undertale is ugly, but it is very simple. It's tough for me to say that I think Undertale is a beautiful looking game. It's one of my favorite games ever. It's one of my favorite games ever. Yeah, SA, SA2B has horrid audio mixing, but I still have fun with it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Anyway, rant over. Uh, and finally, Sonic Frontier is the latest game that we've gotten. I've only played this game once. I want to play it again. It's, it took me a while. I was vastly, vastly, vastly satisfied with the product we got. I wish it was more here and there. There are times I wish it had more to offer in terms of characterizations, in terms of... Um, I wish it had more to offer in terms of characterization sometimes. I wish it had a better paced and better put together story. I love Sage as a new character. I love the Titan fights. I love the openness of the exploration, even with all the pop in and despite the fact that a lot of it is not cohesive. I love that it continues the story from the adventure games in a way that we didn't really see coming. I love the story building with the egg memos. I love the inclusion of Big and a better, the best fishing we've ever had in a Sonic game. Uh, I love the combat. I'm a huge hack and slash guy. I wish that there were more combos and more like there was. I wish that the combat was more engaging for sure. I love the sense of speed. I love the environments. Uh, I wish that there were more islands than just the three that we got and the two that look just like um, Kronos. I love ex the expansion of the uh, ancient story. Not huge on the final boss, obviously. I don't like the end as an antagonist, as a villain, as an entity in this world. Love Sage. Sage is my favorite character we've gotten in a long-ass time. Um, I might regret this. I might regret this, but I do wish that Sage had more to say than just, I can't tell you anything. I still like Gerald. I I, I said my favorite character in a long time. Not, not because she's my favorite character, but because she's everything infinite should have been. She's, she's everything infinite should have been. But she's different, right? Because Infinite doesn't do anything to make us like him. He's he's badass for the sake of being a badass. And even then, he's not a badass. He's not cool. He's got an interesting design. But what they do with him writing-wise and what they do with him in terms of boss, he's not interesting. Sage, you never really... When you realize that you never really fight her, but she's so likable because of the relationship she has with Eggman, who is a character we've known and loved for 30 years. And so when you see the, the humanness in this AI. And again, this is just from a storytelling perspective. When you see the, the humanness in this AI, you sympathize with her. You like her because you know that she's a bad guy, but that doesn't mean she's a bad guy. You know what I mean? You feel that she gives a shit not just about the world. She gives a shit about her dad. Um, she wants to form real relationships. You learn so much, despite how little interaction there is with Sage overall, you learn so much about her as a character. Eggman finally got his Bowser Jr. Pretty much, yeah. Um, you know, Orbot and Cubot are funny, but they're also kind of irrelevant now. She's a very neutral character. Yeah, and I think that that's going to help move the series forward. I think that Sage is going to be a very interesting element to the story moving forward. Frontiers represents a unification of Sonic Media moving forward with with a new writer who has written and knows a lot about the, and does what he can god bless his fucking heart ian flynn does what he can 
given the context of being exclusively a comic book writer and what with what Sega tells him can and can't be canon, he does what he can. He's not perfect, but God damn it. <laughs> he's, he's the closest thing we have. <laughs> um, the characterization with Sonic, with his friends, the closeness we feel with, uh, from a storytelling perspective, again, I wish there was more, but that's not a bad thing. I wish it was more because of how much it does. I broke my 2D bias. Yes. Oh, it's, there's still 2D in there. <laughs> I wish there was more to this game because of what we already have. The characters sound breezy. You can tell there's history with them. You can tell that they want more out of life. The one character that's like, I'm happy is Sonic, you know, but Amy wants more. She's like, I can't keep chasing you forever. Tails is like, I can't keep following you forever. I need to be my own person. Knuckles is like, I want to be more than just the guardian of the Emerald. You find more about the Chaos Emeralds. Not everyone is crazy about their origin. I think it's cool because it like it opens up this, this world of like, okay, well, the Chaos Emeralds are from space, as were the Ancients, but the Master Emerald isn't. The Master Emerald is from this world. What the fuck? And like I said, the unification. Yeah, Amy mentioned sticks and cream. Cream is still around, you know? Um, Tangle from, from the comics. So it's just like, there's... Th this unification that we've yet to see how it's going to expand later on. There's still more story that we're going to get, you know? I wish that the gameplay was sometimes a little bit more. I get, I sometimes do get tired of seeing the same backgrounds over and over again. Not crazy on cyberspace, but there's also not... I mean, I don't hate cyberspace either. It's just something that I'm ambivalent to. I don't... It doesn't make... Like, re recognizing level design is great. I think it's cool, but I also do get tired of seeing the same environments over and over and over again. Uh, the little bits and pieces of information, the the comedy is on point in this game because it's not like overbearing. It's not annoying. It's funny. Dude, I'm so glad that everyone agrees with me with the end goal joke. I laughed so hard when that happened. I laughed so hard when they did that. What is your end goal? Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's a big giant ring. Sometimes it's a post that like flips over. Like it was so, I laughed so hard at that. And everyone loves that joke and it makes me feel so happy because it's just like, yes, this is it. This is like the meta jokes that we need. Like, it's not overbearing. There's something different about this era of writing because it's, it, it, it's, it's diegetic. You feel like, oh, so those things do happen in this world. You know, like that's not just a video game thing. That's just like a reality of his world and he's not joking, right? Yeah, it doesn't try too hard. It doesn't try too hard to be funny. But it also doesn't try how too hard to be serious. Like it's, it's, it, I want more. I want not just, I'm, I'm excited to see what the DLC is going to be. The cosmetics, are, that's another thing too. Like it's not great right now with the cosmetics. Uh, but I, I can't wait for the added shit that this game is going to have, you know? And the problem is too, personally, I played this for my work for the marathon. So to me, I have kind of a different outlook on it in that I had to rush through the game. I had to play it as efficiently as possible so I could make a video before I moved out of Nathan's house um, so that I was still on time to, for, for Frontiers to be relevant. It's not a short game. So like, I, I feel like I couldn't really enjoy it. But dude, whoever... Like, the, the people that were able to play it on their own time, I can't imagine... The Frontiers music, I like it, but a lot of it, it, for the first time, a lot of it is meant to be more ambient music, you know? And it's so good. It's so good. And, like, the, the boss themes are... It's, they're the best. Okay. One thing that Frontiers has over Mania... Mania Plus, Sonic 3, and Knuckles. It has the best supersonic boss fights in the entire series. In the entire series, dude. It's so good. <laughs> Am I going to stream the DLC? You bet your ass I'm going to. You bet your ass. <laughs> like... I was speechless. I, I was genuinely, as someone who had played every single game before, I was speechless when when those fights came along because people are like, oh, 
You know, and I and I grew up with it too. I grew up with Perfect Chaos. I grew up with the Final Hazard. I grew up with uh, uh, Metal Overlord. They were at that time the best supersonic boss fights, but they're not even that good. They're really not that good when you think about it. Also, can't no. I mean, the end sucks as a final boss. I agree, but supersonic as a like Giganto, the Wyvern. Uh, the Knight, Supreme kind of sucked, but like those three by themselves, bro, dude, it, it was amazing. It was so good. And like, I need to play it again because I was this close to leaving this in A tier because I was like, do I really want to chill for the newest game just because it's the newest game? I've only ever played it once. It's like, yeah, but... I did everything. Yeah, like, I did everything in the game. And I never felt like, I'm bored. Or like, oh man, this is taking a while. I went, I played, I enjoyed every part I went to. <sighs> Dude. I just really like this game. And I think, barring the few flaws it has, I like it. I really, really do like this game. And I'm so happy. I, it makes me happy that I, I was able to like... I was so scared, dude. Because I, I I was afraid while I was playing it and before it came out that it was going to be another disappointment. And that it, I I did all this for nothing, right? That I I played through all these games. And it, I mean, it wouldn't have been for nothing because I, I met a lot of you and, and I got to experience a lot of games I'd never experienced before. But... It's it's refreshing because it's not a perfect game. Don't get me wrong. I still like some of the classic style games more than it. It's not the best game in the world. There, are, I I debated still liking Generations more, but it's nice. It's nice to have something that's not wholly unique, mind you. There's still a lot of references to older things, but that as a whole feels like a fresh experience, and that I can be like, this is good. This is pretty good, dude. Like, on its own, on its own merit. Because, like, the only other 3D game in S rank is Generations. And Generations is reliant, or its, its main gimmick is the nostalgia that you have for the series. Frontiers morphs that idea into, yeah... I will reward you for having stuck with the series and understanding these references, but you don't need to in order to play this game. You just appreciate the game as a game on its own. The gameplay itself, psi-looping, doing combos, speeding through the cyberspace stages, even though those aren't great. It's really good. <laughs> Dude, me too, or I wish I could like wipe my... I'm like, I want to play Frontiers again for the first time. But it's like, it's it's a more standalone version of Generations, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Where it's like, it stands on its own two feet rather than relying on like, hey, remember Green Hill? Hey, remember Chemical Plant and Sky Sanctuary? It's just like, yeah, you kind of get that in Frontiers too. But with Frontiers, it's like a mini game. It's like those things are a mini game to a wider game that's like, hey, go over there, go grind on that rail, hit that spring. Fight that enemy. Get this uh, memory token. Get that Chaos Emerald. Fight that boss. You know, like, it's... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Cyberspace is glorified special stages. I mean, that's what they are. I've said it from the beginning. They were just special stages, and people complain about it all the time. It's like, but the cyberspace stages, like, dude, okay. But if it's, like, two minutes out of a 20-hour game, what does it matter? Does it really matter that much if it's two minutes of a 20-hour game? I don't know. The PS4 version is locked to 15 frames? Really? That sucks. I'm sorry. I played on PS5. So <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Big the Cat reminds you of Totoro, which is... I've seen... I saw, like, half of Totoro once. Uh, I saw Spirited Away not too long... Like, three years ago? Still liked it. Still liked, I hadn't seen it in years, and I still really like that movie. There's some influence found in the games. Yeah, I love the vibe of the game. It's so different. It's it's so like low energy, but still high speed, which is so unique. I have to stop. I have to stop. But yeah, 
I am I'm shocked. I'm shocked at this. Like I now have like a list of what I think is the best and what I think is the worst. Wow, you know what's funny though? Is that like my favorite Sonic game and my least favorite Sonic game are both like classic games. <laughs> Except one is like a bastardization of like what this game eventually did. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I hope you guys enjoyed this journey with me. I, I, dude, 2022 is insane. <laughs> Am I thinking of changing anything with the list? Maybe at some point. I don't know. Not right now. I need to, I need to end it, but like. I'm, I think I'm satisfied. I think it's very me. I know that not everyone agrees with it. I know a lot of people would put other things in A or S. But, I don't know. This is how I feel about these games. And I like seeing that, like, there are a lot of... Despite how much garbage there is down here, how many games we don't have, how, many, how much mediocrity there is, there's still a sizable amount of games that are genuinely good. You know, there's still a lot of games that are worth your time I recommend playing frontiers on pc even though mods don't really add or subtract to the overall opinions of a game they definitely enhance this one fair and i do want to do that thank you sonic man i appreciate that ever lulz thank you for the membership i appreciate you thank you thank you thank you thank you but yeah um i love this blue rat he has given me a home he has given me a life that i can live vicariously through um I hope that that continues. I appreciate every one of you being here. I don't even know how many people have been here or are here. And I don't care because I'm having fun with you guys. And I hope you guys are having fun too. Um, 2022 was a fantastic year for Sonic. We got the movie. We got Prime. I still haven't watched Prime. I need to watch it. Frontiers. We got Origins. Yo, Cat TV. Thank you so much for the four months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, if you want to keep in touch, there's the Discord. Um, and I do hope, I was telling Sarah about this, and I found certain things at a bookstore, and I thought, hmm, while I do want to do a Zelda marathon, I also thought, I don't want to stop streaming. I had a lot of fun streaming. So why not take a look at some of these? on stream with you guys. I have compiled every single Sonic the Hedgehog comic. <laughs> if you guys check the spreadsheet, you might notice at the end there is another tab that I uh, that I have annexed since which has every single fucking comic. <laughs> Including Archie, including Fleetway. <laughs> and I would love, I, I have owned a single comic in my whole life. <laughs> and granted, I'm not, I'm not going to rush through this. I'm not going to rush through this like I did with the games. I want to chill, sit down, and read some comics with you guys. <laughs> I want to chill. I want to sit down and be like, wow, Princess Sally, huh? <laughs> Because I've never read... I haven't read most of these. There's one issue that I ever owned growing up, and it was Archie comic Sonic the Hedgehog 150. It was... It was Sonic, Shadow, and Metal Sonic on the cover. And that was the only comic I've ever owned. And so I think 2023 could be us just reading comics and having fun, dude. Just... Having a good time. Not, no gameplay. No, you're bad at this. Just me goofing off, reading shit in my, in my Sonic voices, and being like, Whoa! I can't believe Darth Garius killed Julie Sue the, the Wombat Boy. Wow! <laughs> you're bad at reading. <laughs> And Zelda, yes. I do want to do the Zelda marathon still. I do want to do that here on YouTube as well. Um, I think that, I don't know, man. There's so much I want to do. But, like, I just, I have not found the motivation to to keep making everything wrong with or other videos because, like, 
I'm afraid. I'm afraid they're not going to do well. But streaming did good for me. Streaming did well, like, in terms of social interactions, in terms of my numbers, in terms of just staying afloat. And I want to keep that going with you guys if you let me. So I'm still alive. I'm about to finish. <laughs> I, I just I just finished. And this is my tier list, Nathan. What do you think, buddy? What do you think? Oh, shit. Snowflame, thank you for the membership. I appreciate you. Um, look at... You finally got home? Welcome home. Look, this is my tier list. Oh, these are my S tiers. And my A's. Here are my B's. Here are my wasps. This is the D. I know how much you like that one. Here are the E's. E. And then these are lost. I've never played these. <laughs> D stands for dinner. Yes. Which I need to consume now. Thank you, everybody. Uh, you, I'm going to leave this live stream up for those that want to see it, but I will also condense it down for an actual video that people will hopefully watch if they weren't here at the stream. So I love you all. I will see you all in 2023. Have a fantastic new year. I love you all. Thank you for being here. I will see you then for many, many other good times in the Sonic the Hedgehog comic book world and in Hyrule with, with the legend of, of Zoldo. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Bye, everybody.